Cecilia. It was raining a little as I went for my morning run, but I didn't care. I always got up early to go for a little run. The sun was barely up, as I ran through the woods, feeling the nice summer breeze run over my heated skin and keeping me cool, as I pushed myself harder and harder. I ran over a small hill and then stopped, feeling my heart beating like crazy inside of my chest, but it was in those moments that I actually felt a little alive. I thought I would feel free once I cut the connection with my old mate, but I realized I was just left with an empty hole. It was why I came back. That was why I stopped traveling around the world, because I knew nothing could fill the empty hole nothing but one thing, and I was never going back. Never again would I let someone else tear my heart and soul out, and I knew I would not get any help from the spirituals. After Celine, they refused to help anymore. I had heard they had helped Kate get together with her mate, but it wasn't at all as we had hoped for. She was sent to the other world, instead of pulling Chris to her. It was so wrong but at least we had peace now. No one won a war sadly. It always demanded sacrifices, but since Connor was gone, things had been quiet. It had only been a few months, we were in mid-August now, but it was nice. It felt like you could finally take a deep breath, without being afraid someone might come stabbing you in the back. I, of course, didn't relax much. I was the beta after all, and since Lara was always working, I was to accept some things had changed. After Lara had made up with James, she became better at making room for other people and not focusing only on work. I was now working almost more than her. I wasn't sure how she could forgive him. I knew better than anyone what it was like never being someone's first choice, despite being true mates. How could she just forgive him? I didn't get it, and I actually tried avoiding James as much as I could, because just the sight of him made me angry, and he was the alpha after all. I didn't want to risk making him mad, because I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I sighed a little, as I watched the sun come up. It was beautiful and its warm rays started to heat up my skin right away and the rain slowly stopped. I knew it meant I had to go back. I had more work to do. I turned around and ran back to the house. I knew most people were still sleeping. Some pack members lived outside the territory, which was rather normal these days, because there wasn't as much forest and we weren't living like animals as we once did, so it meant they liked to come around the house and just hang out. It was nice being a part of a pack again. I had been accepted into one when I found my other mate. Before that, I lived as a lone wolf like my mother. She had had a child with my father, who was a beta, but he had never really wanted anything to do with either of us. Like me, my mother was not of a high enough status, but this time I was part of a pack I really liked. I walked to my room and quickly showered before getting dressed in some blue jeans and a dark t-shirt, then I put on some sneakers and went to Lara's office. She had not gotten up yet, and I found it strange, but then I saw two glasses standing on her desk, and knew James was here too. So, that was why she wasn't up early like she used to. Whenever her mate was around, she always stayed up late and got up late. They tried spending as much time together as they could since James was often working with the king, but he was coming around more. Connor was gone now and things were running more smoothly, which meant he had more free time. I cleaned up everything on her desk before I found my computer and sat down in front of her empty seat. Then I began to work. Cecilia? I looked to my side, seeing Lara had appeared. I wasn't sure how much time had passed, but I realized I had zoned out. I did that a lot, and I quickly turned my eyes to my computer again. Morning, Luna. I said as I started to type away. When did you get up? Lara asked and went to take a seat. Around. Like I always do. I said. A little later when it is winter. You remember to sleep too, right? She asked. I nodded. Of course. I glanced up from my computer and saw her watching me. Is there something wrong? I asked. Lara tapped her finger against the desk, but then shook her head. Nothing wrong. I just want to make sure you remember to rest too. I do, Luna. I said. I always thought I got up early. 
she said. Well, you had someone visiting. Lara's smile grew and I saw her completely change in front of me. She always looked rather controlled and like the tough Luna she was, but when someone mentioned James, she turned almost giddy. You could see the love she had for him in her eyes, which I really didn't get. He had let her down. I didn't get how she could trust him. Yeah he came over late. She said. So, you probably stayed up late. I said while looking at my computer. Yeah. I could hear the almost unspoken words in her voice. We both knew why they had stayed up late, but I didn't mention that. There was no reason to talk about that. We were not girlfriends who shared all our secrets. We were Beta and Luna working together, and that was it. I didn't really have any friends, and I was fine with that. I liked being on my own. So, do you have any plans for tonight? Lara asked. Are your father and brothers coming over? I asked, thinking she was going to invite me to eat with them. I had a few times, but I often refused. Her family was nice, don't get me wrong, but as I said, I liked being on my own, and her brothers could be rather flirty, and I didn't want to be at the receiving end of their lustful eyes. No. She said. I'm going to the castle. Oh, need me to get some things done? I didn't even look at her. I just continued to work. I was thinking perhaps you wanted to come. My fingers froze and I slowly looked up, seeing Lara watching me with a little smile. Why? I asked. I had only been to the castle two times perhaps, and it was only when there was something important the king and Lara had to discuss. The last time I was there was a few weeks after the war ended. I didn't really know any of the others who lived there, except for Celine. Everyone else was a stranger to me. Some I had never even met. Because I think you should come. She said. Why? I asked again. Her smile grew a little. So, you don't have to sit here alone. I'm fine. Come now, Cecilia, it's great over there. It's really fun actually, and it is just dinner. She said. I just don't get why I should come. I don't know them. I said. But you could get to know them. I shook my head. I think I will paw. Why? Why would you rather sit here alone? Where is the fun in that? She asked me. I sighed and closed my eyes for a moment because I wasn't sure how I was going to explain it to her. She couldn't understand what it was like. I thought I was finally free when I had my mark removed, but slowly an empty feeling took over and I turned so damn numb. I was lacking a whole piece of me that I knew I couldn't get back unless I wanted to risk my heart again. Because I like it like that. I said and looked at her again. I don't want you to sit here alone and work. She said. I want you to come with me and meet the others. Why is this suddenly so important to you? I asked. She shrugged. Maybe because there's finally peace. She said. Finally, we can relax a little and have some fun. Come with me tonight. Just once. Try it and if you don't like it, I will never ask you again. Ever? Never again. She said and smiled. I sighed. Fine, but only this once. Lara nodded happily, and then we began to work. Lucian. I woke up feeling something rather rough running over the skin on my face. I turned my head, hoping it would make it stop, but then I heard something loudly purr in my ear and fur being rubbed all over me. I opened my eyes only to stare into a pair of yellow ones. Great. The cat had practically been attached to me these last few months. I wasn't sure why, but she had set her eyes on me. I was her latest victim, it seemed. She always switched between all of us males in the house, giving us all of her unwanted love, and now she had decided I was going to receive a little too. It was fine, I didn't mind that much, but I was rather hungover and waking up late today, so I was a little annoyed. I sat up and then turned my head to see the two guests I had brought with me. That male knew how to use his mouth like no other, and the female was a wild one, I had to admit. I had the scratch marks to prove it. 
I turned to the cat again and then ran my hand down her head before I looked at the closed door a little further away. How did you get inside? I whispered. I was sure the door had been closed and locked after I got home, but of course, I had been rather drunk and maybe a little high on something too, and I had been distracted by my guests, but I seemed to remember closing and locking the door. Suddenly there was a knock on it, and even the small sounds of the knocking hurt my ears. Hey Lucian, are you joining dinner or what? I heard Garrett ask. He wasn't waiting for an answer, because I heard him leave right after, but it just made me realize just how late I was waking up. I turned to look at the clock on the nightstand. Wonderful. Yeah, I had been sleeping away pretty much the entire day. I didn't attend a lot of our dinners, but I had to admit I was rather hungry after the night I had had. I clapped my hands together, waking my guests. Okay, time to leave. I said as I walked towards the shower, knowing it would take some time for them to wake up anyway, and I was not their parent. I was not going to shake them awake. I quickly got washed and cleaned before I wrapped a towel around myself, and when I came out my guests had already slipped out. I walked to the walk-in closet and got dressed, while the little cat waited over by the door, looking at me the whole time. A little privacy? I asked her as I buttoned the shirt. I was already pretty much dressed, but I found it strange how it was almost like she was waiting for me. She wasn't moving until I walked over to her, and then she followed me eagerly out of the door. You must be hungry too, I said. Did your owner not feed you? She, of course, didn't answer me, but ran ahead, and when she got a little too far away, she would stop and look behind herself, making sure I was still following her. When I got closer to the dining room, I thought she might run in there, but she continued ahead. I stopped in front of the doors leading inside the dining room, looking confused at the cat, who continued down the hallway and then stopped, looking back at me. What the meow? The cat disappeared around a corner, and I didn't really plan to follow, but instead of opening one of the doors, I turned away and walked down the hallway. I thought I was being ridiculous for following the cat, but it just seemed strange she passed on the opportunity to get some food. I mean she was not a skinny model, so she was definitely enjoying herself here, but she had just run right by the dining room. This is stupid. I thought as I turned the corner but then I seemed to catch some faint scent that made my wolf go crazy inside of me. I groaned as he howled loudly in my head. The scent was so weak that I couldn't quite tell what it was yet, but I followed it down the hallway and over to a door that stood open a little. I pushed it further open, and the scent just hit me like a fucking baseball bat, almost knocking me over. It was the sweetest scent of violets, and I quickly searched for the source of it, looking around this little library and I soon found out where it was coming from. Further away stood a slim little female with her back to me, her light brown hair reached just below her shoulders and she was scanning the books in front of her, running her finger along the cover of it, and sometimes pulling one out like she found something interesting, but then decided to push it back again. Mate! Fuck finally! I couldn't believe it! I had no fucking idea who she was or how she had gotten in here. I hadn't brought her but I knew without a doubt she was my mate. A big smile spread on my lips and for a moment I was ready to just go over there and claim her, but I quickly told myself not to get ahead of myself. I needed to figure out who she was first and how she had gotten in here. No one just entered the king's territory without an invitation unless you belonged to his pack. Go claim her. Take her. Don't even bother closing the door. Her screams of pleasure will be loud enough for everyone to hear and know to give us some privacy. I smiled at my wolf's filthy thoughts. It was not a bad idea, and I could definitely see myself taking her up against the bookshelf, so the entire thing would shake and books would undoubtedly fall down, but we wouldn't care. We would only be focused on each other, and when I had made her come a few times, I would mark her as mine and make sure everyone knew who she belonged to. I felt my canines grow longer, and my cock started to harden. It had been a long night of fucking. You would think I was completely drained, but not when it came to my mate. I would always be ready to mate with her. Whenever she wanted me, I would be there, enjoying every little tiny bit of her. Mmm, I wonder what she tastes like we would know soon enough. I walked into the room as quietly as I could, only closing the door a little, 
and then I moved closer to her, making sure she hadn't heard me or seen me. I moved up behind her as close as I could, watching her stay so focused on the books in front of her. I wasn't sure if she was looking for something specific or was just browsing, but I didn't care. Just seeing her doing something so simple as this made my heart beat faster. How could something so simple almost make me giddy? This was what I had been waiting for. I saw all the time the power of the bond. I had seen both my cousins find happiness with their mates and create families or try to. I wanted that too. I wanted a mate to love and who would love me despite my many flaws, and I wanted a family with her. Finding what you're looking for? I asked. She jumped and turned around, pressing herself to the bookshelf behind her, and staring at me with big eyes. I seemed to have scared her a little. She looked cute though. Big green eyes, a bit of a darker shade than mine, and with small golden specks, you could only see if you were very close to her. She had the sweetest little nose and full lips I just wanted to adore with my own. Well, Cecilia, I had no idea how he had snuck up on me so easily, but suddenly he was right there, standing almost as close to me as he could. There wasn't even room for me to lift my arm and perhaps push him away a little. How had he done that? I stared up into his green eyes that seemed to be a bit of a lighter shade than mine, and they seemed hungry full of need need for me. Wait that scent I was breathing fast, and kept pulling the strong musky scent of mail in that was mixed with whatever cologne he was using. It made me weak in my knees, as my whole body hummed with pleasure. Oh, shit mate. It had taken some time for my wolf to get her strength back after what happened to us, but after removing the mark and finally feeling a little free, she started to come back to me. I thought perhaps she had learned her lesson after what happened, but no here she was claiming another. I don't want this. Are you sure? I wanted to ask. Just let us go. We shouldn't have come she was right about that, but the male in front of me was like a wall, and I couldn't even get around him. He reached out, placed a hand on the bookshelf and smiled down at me. He was so damn tall and so broad. He could easily overpower me, and the power he was emanating screamed Alpha. Not again not another Alpha I was done with those. Aren't you going to answer me? He asked. No, but I would like it if you moved out of the way, Lucian. I said. He seemed shocked that I knew his name. I had never before met Lucian, but it was not hard to guess it was him. He was the only unmated male left in this house, and I had seen Kate once, and she looked a lot like her cousin. It was, of course, a guess, and I could have been wrong, but it was clear I wasn't. You know who I am? He asked. Yes, now move before I scream. Lucian. I was surprised when she said my name. I had no idea who she was, but apparently, she knew who I was. I wanted to know how though. I wanted to know more about her. No, I wanted to know everything. She was my mate, and yet she seemed almost scared of me. Very guarded at least, and that confused me. I didn't want her to feel like she had to be careful around me. I would never hurt her, and so I took a step back, giving her a little space. Well, you're going to scream anyway. I want everyone to know not to interrupt us. I told her, lowering my voice and eyeing her sweet pink lips. She looked at me shocked, almost like she didn't understand the hidden meaning behind my words. It surprised me. I made it so obvious, or could it be she had never had anyone take care of her needs? I think I will paw, she suddenly said, and it was like she put a big wall up between us. She walked past me, making me freeze for a moment. Never before had anyone said no to me. Male or female but this one was completely unaffected by my charm. Wow, hold on. I said and grabbed her hand. Don't touch me. Just leave me alone, Lucian. She said. How do you know me? I asked. You look a lot like your cousin, and you're the only unmated male here. It is not hard to figure out. She said. Yes, but someone must have told you about me, or how could you know my name? I asked. She sighed, shaking her head a little as if she was almost disappointed that I didn't know who she was. 
What? I asked. I'm Cecilia. Lara's beta. She said. Oh. So this was the famous Cecilia. The one who had helped free Celine from Valerio, and who had helped Angela find the spirituals, so Hunter could be cured. My mate was a beta. There had to be more to her though if she was paired with me. I was born to be an alpha, but sometimes people from different ranks were paired if their energies matched. It could be rather dangerous though, since one of them could abuse their power over the other. I wouldn't, of course. As my mate, she was my equal, and I would always treat her as such. So, you're the Cecilia I have heard so much about. Celine named one of her kids after you. I said. Cecilia nodded. Yes, that is me. She said. Now I'm leaving. Wait. Cecilia stopped and turned to look at me again, but she looked rather unhappy. You can't just leave. I said. Yes, I can. She said. And I am going to. We're mates. She seemed shocked I would say it out loud, but instead of answering me, she just walked away, shaking her head. She walked into the hallway, and I quickly followed her. Cecilia. She stopped, her back turned to me, and I was unsure if she was just going to walk away again, but no, she slowly turned to me again, looking almost devastated. I know. She said. Then how can you just leave? I asked. Because I have tried this before, Lucian. She said. I have tried being paired with someone more powerful than me, and I am not doing it again. Again? I don't want to talk about it, okay? I just don't want you. She said. What? I stared at her shocked, but she could barely meet my eyes. She almost looked guilty, but I was feeling a little angry now. She was already rejecting me. We had barely even known we were mates for more than five minutes, and she was already telling me she didn't want me. You're rejecting me? She shook her head, and it only confused me. No. But you don't want me? I asked, confused. No, I don't. Sorry, but I am a bit confused here. I told you, I don't want to go down that road again. She said. You can reject me if you want to. I won't say the words, because I know the pain they cause, but I won't stay with you either. Why not? I asked. I told you why. This isn't my first time finding a mate. She said. Right there was a reason why she could tell Celine where to find the spirituals. They had helped Cecilia too, removing her mark as well. And I don't want to be thrown away again. She told me. I am not going to do that. Not right away, but when you get bored, which you undoubtedly will. She said. Then I will be thrown to the side. You can't possibly know that. I said. Lucian, there are rumors about you, and you have got a big appetite. I don't blame you, but I can't I can't make you happy in every way. She said. How can you know that, when you haven't even tried? I asked her. She sighed and looked at the ground for a moment, before turning back to me again, and I could see the pain in her eyes, how broken she looked. She might have gotten her mark removed, but she had lost herself. It was clear as day. I put my heart into everything I do. She said. I put my soul into it, and I can't take that risk of trying because I know what will happen. You don't know. I said. But I do. I do know. Cecilia. Don't. Don't give me some long speech about why I should give this a chance. She said. I can't. Why? Because I will fall in love with you. She said. I stood there shocked as I heard her say those words. It was everything I wanted. Her love. I wanted her to fall in love with me because I could think of nothing better, and I knew she saw it in my eyes. She knew I wanted her love. Okay, screw dinner. We are taking her right to the bedroom. No, wait, screw the bedroom, use the wall, the floor. She can be on top so she doesn't have to lie on it. We are getting her to fall in love with us right now. I almost wanted to laugh a little because I felt so happy, knowing there was no doubt my mate would fall in love with me, 
but Cecilia didn't look happy. She looked scared or terrified. I'm sorry, Lucian, but I won't put my heart on the line again. She said. I would never break it. I said. I promise you that. But you will you're an alpha, and I am done with those. She started to walk away again, but I was not letting her go so easily. I grabbed her arm and pulled her back to me, so she ended up with her body pressed against mine. She looked up at me shocked, but then her eyes seemed to wander a little and soon they were eyeing my lips. You're not done. I whispered. You're far from done, sweetheart. We have just begun. She seemed to barely be able to breathe as her eyes slowly met mine. I want you. Right now. She slowly shook her head and then pushed away from me, taking a few steps back. If you run, I will follow. I told her. I told you, I can't do it. Maybe with some distance, you could let me go. She said. I shook my head. No fucking way. It has to be this way. She said. You deserve better. I deserved better. What the fuck? Cecilia turned away from me and this time she didn't look back. She just walked to the entrance hall and disappeared out of the door. So, that was how my mate wanted to play? Fine, I would just prove to her we weren't done. Lucian. I ended up in the dining hall again. All the others were already gathered here except Angela. She was spending all her time with her mother, trying to help the way she could. Angela always had her meals brought to her. Sometimes one of us would do it, so there was someone with her. I hadn't really seen her much. I always thought Angela was the one who got away. Now I was starting to see, I had no idea what I was even talking about. She was nothing compared to my feisty little beta, who seemed to like to run from me. She would not get far. Cecilia would be mine, there was no doubt about it. Lucian took you long enough, Valerio joked. I just smiled and sat down. I wasn't really hungry. But I would give my mate a little head start because when I came for her, there would be nowhere to run. Wait, where is Cecilia? Lara asked and looked around the table. I scared her away. I said. Laura looked at me almost annoyed, while some of the others started to laugh. They thought I had probably just tried to get her to bed, and that was not completely wrong, but it was different. I didn't want to take her to my bed, because I wanted a quick fuck, I wanted her there because she belonged there. Damn it, Lucian. Laura said. You know how hard it was to convince her to come here. Easy now, little Luna, he probably didn't even know it was her. James said and smiled, finding it funny. I didn't. I said. So, you just like to flirt with any strange females who find their way into the castle? Laura asked. Apparently so. That made a few of the males around the table laugh, but the rest didn't seem so impressed. I wasn't going to reveal yet who Cecilia was to me. I had to convince my little mate to accept me first before I gave them the happy news, so I let them believe what they wanted. You're going to fix this. Laura said and pointed to me. Me. She nodded and I smiled. Maybe Laura would let me right into the house then. It was going to be an easy hunt. Calm down, Laura. Celine said. Anyone here could have scared her away. I know, but it was hard to just get her here. Laura said. Maybe it was too soon. Too soon. She has been cooped up in that house since she became part of the pack. She said. She needs to see other people. Don't you want to see her again? Of course, I do. Celine said. I want my daughter to know who she is named after, but we can't push her. Pushing her is exactly what we need to do. Laura said. Or she will never leave the house. Celine just shook her head a smile on her lips, but it was clear she was done with the conversation. Laura turned to me again and our eyes locked. I will bring her back, and you will apologize. Apologize. I chuckled. I was not going to apologize for anything. She was the one who was going to say sorry for running from me once I got my hands on her. Exactly. For what? I asked. For whatever you said that scared her away. Laura said. She was the one sneaking around the castle. 
Why didn't you keep your eyes on her or give me a warning? I asked. A warning. I nodded, smiling smugly. It was actually a little amusing being the only one who knew the truth about Cecilia and I. You're the one who brought her here. I said. Yes, and you scared her away. Now you get to fix it. She is a rather careful one, isn't she? I asked, hoping to learn a little more. She is cautious, yes. Laura said. Why? Well, she had a mate once. And? I asked. One who dumped her. I know that but who was he? I asked. Laura shrugged. I am not sure. She said and turned to her sister. Her sister held up her hands, looking lost. I don't know either. She told me very little. She said. Just that he left her for someone else. I see. Yes, so don't use any of your tricks on her. Laura said and had picked up a butter knife now and was using it to point it at me. Or you will stab me? I choked. Stab you, cut you, throw it at you, I haven't decided yet. She said and smiled. I looked at James rather shocked, but he just shrugged, almost looking a little proud of his mate. You should know by now not to mess with my mate. He said. I didn't mes with her. I messed with her beta. I said and smiled at Laura. Laura narrowed her eyes. And if you mess with my pack members, I will cut you. Aha, uh -huh, so you are going to cut me. I teased. She just shook her head, but there was a smile on her lips, so she couldn't be very mad at me if I could make her smile. Don't try to distract me. She said, still using the knife to point at me. Your charm doesn't work on me. So, I have a lot of charm? A few laughed, while Lara and I continued to argue, teasing each other, and I had to say I was glad I decided to come down for dinner tonight, or I wouldn't have run into a certain person. Fine, fine. I finally said. I will make it better. No, don't say it like that. Lara said. What? Like that. Like you will use your flirty eyes and charming smile on her. That is what scared her away in the first place. She said. So, I can't even smile. No, you need to look bored. Bored? And uninterested. She said. You have got a lot of rules. Laura smiled and nodded. Cecilia is like a stray dog. She won't just come running to you, trusting you. She needs time and space. Laura said. I was not giving her either. Time and space? No fucking way. She was my mate, and she had to realize very soon that I was not letting her go because I had never before met a female who could make me go that crazy by telling me to go away. It was the completely wrong thing to say because now I only wanted her more. I thought you said she needed to be pushed. I said. Not by you. She told me. It is all very confusing. I shook my head, and Lara groaned annoyed, but then soon a little furball who had disappeared out of the blue jumped up on my lap, shocking me a little, while she looked over the table with her hungry eyes, taking it all in. I ran my hand down her head and she looked at me again. Well done. I whispered, now understanding why she had needed me to follow her. Cecilia. I didn't talk to anyone for the rest of the night. Lara tried calling me and left me a few messages, but I didn't answer. When I came home, I just went straight into the shower, because I could still smell Lucian, and damn it if it didn't turn my knees to jelly and made my heart beat out of control. I just needed his scent of me and out of my nose, so I could concentrate again. The shower was really heaven, but the pulsing feeling in my pussy didn't go away, because images of Lucian appeared in my head. He was a very tall and big alpha. Nothing like those social alphas who had let the luxuries of life turn them weaker and snobby. No, Lucian might have a reputation for sleeping around, but he reminded me nothing of Nolan. Nolan was more the social type. He was the second son of an alpha, so, of course, he wasn't going to inherit anything, and he certainly hadn't been happy about getting mated to a lone wolf. I was so far beneath him, and he made sure to show it. Lucian would do the same to though. He wouldn't be able to help himself. I might be a beta now, but but I was not strong enough to be his mate, and I did not want to gamble with my heart too. 
Lucian might find me interesting now, but soon he would see how plain and boring I was. He would find somewhere else to turn to, and I couldn't go through that again. I refused to go through it I sighed, turning the water colder, but nothing seemed to work. No, we can't, and you know this. I said. My wolf sighed, not even wanting to argue. She might feel a little hopeful because we had found our mate, but she didn't actually believe that Lucian would be different. She took it the hardest when we were thrown away and rejected. Nolan was our true mate, so it felt like being ripped to shreds from the inside and out when he left me. I barely survived it, and if it wasn't because I had been so focused on trying to find a way to release myself from him, then I would have gone insane and eventually killed myself. We just need to sleep. I said. I turned to the water and quickly dried myself before I found my t-shirt and some short shorts to sleep in. I let myself fall down on my small bed that stood up against the wall. My room was very small, which was a bit unusual since I was the beta. Lara had offered me a bigger one and on the top floor with her, but I had refused and would rather be here on the lowest one and a room the size of a broom closet. I closed my eyes and tried to fall asleep, but every time I did, I saw Lucian in front of me. His handsome face, and those light green eyes, and up close you could see he had a small scar on his cheek too. It gave his perfectly shaped face a little edge. I knew Lucian was from a powerful family because I knew his cousin. I knew she had taken over even though he was the rightful heir. I wondered though why he didn't want to lead. Nolan would have jumped at the chance but not Lucian. Just forget him. I growled at myself. I growled at myself. I pulled the blanket over my face, but soon couldn't breathe and threw it away again. I turned to my side and tried really hard to concentrate on sleeping when I heard some kind of sliding sound. I opened my eyes and stared into my wall before I slowly turned my head in time to see a shadow climbing through my window. What the fuck? I jumped up, ready to go for the gun I had on my nightstand, but a hand grabbed my wrist, and another was put over my mouth. SH, it's just me. Lucian? I mumbled into his hand, and I saw a small smile spread on his perfect lips. He lowered his hand and slowly released me. What the hell are you doing? I whisper yelled. Well, you ran so fast out of the house you missed dinner. So, you came to what? Bring me dinner? I asked. He chuckled. No! He said. I came to see you. And now you have. You may go. He shook his head and then sat down on the bed beside me. I placed my hands on his big arm and pushed him away, even though he didn't move at all. Go! No! He said. This is my room. You're not even supposed to be here. I said. Laura wanted me to apologize. Apologize? She thinks I scared you away, which I guess I did. He said. But not in the way she thinks. The way he smiled at me told me just what Lara had been thinking, and I rolled my eyes. Nothing to apologize for. Now go. Why do you want me to? He asked. I told you this. I said. Listen, I understand you have been through this once, but this time it's different. He said. Oh, how? Because I am not that other mate from your past. Sure, you're not. I said. I mean it, Leah. He said. He said. Cecilia. That's my name, don't start calling me something else. I told him. A wicked smile spread on his lips and he suddenly moved closer. I leaned backwards, trying to get away, because if he got to close, I wouldn't be able to control myself. My pussy literally had a heartbeat, and the pulsing feeling only grew stronger the closer he got. I'm just experimenting. He said. Experimenting? What sounds best? He said and then placed a hand on the bed, slowly coming closer. I might just call you sweetheart instead. Please don't. Or maybe just sweetness, because I bet, you're very sweet. I'm not. I'm really fucking rude and therefore, I will tell you to fuck of now. I told him. I see. I got myself a fighter. 
he said, now almost hovering over me, and I couldn't move further away, so I tightened the sheets around me. I guess you're my own little wildcat. Stop it. He chuckled, and I knew this was exactly what he wanted, making me feel cornered and a little flustered. You have had your fun, go now. I said. He shook his head. The fun hasn't begun yet. Lucian. Yes, call out my name, Wildcat. He said before he suddenly placed his hand on my neck and brought me in for a hot and demanding kiss that stole my breath away. I couldn't fight him at that moment, and leaned into the kiss, feeling his warm lips move against mine. I didn't remember kissing being this good, but it was enough to make my heart go crazy, and I whimpered a little, wanting more than just this kiss no. I turned my head and then jumped out of bed, needing to get away from him. You can't. I said and turned to him again. Explain to me why. I told you why. It's not good enough, Wildcat. He said. Stop it. I said. He smiled. Stop this now. What? Everything. All of you. Stop looking so good. I told him. He chuckled and then took off his jacket. He threw it away and removed his gun holster before he started to unbutton his shirt slowly, making me watch every button pop free. I swallowed hard as more of his skin was revealed to me, even the beginning of a huge burn scar he had on his stomach. How had he gotten that? He didn't take his shirt off but then nodded towards me. Your turn, Lucian. Maybe it was extreme to come here, sneaking into a room at night, which I found very small. I thought a beta was given a room almost as big as the Alpha. Had Cecilia wanted it like this or did Lara just not like her that much? No, Lara was rather fond of her, it had to have been Cecilia's choice, and it made sense. It was almost like my little mate just wanted to disappear into thin air. It pained me she wanted to hide so much because I loved looking at her. I loved looking at her long slim legs that were completely revealed to me in those small shorts and the way her nipples poked against the material of her shirt. She wanted me but didn't dare take the chance. That was fine. I would just give her a little push. What is it going to be, Wildcat? I asked. Stop calling me that. She said and looked at me for a while. I challenged her with my eyes and I could see something going on inside of her but what would be her choice? Suddenly, it was like she had decided something with herself, and she grabbed the hem of her t-shirt and threw it away. I watched as her beautiful body was revealed to me, and her small breasts just begging to be sucked and adored by me. Fuck, I wanted her and my cock grew so hard so fast, I almost felt a little dizzy as all the blood just traveled south. Fucking hell. I whispered. Cecilia grabbed the edge of her shorts, pushing them far down enough so they slid the rest of the way, and I swallowed hard. It was not an over-the-top strip show, and it wasn't because Cecilia did anything special, just her being well, her, it was enough for me to completely lose my mind. Come closer. I told her. She seemed unsure for a second, but then did as I told her, and placed herself in front of me. I placed my hands on her hips, just feeling all of that soft skin of hers. Where the hell have you been? I whispered before I leaned in and left a small kiss on her stomach. She gasped so sweetly. Not far. She whispered. I chuckled. No, she had not been far, and yet I was only running into her now because she liked to stay out of sight. She liked to hide, but there was no more hiding. I was going to have her tonight. I was going to feel like what it meant to be fully connected with my mate and what it would be like to please her. No more hiding. I said and looked up at her. She looked at me and pushed some of her hair behind her ear. You won't just give up, will you? She asked. I shook my head. I'm not really known for giving up. I said. She reached out and placed her hand on my cheek and I felt calmer than ever. How did she have such power over me? I had no idea, but I never wanted her to stop. I never wanted this moment to end, because now I understood. I knew what I had been missing, and I knew what it was all the others were feeling. I even understood Kate better, and why she couldn't live without her own mate. Lucian. 
The way she said my name fuck it made me go crazy, and I quickly turned us around, so she ended up on the bed on her back and I placed myself between her legs. I leaned closer to her and kissed her hard, and she responded back to me. Fuck, I loved kissing her. I could never get enough. I just wanted it to last forever, but I also wanted to feel her. Feel how ready she was for me. I reached between us, and her pussy was dripping. She might have told me she wanted me to go, but her body wanted me close. She let out a little scream at the first contact and then leaned her head back, as I started to give her clit the attention it clearly needed. You shouldn't have run from me. I whispered against her lips. I could have taken care of this much sooner. She panted against my mouth before she kissed me again, and I started to work her hard and fast, wanting to see how beautiful she looked when she came. Lucian, please. Please what? She could barely form words. She was desperate for release and I really wanted to see her come. Just don't oh, goddess, don't stop. I didn't and soon I pushed her over the edge. She clung to me, trying to focus on kissing me, while she came. Her sweet sounds went straight to my cock, making me even harder if that was possible, and I was desperate to be inside of her, but I wanted a small taste too. I removed my hand as she slumped down on the bed and licked my fingers clean of her juices, tasting her sweet slick. You really shouldn't have run, I said and reached down to free my cock from my pants. Cecilia opened her eyes and looked at me, and I opened her legs wider, wrapping them around me, but just as I was about to enter her, I saw something change in her. Like she was putting up this wall between us, almost like she wasn't quite ready for this. She was still thinking too much, I realized. One orgasm hadn't calmed those fears of hers and leaned closer and kissed her. Don't shut me out now, I whispered. Just do it. She said like this was a chore or something. I shook my head and started to kiss my way down her body. Lucian. But I silenced her as I went to suck on one of her nipples. She moaned and leaned her head back as I sucked a little harder, before giving it a last lick and then kissing my way down her stomach. I wanted her to enjoy this, not make it seem like something she had to do because we were mates, and I certainly didn't mind getting another taste. I spread her wide open for me so I could see all of her before I swiped my tongue through all of her wetness. She gasped and reached for me, pressing me closer to her, and I went to suck on her clit, playing with it with my tongue, making her grab my hair harder, the pleasure becoming more intense for her. Goddess. Lucian. She called out, just as she was balancing on the edge, but then I pulled away. She looked up at me confused and with eyes so full of desire, she wasn't even listening to her fears now. What are you doing? I flipped her around, and she looked over her shoulder confused before I had her up on fours. Making sure you enjoy this, I leaned down to her ear and whispered before I slid inside heaven, making us both moan with pleasure. Never before had a fuck been this good. I had only just gotten inside of her, and I really had to concentrate on not coming already. Her pussy was burning hot and so damn wet, that it was easy to slide inside of her. She squeezed me tightly though, getting used to my size, and pushed back a little, wanting me to move. I grasped her hips, wanting to leave some temporary marks, as I began to move. She moaned louder and I knew she was very close already. I had kept her on the edge for a reason. I wanted to feel what it was like being inside of her and feeling her come. Fuck you're so fucking perfect. I couldn't stop myself from fucking her harder and faster, desperate to come inside of her too and so I reached around her and found her clit, moving my fingers over it, and soon she couldn't hold back anymore. She screamed and came hard, grabbing the sheets so tightly they tore, and I quickly followed her over the edge, her pussy milking me from everything I had. We stayed like that for a long time, both of us just trying to recover from how amazing that had been. I had hoped to draw it out a little longer, but Cecilia was making me lose my mind. In some way, she was the hottest little thing I had ever been with. I couldn't explain it, but she was like a dream come true, and I didn't even know that much about her. I had hoped she felt the same way, but when we had finally caught our breath, she moved away from me and quickly took her clothes. She went to clean up only to come back dressed again and a cold look on her face. I had fixed my clothes and now watched her a little confused. 
Now you can go. She said. At what? You got what you wanted, so now you can go. She said. I couldn't believe this, and it angered me so fucking much. I had left other people's places after a quick fuck and others had left my place, but they had meant nothing to me. Cecilia meant everything, despite the fact I had only just met her today. I couldn't help it. She was my mate. What? She asked when I just looked at her. You think that was all I came for? I asked her, standing up. She wrapped her arms around herself and looked away in an almost guilty way, but I knew what she was doing. She was pushing me away because she was surprised at how much she liked it when we were together. It had felt fantastic and I wanted to do it all over again. I wanted us to fuck until we were nothing but sweaty masses and then go to sleep, holding each other and waking up doing the exact same thing we did before we fell asleep. I wanted every night and every day with her. I had waited so damn long for her. I was not letting her go now. Isn't it? She asked. I walked over to her and wrapped my hand around her jaw, making her look at me. She was so tiny compared to me, but I loved it. She stared up at me shocked, but I wasn't hurting her. I just wanted her to look at me. I want you. I told her. All of you. Lucian, no. I know you're scared. I remember what you said about falling in love with me, but listen to me, Cecilia, that is exactly what is going to happen. I will make you fall in love with me, and that is a promise I intend to keep. So be prepared. I'm not done at all. She stared at me shocked, and I took a moment just to memorize every little detail about her, before I turned away from her and climbed through her window again, going back home to give us both a chance to lick our wounds before the battle continued. Cecilia, I will make you fall in love with me Lucian's words had haunted me the entire night, so I had not gotten any sleep at all. His words and the thought of his touch, too, had kept me awake. It was hard to forget how good it felt. He had made me come twice before he had come himself. I had rarely come with Nolan, and when I did it was often with my own assistance, but Lucian seemed to want to please me, and he seemed to love to see me lose myself to the pleasure he brought me. I couldn't let the feeling he had brought me last night overpower my decision. The thing was, Lucian might be interested now, but it wouldn't last, and I refused to sit around and wait, letting my heart become his, only for him to throw it away. I simply couldn't do it. Cecilia? I looked up from my computer and saw Lara looking at me. Yes, Luna? Are you okay? I nodded. Are you okay? I nodded. Fine. I lied. You look tired. Did you not sleep? She asked. I sighed a little. Not really. Lara looked at me worried, and I tried my best to act like everything was fine, so she wouldn't worry, but clearly, I was failing. Listen, it wouldn't have anything to do about last night, would it? Last night? Did she know something? Had she seen something? Or heard oh goddess, no. No one could know about Lucian and me. They would never stop telling me how wonderful it was to have a mate, and that I couldn't miss the chance. The thing was, they didn't know what it was like being thrown away, and they never would. They wouldn't understand what I went through, and I didn't want to talk about it. Eh, last night? About Lucian. Lucian. I was scared now. She did know something oh goddess, no, no. Yeah, and what he said? Said? I asked confused. Wait, what was she talking about? I know he scared you away. She said. I. I was so confused right now. I had been so certain that she had heard something or knew that Lucian had come to visit me last night, and I had given myself to him, but now it seemed like I was wrong. I know he scared you away from the dinner. She said. Well. He said so himself. She said. And and what exactly did he say? I asked. Well, not much. Just that he scared you away. I breathed out relieved, so he had not revealed anything. He had just made everyone believe he had done something bad to me, and it had scared me of. Good to know. Yeah, well it doesn't matter. I said. 
It does if it keeps you awake. She said. I'm fine. Yeah, I used to say that all the time too. She said. I'm fine. I don't need your help. A mate? Who needs it? She recited all the old things that she had said on repeat because it was a good way to get people to mind their own business, but now she had changed. She had gotten mated. She was better at telling people when she might need help. I couldn't let my guard down though, because it was just different. Lucian said he wanted me, but he had no idea what it was going to be like once the honeymoon phase was over. He would realize I was only dragging him down. You can be honest. She said. I would rather just work. I told her. Cecilia. Please, Luna, we are not really friends. I said. She seemed shocked that I had said this. Am I wrong? No, I guess not. She said. But I would like for us to be. Why? Because I believe we might work together even better if we knew more about each other. She said. I know in the beginning I wasn't really open to any friendship, but I have learned how important it is to have people around you that you can trust. I'm good. I told her. Cecilia, I just want us to be able to talk about more than work. Why? What else is there? I asked. Like what Lucian said to you. She said. He just made some inappropriate joke, that's it. I told her, just so we could end this conversation. It must have been a very bad one if it scared you away. She said. I just didn't feel like eating dinner with him. They are not all like him. She said. I know, but I just I didn't already want to be there, and he gave me a reason to walk out. I told her. I really want you to come back with me and try again. I can tell Lucian not to be there. He doesn't attend the dinners a lot. She said. He doesn't? I looked up and saw her shake her head. No, he doesn't. Why? I asked. I knew I shouldn't ask. I shouldn't have learned more about him, but I couldn't help myself. The word had left my lips before I even got a chance to stop myself. I think it is hard on him. In what way? I know he wants to find his mate. She said. And he sees all of us so happy and in love, and I think it pains him. So, he really does want a mate? She nodded, but even though I knew this now, it didn't change the fact that he would get bored later on. Maybe it was just the idea of a mate he really liked. He had no idea what it even meant being connected like mates were, and I just knew someone like him wouldn't enjoy it. So, if he isn't there, would you come? She asked. I thought I only had to do this once. I said. Yes, but you only came over with me, you didn't stay to eat. She said. Lara, you said I only had to do it once, and then you would never ask me again. It doesn't really count. It does to me. I said. Cecilia. Can we just focus on work? I asked. I just don't want you to miss out. She said. I'm fine. Really? You might not believe me, but I am fine. I like being on my own. I was born to be a lone wolf. It is where I thrive. I told her. I don't believe that. That's fine, but I am not coming back with you. I told her. It was too risky I couldn't end up running into him again. It would hurt too much. Lucian. I was poking the food in front of me with my fork, not really having an appetite. I wasn't sure why I joined tonight's dinner again. Maybe because I didn't really have anything else to do. I wasn't spending my time with some stranger, since I had now found my mate, I only wanted her. I really fucking wanted her, but Cecilia was not going to be convinced so easily. She had pushed me away, and I had made her a vow that I would make her fall in love with me, but how? How was I going to do that, when she didn't even want to see me? It was a damn hard puzzle to solve. Not hungry. Lily asked me. She was sitting further away on the other side, but she always seemed to know when something was bothering someone. She had a special gift and was therefore perfect for being a doctor. Rose sat beside her, smiling her sweet little smile, 
and looking at me like Lily, almost analyzing me. Not really. I told her. Is something bothering you? Everyone started to look at me, and I felt very much put on the spot. I wasn't sure what to tell them, but then I thought it over. Maybe I should tell them the truth. They could help me convince Cecilia that she should be mine. I opened my mouth to answer when suddenly someone entered the dining room. It was someone from the border control, looking rather worried. My king, someone has requested to enter the territory, he said. Who? He says he is here to see someone, he said. And who is that? The male looked at me. Me? I asked. He nodded, yet looked at me in a strange way. I couldn't quite understand why he was looking at me like that, but then I turned to the king and shrugged a little. Maybe it is important, I said. The king sighed. Fine, let them enter. The male nodded and quickly left, but not before glancing at me again. That was so strange, I thought, before turning to the king again. Who did you screw over now? He chuckled. That made everyone laugh, but I was very confused. While, of course, I could maybe have given someone the wrong idea, I didn't play people. I was honest with what I wanted and walked away if they didn't want the same thing. I really don't know what this is about. I said. I guess we will figure out soon. Garrett said. Are we going to see who it is or not? All of us? I asked. He smiled. I would love to see some female Kikures. How do you know it is a female? I asked and stood up. That made people laugh a little too, as we all walked out of the dining room. The king and queen walked in the front, smiling and talking while I kind of fell into the back, hoping if someone had come looking for a fight, the others could slow the person down. I was not scared of fighting the person, but I had gotten quite strong, and it wasn't always I knew exactly how much power I put behind my punches. I could lose it if someone got me really angry. Had I slept with someone who was mated to someone? No, at least not in a good while. I often stayed clear of those, because I knew the drama it could bring, and I didn't want that, but maybe it really was someone's mate or husband who had come looking for me. Who knew? The king was the one to open the door, while I tried looking outside to see who it was. But I couldn't see the person, so I pushed forward until I could look around the king, and then I froze. Luke, I hear you have been looking for me. A way to familiar voice said. A way to familiar voice said. I swallowed hard, as I stared into the same green eyes as me. My heart started to beat faster, and I knew my past had come back to haunt me. I had tried looking for him, so I could fix it before he found me, but I had put it away after we had killed Connor, hoping it would stay buried. Now I knew it wouldn't. Are you not going to invite me in? Landon asked. Don't, my king, I said, before stepping in front of him. Don't fucking let him in. Oh Luke, come on. Are you not even going to invite your brother in? I thought we were closer than that, he said. I growled deeply, before I threw myself at him, so we both went tumbling down the stone staircase and rolled over the gravel that led up to it. I couldn't think straight, all I saw was that night he disappeared, the flames, our parents screaming. I could have stopped it all, but he was my brother. My twin brother. We looked so much alike, except for the giant burn scar he had on the right side of his face. He almost looked a bit like Two-Face from Batman, just not as bad. The skin was all scarred now, and the hair didn't grow on that side. He used to look a lot more handsome, but the consequences of what he did that night showed clearly now. We rolled around, trying to get on top. I threw punches at him the best I could, but of course, he had not spent his time getting weak. He was strong too. Not as big as me, but he had definitely used his time training and getting stronger. We had been kids last time I saw him. Now we were grown alphas, both so damn angry. Lucian. I heard the others yell, as they walked towards us. Landon pushed away from me, and we both quickly stood up, but then I saw he had a flask in his hand and he threw the smelly gasoline at me before he pulled out a lighter and turned it on. Everyone froze, as they saw what he had planned. No, no, he said. This is between brothers. I growled lowly, as I stood there, covered in gasoline. I could have used normal alcohol, but you know I love the smell of gasoline, he said. 
I just narrowed my eyes, as I looked at him, hating him for everything he had cost me. What are you doing here, Landon? I asked. He smiled, as he ran his eyes all over my family, getting a good look at every one of them. As I said, I heard you were looking for me, he said, as he turned to me again. So, I thought I would come to say hello. Don't play this game. I told him. His smile grew, and he knew I was done with this shit. All right, let me jump right to it then, he said. I want my pack. Your pack? I asked. Yes, the one you handed over to our dear little cousin Madeline and her mate Evan, he said. Well, as you just said, they own it, not me. I can't give you something I don't have, I said. My brother almost looked at me disappointed, and the way he tilted the lighter from side to side made me lean my weight back, not sure if he was really going to throw it at me. Fire was something no one, not even the supernatural, could fight. It would burn through my flesh faster than I could heal. Well, since I am the firstborn, then it was never really yours to give, was it? He asked. I slowly realized what his plan was here. It was why I had not wanted the pack in the first place, because I knew he could always come back and claim it, and even if the pack wanted to follow me, they couldn't ignore the natural order. Landon had been born seven minutes before me. He was the rightful heir and their alpha. It was why I had passed it over to Madeleine, hoping it would be safe with her, but now I realized, legally, it was never mine to hand over. Now, you're going to give it back to me, he said. I. Not done speaking. I swallowed hard, as he tipped the lighter from side to side again. You see Luke, I have been waiting for the right time to come home, he said. And claim back what was always mine. You were a kid. You couldn't have inherited it. I told him. I would just have gotten rid of our uncle too, and then I could, he said. You killed our parents, and you expect the pack to follow you. I had it all fucking planned, but then you had to go ruin it, he shouted at me. He stared at me with so much hatred, but he always had. Ever since we were kids, he had been hateful. Full of anger and an ugliness, that just wasn't in me. Even as kids though, he tortured me, hurting me whenever he could, and sometimes would get away with it as well. I knew our father really tried changing him and believed he could change, but something was just wrong inside Landon. He didn't want to turn better. He wanted to be like this. Cruel. I was trying to save them. I said. As I said, you ruined it. He said. Landon, the pack is not mine anymore. No, it is mine. He said. I can't just give it back to you though. Madeline and Evan are already leading it, and they are doing a good job at it. The pack is loyal to them. Madeleine and Evan had not come to join dinner tonight. Sometimes they stayed in their territory and enjoyed eating together just those two were together with their pack members, strengthening the bond between them all, but I knew they would know about this soon. Maddie would know Landon was alive, and he had always been. Everyone thought I was the only survivor because I didn't tell them about him. I let them believe he was dead because I hoped he would stay away, and because despite everything he was my brother. I don't care, he said. You get back what was never yours to give, or I will take it with force. Landon. Do you think our sweet little cousin can scream as loudly as our parents when I burn her alive? He asked with an evil smile on his lips. If you get near her. Or maybe I should pay a sweet little beater a visit. I stared at him scared now. Yeah, I have been keeping track of you. Since when do you trespass just to see a little beater? He asked. I glanced over at the others. Laura was here tonight though, and she was looking at me confused, probably slowly connecting the dots. She is your mate, isn't she? He asked. Aye. What, does the Luna not accept you two together, or is it the first time my dear brother has had to chase someone? He asked. I guess it pays of not having half your face burned off. You did it to yourself. I said. Sure, let's act like you weren't the one who burned it. He said. You started that fire. You were the one who couldn't finish what you started, he said. Landon. I will give you a week. Then I want everything to be ready or I will burn our cousin alive and make her mate watch before I come for the rest, he said and pointed at the others, who couldn't do anything but stand and watch because I was still wet from the gasoline. Your choice, Luke. 
I bet I can really make your mate scream. If you touch as much as a hair on her, you will what? Burn the other side of my face. You know everyone always thought you were so perfect when we were kids. They never saw the dark sides of you. They will now though, and then you will know what it is like being all alone. He said, slowly backing away. He said, slowly backing away. I have missed you, brother. Landon. One week. The clock is ticking. He walked back to where his car was, never taking his eyes off of US, and always ready with the gasoline and the lighter. We had to watch as he drove away, before everyone turned to me, really wanting some answers yeah, I should have known my brother would come one day. That was why I had not been here when Chris died. I had thought I could fix it. I had thought I could finish what I started that night. I had thought I could kill him, but I had not been able to find him, and now he had found me. Lucian. I was allowed to take a quick shower and change my clothes before we were all called to the king's office. Even Angela was there. She looked so tired, and I wasn't sure when she had last showered or changed her clothes, but it had to have been a while. She seemed confused about why she was here though. She had not been at dinner and, therefore, she didn't know about Landon either or his demand. I have contacted Maddie and Evan and they are on their way, Valerio said, as we all found our places in the room. Why? Angela asked. What is going on? Lucian, Valerio said, and everyone turned to me. I scratched the back of my neck, not sure what to say. I mean, I knew I hadn't been honest about what happened that night when my parents died, but could you really blame me? I had a psycho brother. It was not really something you just brought up in a normal conversation. Can it wait until my cousin gets here? I would like to only explain this once. I said. Valerio nodded, and so we waited in awkward silence. I could feel people's angry stares at my back, and I got it. I had not been honest, and now I was bringing people in danger. I had to say I was quite happy when my cousin came through the door with her mate. Hey, what's going on? Maddie asked. Maddie asked. She walked over to me but was looking at the king. Now you can telephone us, Lucian, Valerio said. I sighed and felt everyone's eyes on me. Landon is alive. I said and looked at Maddie. What? I nodded slowly, barely able to look at her. It was who I was looking for in the spring. Wait, that was why you went here? Angela asked and looked at me a little confused. I nodded again. Yeah, I hoped I hoped I could track him down and end where I had started. I said. And what was that? Maddie asked. That fire it wasn't an accident, Maddie. I said. She looked at me shocked. Landon set our house on fire, and he was going to burn us all alive. But I woke up that night before the fire could reach my room, and then we fought. I said. But I was too late to save my parents. Lucian. I couldn't kill him though. He is my brother I just couldn't do it. I said. So, I made it seem like I was the only survivor, in hopes he might stay away, but I have kind of learned by now that the past never stays far away. It is why I never wanted to be the Alpha. Because if he came back, he would claim the pack back. Maddie finished. I nodded. He wants it now though, Maddie, and there isn't much we can do. I told her. Oh, come on, there has to be something. Octavia said and then turned to her mate. Legally, Valerio said. No, it belongs to the firstborn, by the goddess, you could challenge him for it, he suggested. I shook my head. No, Landon plays dirty. He would not allow me to win. I bet he would bring the gasoline to the party. He loves that stuff. If he could drink it, he would. I told him. Valerio leaned back in his seat and seemed to try to think of a solution but there wasn't really one, other than, of course, killing my brother. The pack could decide not to follow him. Evan said. Unluckily. I said. No one really knows what happened that night, and it will just be his word against mine. Can't you just strip him of his title? Octavia asked. Valerio shook his head. I have to have a good reason for that, he said. He burned his parents alive. Is that not a good enough reason? Sadly, I don't have any proof. Other than the burn scar on his face and the one Lucian carries, there isn't much evidence that Landon set the fire. 
I would need real proof if I was going to strip him of everything. Valerio said. Then what the hell are we going to do? Maddie asked. I sighed, just shaking my head a little. I'm not sure. I whispered. Everyone was quiet for a little while when suddenly Lara stepped closer. When were you going to tell us that Cecilia is your mate? She asked and crossed her arms. I smiled a little. Once I had won her over. What? I didn't actually scare her away, Lara. I said. Or I did, but not in the way you thought. Wait, Cecilia is your mate? Maddie asked. I nodded and smiled proudly, only to remember that right now it was not a good thing I had found my mate. I had waited for her for so long, and now my brother had appeared again, messing everything up. Yeah. Did you not know? Maddie asked Lara. She shook her head. Cecilia has not said anything. That is because she doesn't accept me. I said. What? Laura asked. Yeah, she wants nothing to do with another mate. She made that quite clear. I told her. Cecilia. Laura sighed and shook her head. Let us stay on topic. Valerio intervened. This is important too. Laura said. I know, but right now we have a pyromaniac going around who threatened to burn Maddie and Evan alive. He said. He what? Evan asked. We need to figure out a way to wake him down. Valerio said and turned to me again. Lucian, you have to challenge your brother. I can't. You can't or you won't. Valerio, not fair. Octavia said. No, it is a fair question. Because even if your brother fights dirty, that fight would be overseen. We could make sure everything was going smoothly. You don't know my brother. I said. He doesn't lose. Or maybe you don't really want to kill him. Valerio said. I went after him in the spring, did I not? But you never faced him, like you do now. He said. I. We need to get this over with, Lucian, before he becomes the next Connor, messing up our lives. He said. My brother just wants the pack. We both know he will want more. People like him are hungry for power. How can I be sure he won't come here and set the castle on fire? Valerio asked me. I looked down, not able to answer that question. That's right, I can't be sure. He said. I will fix it. I said. I will talk to him. You need to get rid of him. Once and for all. I sighed and nodded. I knew I had to, but some things were just not that simple. Cecilia. I was just cleaning up some things in Lara's office when I heard someone coming this way. I turned to the door, waiting to see who it was, but it was just Lara. I smiled at her, but she did not smile back. She walked into the office, and then closed the door behind her. Something was of, I could feel it, but I wasn't sure what it was that was going on. Luna, is everything okay? I asked. Sit. Lara said, as she walked over to her desk. Why? Because we are going to have a long conversation. She said. I looked at her confused but did as she told me, walking over to the seat I usually sat in, and looking at her. She continued to watch me though, and it only made me more confused. Have I done something? I asked. It's more like what you haven't done. I'm not sure what you mean. I said. Are you and Lucian mates? She asked me. I looked at Lara shocked, not sure what to say. I had not expected her to ever ask me this. How did she even know? You are, aren't you? I can see it on your face. No, Luna I. Don't lie to me. Lara said. I need a beta I can trust. I just I wasn't going to accept him. I said. Why not? Because because I have done this before and I know how it ends. I said. But you don't Cecilia. You don't know how it ends. I do. I am not as lucky as you to have found the perfect mate right away. I said. You think James is perfect? Not really. She looked at me a little annoyed but shook my comment of her. He isn't and I am not perfect. She said. I just I don't want to go down that road again. I said. And what is that road? The one where everything seems so perfect, but I end up getting my heart and soul ripped out. I told her. 
Cecilia. Don't say that it won't happen. You can't know that, but we do know Lucian, and we do know what he is like. I said. Lucian wants a mate. She said. He is not going to betray you. At first, and when he realizes I am not what he wants, he will go find someone else. A real Luna. I said. Ranks aren't important. But they are. I know they are. I said. Cecilia, Lucian doesn't even inherit anything. He gave it all up. She said. It doesn't matter. I said. I am done with alphas. Alphas? I don't want to talk about it. I said. Lara sighed, and then seemed to think it all over before she turned very serious. I think you should though. She said. Luna. Not necessarily with me, but until you figure this shit out, I can't use you. She said. What? You're taking my position away? No, just temporarily giving you a short vacation. She said. But. I need a beta who is clear-headed and can be trusted, and right now you have got a lot to figure out. I don't. I shouted. But you do, because I know what it is like fighting the bond. It messes with your head, and until you either accept him or reject him, you will not be clear-headed. Please, Luna. Cecilia, I have made my decision, and you need to make a choice. Please, I have already rejected him. I said. You said the words? I shook my head. No, but I made it clear I didn't want him, and I will keep some distance from him and weaken our connection. I said. That's fine if you want to do it that way, but until you are actually free of him, I can't use you. She said. Luna. We have got trouble coming. She said. What? Yeah, and I need a beta who will not be clouded by the bond she is trying to fight so hard. Even though she could make it very easy on herself and just accept her mate. Lara said. I shook my head again. Then you're dismissed. She said. But. Cecilia, I am not changing my mind. She said. Please Luna, let's discuss this. We just did. She said. Luna. Cecilia, I have decided. But I can still be helpful. She shook her head. No, you can't. She said. Luna, he is just my mate. And the fact you say it like that makes me think you have forgotten all about the power a mate holds over you. Right, that must be why you forgave James for throwing you away for someone else. I don't get how you can even tell me not to work when you know what it feels like. I said. Lara narrowed her eyes and looked at me angrily, and I knew I had overstepped, but I couldn't help myself. The pain of the past clouded my judgment. You have no idea what you're talking about. She said. So, he didn't leave you? No, he didn't. She said angrily. Then why wasn't he here? Don't think you understand anything about us, just because you know what it is like being thrown away. James didn't leave to be with someone else. He needed to fix something, which is what you should be doing. She said. Fix something? He was trying to get better, so he could fully commit to me. She said. I looked at her shocked. He never wanted someone else. She said. She said. Now, you need to go, because I am quite pissed up now. Luna, I'm. Don't apologize right now because I don't want to hear it. Now go. I just slowly nodded and then turned on my heel, knowing there was something I had to fix myself. Cecilia. I drove back to the castle, determined to end my connection with Lucian, so I could finally be free of him and go back to work. Work was really all I had and I was happy about that. I didn't want a mate, and I was now going to prove it. He was the reason why I had lost my mind with Lara, and I feared she might not accept me back right away. I had to prove to her that I was serious when I said I didn't want a mate. I would not be like her and give in. I would reject Lucian despite the pain I knew we would feel. I parked by the many cars, before going up to the two big doors. I was unsure if I should knock, but then the door opened, and out came the queen. It looked like she was about to go for a run. She just smiled at me and let the door stay open. 
I guessed that was the invite I had been waiting for or did everyone know we were mates? Had Lucian told everyone we were? I was getting quite angry now. I had hoped this could be kept a secret, but at the same time, I should perhaps have made it clear I wanted it to be a secret. I had hoped me, not wanting to be with him and making it clear to him I didn't, made him not want to tell everyone. It seemed like I was wrong. I walked inside, not sure where to go first. Lucian's and my connection had just been formed. It took a while before it was strong enough so that you could track the other down if they weren't too far away, of course. Our bond was not a GPS, but it could definitely give you sort of a feeling of where to go. Looking for Lucian. I looked up the stairs where the beta of the king had appeared. I see everyone knows. I said. Well, yeah. He said. Where is he? I asked. In the living room. Just down the hallway. He said before he walked away, continuing down the way to the king's office. I sighed and walked out of the entrance hall and down this long hallway before I reached a living room where the doors were slightly opened. I could just barely see Lucian sitting on one of the couches, drinking a glass of something. I rarely drank, so I wasn't sure what it was. He didn't look very happy though and was leaning forward, his head buried in his hands. I had felt so determined, coming here, but now I was not so sure I should interrupt him. I started to back away when something brushed up against my legs. I looked behind me and saw a fat orange cat looking up at me. She meowed before tangling herself into my legs, so I tripped and fell forward. I reached for the handle of the door, barely getting a hold of it before I landed face down. Lucian looked up, hearing the commotion, and he seemed surprised I had come. Cecilia? I. I wasn't sure what to say now. Now that he looked at me, I could see how tired he was. What the hell had happened? And was his face a little bruised? It was clear the damage was new because bruises healed up quite fast. Something I can help you with? He asked me as he reached for his glass. I looked at him surprised. He hadn't talked to me so coldly before. Maybe he had finally realized that I was right. That we shouldn't be together. Actually, yes. I said and walked closer, closing the door behind me. I came to end it. I see. He placed his glass down and just looked empty. I was surprised by this. He had seemed so determined to get me to accept him and now he just seemed like he didn't care. I think it is for the best. I thought you didn't want either of us to reject each other because of the pain. He said. Yes, I know what I said. What changed? He asked. Well, now everyone knows. And? And I know they will try to convince me to be with you. I said. I need to prove I don't want to. Okay. Okay? I asked, confused. Well, I can't really stop you, can I? He asked. You just seem so determined to make me change my mind. I said. Now I have got other things to do. He told me. Other things? Shall we get it over with? He stood up and I looked at him shocked. Something was really very wrong. Lara said trouble was coming and therefore she needed a beta who was clear-headed, and now Lucian was acting like he didn't care if we were mates or not. Is is everything okay? I asked, not sure why I was asking. This was my chance and I was asking questions. Lucian looked at me confused. I am not sure those are the words you were supposed to say. He said. I shook my head. I know. Then why are you not saying them? He asked. Something is up. Lara said something strange. I said. Strange? Something about trouble coming, and now you are acting weird too. Something about trouble coming, and now you are acting weird too. I said. Because you know me that well. Well. She is right though. He said. Trouble is coming, and I need to focus on that. So, you're fine with us not being mates? I asked. No. He said. But it might keep you safe. Safe? I am the reason why trouble is coming. 
Now I was very intrigued, and I walked closer. Lucian sat down and so did I, on a couch beside his, leaning a little against the armrest. I wanted to know what we were up against this time. I needed to know what kind of trouble we were facing. I have a brother. He said. I heard he was dead. I said. He was supposed to be, at least. I don't understand. He disappeared the night I told everyone he had died because I couldn't finish what I had started. He told me. Which was? I tried killing him that night. He told me. Why? Because he burned down our house and killed our parents. I stared at Lucian, shocked, who just downed his drink without looking at me. No wonder he had turned so cold. I had no idea he had a past like that. It was crazy. And now he is back. Lucian said and placed the glass down on the coffee table. And what does he want? I asked. Everything. Everything. The pack, the territory, and if I don't deliver, he will kill my cousin. He said. And then probably everyone else. Including you. He turned to me and I saw the broken look in his eyes. I moved back a little, leaning against the couch, as I took in the information. He knows you're special to me. He said. He knows? How? Because he saw me sneak into the house. Into your room, and I think he has been keeping an eye on us for a long time. Getting a good look at who everyone is. So when he finally decided to strike, he would know how to strike hard. I. So, go ahead. Say the words. He said. Because you are my weak spot now, and I would rather he couldn't use you against me. Lucian. I knew the pain could probably make me go crazy. I mean I had heard how bad it was for Angela's mother. She was still fighting it, but Cecilia and I had not claimed each other, and the connection was new. Maybe we could survive it. Maybe we could actually get out of it without any sort of pain. We had to do it now, though before it was too late. Before, I couldn't help myself and would need to claim her as mine. Do you want me to say it? I asked when she hadn't said anything. I. Is it not what you want? I asked. Inside of me, I hoped that was true. I hoped she was ready to give us a chance, but I also knew my little mate was stubborn. She had tried it before. She knew what it was like having your heart ripped out of your chest and stomped on. She didn't want to cause that same pain, but at the same time, she needed to prove that she didn't really want me. Well. I. If you don't want to, we don't have to. I said. But then I would like for you to move in here. What? She shouted. Just until I have dealt with my brother. I know you probably want to continue to work with Lara but it would be nice to have you somewhere where I can keep my eyes on you. Wow, Lucian, back up. She told me. I smiled a little. It was rather funny when my mate got so worked up. It was good she could make me smile a little. Now that my brother had appeared again, I knew things would turn darker. He was crazy, and that was a nice way to describe him. What? I asked, acting a little innocent like I didn't know what I had asked of her. I am not moving in here with you, she said. I didn't say you had to move into my bedroom, but if you want to. Cecilia crossed her arms and looked at me annoyed. Calm down, Wildcat, I just want you to be safe. I told her. And I am. By living in the house, I already live in, she said. I shook my head. It would be better if you stayed here. It's much safer, and I can keep an eye on you. I told her. It's a no. Why are you being so stubborn? Because I don't need to live here. Lara's place is just as safe. She said. Yes, but I am not there. I said. And you need to be there, because? Goddess, little wildcat, we have only been mates for a few days, and you were driving me insane already. I said. She smiled smugly, almost like she wanted to drive me insane, but I kind of liked it. I liked that she didn't so easily agree with me. Of course, I didn't want to fight, but it was also nice to see her show her power a little. I just want you to be safe. And you think you can keep me safer here? 
she asked. I nodded. I do. Do you think I am weak? She asked. No. Then why can't I just protect myself? She asked. My brother is a psychopath. I told her. And he does not play fair. You think he cares you have received a little training? I am not alone. No, but this pack is bigger and a lot of people have trained their whole lives to be the warriors they are today. You would be safer here. I told her. You just want me near you. She said. I don't deny that. Then you could as easily just come with me. She said. I opened my mouth to answer her, telling her it was best she stayed here when I realized she was right. I could follow her. Why the hell not? You're right. I said. She looked at me shocked, and I realized it was not actually an offer. She just said it to try to end this conversation. She hadn't thought I would agree, probably thinking something was keeping me here. I can go pack right now. I said. What? I chuckled. What? You said I could easily just go with you when you were right. I said. I I am. She asked. I nodded. Yeah, I mean I like living here, and I will come back when it is all over, but why shouldn't I go with you? I asked. This is your home. She said, but it almost sounded like a question. It is, but it is not forever I am staying away. I said. Besides, you're my mate, it would only be right if I followed you. Normally it is the other way. She said. It once was. I said. Now Evan chose to follow Maddie, and James almost lives with Laura now. Why shouldn't I follow you? Because well it's you see. She was trying to come up with a reason not to spend so much time with me, and it was really funny to hear. I tried my best not to smile too much because I knew it would probably make her a little angry. I came here to reject you. She finally said. I hate when she keeps saying that. I thought we had shown her how good it could be my wolf got pissed every time she brought it up, and I couldn't say I was very thrilled to hear it either, but I could understand why she was confused right now. She hadn't thought the conversation would go this way. Well then, I said. What are you waiting for? I was only challenging her because I knew she couldn't do it. Cecilia wasn't a cruel person, and despite saying she didn't want a mate, I could only think a part of her actually did or she would have said the words by now. Lucian, I mean it. Okay, go ahead then, I said. She looked at me for a long time, and I moved closer, seeing the way she blushed a little, and I could almost read her mind because her eyes darted to my lips. I wanted to tell her I was thinking about our night too. I wanted it to happen again, but I would only touch her when she was begging me to. It's a bad idea. She suddenly said. What? You going with me. She said. Why? Well. Yes? Yes? I asked. It's it's eh, I like privacy. She said. I can just sleep in another room. I said. Well I get up annoyingly early to run. Good. I don't sleep a lot anyway, I said. And I could use the exercise. What do you mean? You are so strong. I smiled a little. Just give me one good reason as to why I shouldn't pack my stuff and come with you, I said. Well, Cecilia, a reason I had needed a reason, but when I couldn't come up with one, Lucian had gone to pack. I had called after him, trying to say the words I needed to say which were the words I reject you, but they never came out. Not even when I followed him and watched him pack a bag, or when we sat in the car and I drove, or when we finally entered the house. No words came out, and I couldn't tell you how the hell I had even gotten here. I was supposed to be free of him and now he was moving in. I had forgotten how nice it is here, Lucian said, while he held his bag and jacket in one hand. It was too warm to wear one, but you never knew when you needed one. Yeah. He turned to me and smiled, and I just looked away. This is insane. I whispered. What? Me looking out for my mate. How was that insane? He asked and started to walk away. Lucian. Wait. 
I haven't even told Lara. I said and ran after him, grabbing his arm and making him stop. Told me what? I turned my head and saw Lara standing on top of the stairs, looking between us confused. I'm moving in. Lucian quickly said with a big fat smile on his lips. You are? Lara asked and turned to me. I can explain. I said. I hope so. Well I you see what happened was Lucian. Lara just looked at me getting rather impatient when I couldn't find the words, and I heard Lucian sigh beside me. I usually wasn't this bad with words, but I couldn't help myself right now. I was so confused by everything that had happened that I didn't even know how to explain it. I need to be close to her. Lucian said. And since she won't move to the castle, I thought I could stay here. Lara watched Lucian for a little while, and my heart was beating fast in my chest. I had a million ideas of how she would react, but I had not seen what was coming. Okay. What? I yelled. Lara shrugged. Yeah, I get it. After my father attacked me, James wouldn't let me stay in the house either. He came to get me and I moved to the castle for a little while. I get why Lucian is here, and you are welcome to stay for as long as you want to. Perfect. He said. No, no, and no. I said quickly. Lucian just smiled at me before he started to walk up the stairs. So, which room is mine? He asked. I'm guessing you want to be close to Cecilia? Lara said. Yes. Cecilia, I am moving you to another room. Lara said. What? Why? Safer. She said and walked away with Lucian. But I... I had no idea how I had gotten into this situation. I couldn't make sense of any of it. I was supposed to just be left alone and focus on work, but now I had a mate that was moving in, and I was moving rooms, so it wasn't so easy to enter. And so I would be closer to the Luna and Alpha, which was what I should have been to begin with, but I had just wanted something small. I liked small. Oh, goddess. I walked into the living room and quickly went to the cabinet full of alcohol, just taking out a random flask. As I said, I didn't drink a lot, but I was desperate and I quickly opened it before downing what was inside of it. Has something happened? I turned my head to see Lucas enter with a few of his friends, all looking at me scared. I turned my head to see Lucas enter with a few of his friends, all looking at me scared. No one saw me act like this, so I could understand if they were concerned. I lowered the bottle. No, we just have a new member. New member. He asked and walked over to me, while the rest just went to sit down. They had all come back from a run, and Lucas took the bottle from me. You don't really drink, he said. I shook my head and coughed a little. I'm aware, I said. Should we be worried about this new member? He asked. I shook my head. Only me. Only you. Yeah. I said. What exactly is going on? He asked, as he went over to the others and sat down, taking a sip from the bottle himself and smiling a little. I walked closer, taking a deep breath and not sure how I was going to explain this situation without blurting out the words that my mate was moving in with us for a little while. Well, it's hard to explain. I said. What? He asked. This new member. Not so much a member, I said. More like a... Hey, I just saw Lucian, I guess you finally accepted him. I turned my head and saw James in the doorway, and when I looked back at the group of males in front of me, I saw them all staring at me shocked. I... It's great, Cecilia. Learn from our mistakes. Nothing good comes from fighting the bond. He said and smiled. But I didn't we aren't how the hell did this happen? I shouted. Everyone looked at me like I was acting crazy, and maybe I was. I just couldn't understand how the hell I had gotten into this situation. I had gone to the castle to reject him and now Lucian was moving in he was moving in. How the hell did I fix all of this? Is everything okay? James asked. No. Nothing is. Something you want to talk about, Beta? Lucas asked with a little smile. 
We are not mates. I quickly said. You aren't. One of the young males asked. But Lucian said. James began. I don't care. I don't even know why he is here. I said. I didn't invite him. James seemed surprised, but then he started to laugh and shake his head. What? I asked. Nothing. He said and continued to laugh. What is so funny? You will find out. He said and started to walk away. I turned to the young group of males, but they all just shrugged. None of them had found their mates, some of them were too young to even find one. So, you are not mates? Lucas asked. No yes, kind of. I said. What does kind of mean? It means I don't want him here. I said. But it seems like I don't have much of a choice. Lucian is not a bad person to get paired with. Lucas said. He is funny. And you have spent a lot of time with him? I asked. I have met him when I went out sometimes. He is often surrounded by both males and females, wolves and humans. He told me. I didn't mean to feel jealous, but I could feel it inside of me. I had forgotten for a moment about Lucian's past and how he liked both males and females. I mean when I had told him I couldn't really please him in every way, I had only meant I was not a firecracker in bed and I was rather plain and boring. I had forgotten there was another part one couldn't really live up to either would it matter? I shook my head, trying not to think about it, because I was not going to accept him. Lucian could soon go fuck both female and male strangers. I need to go fix something. I said and walked away. Lucian. I looked around the room I had been given. It was on the same floor as Lara and James, and I knew Cecilia was going to be moved up here too. She was going to have the room just in front of mine. Lara had had a funny smile on her lips when she chose it and ordered some pack members to help her pack up Cecilia's room and have her move up here. I knew Lara was trying to help Cecilia accept me, and I was happy about that, but Cecilia was still hurt from her past, and I needed to figure out a way for her to let go of it, so we could be together. Lucian. I turned around and saw Cecilia at the door, arms crossed over her chest, and just looking so good. She had her hair up today and was dressed in some blue shorts and a white top. I liked how few clothes she was wearing. I wanted to peel it all of her though and explore her body all over again. I knew I would never get tired of seeing her naked or hearing the sweet sounds she could make, but next time we made it, she wouldn't kick me out of her bed again. I would make sure of it. I did wonder where you had disappeared to, Wildcat. I did wonder where you had disappeared to, Wildcat. I said. This has gone too far. She said. She walked inside and closed the door, and I felt my whole body start to vibrate a little. Us alone with our mate in this room. Lock the damn door before someone comes to find us. I smiled. My wolf wanted the same thing as me. I had never tried anything like this. Of course, I had found some people very attractive and wanted them badly but with Cecilia and me in the same room it was like the air got sucked out, and the space between us disappeared. It was just so damn intense, and I knew nothing could have prepared me for just how intense it was. You had to experience it. I saw her walking a little closer, and her mouth moving, but I didn't hear a word. I was watching those sweet lips, feeling such a strong need to kiss them and feel them wrapped around my cock. My eyes traveled lower to those sweet breasts of hers. Not overly large or small. So perfect, and I just wanted to lick and suck them again. The bed was just right behind Cecilia. It would be so easy to pick her up and throw her down on it, or I could bend her over the couch behind me, or better yet just have her up against the wall on our right side. Lucian? What? I asked as I was pulled from my thoughts. Cecilia looked at me a little annoyed. Have you heard a word I was saying? Cecilia was fighting the bond and was clearly busy trying to ignore this strong attraction between us, so, she was able to concentrate a little better than me. Honestly? I asked. She nodded. No, not a word. She looked at me shocked and I just smiled, as I went to take a seat on the couch, 
before throwing my legs up and getting comfortable. This room is smaller than the one I have in the castle, but I can think of a good way to make me feel at home. I told her. She looked at me confused, and I just knew that her last mate had definitely not been taking care of her, or she would have understood my hidden meaning. Cecilia might have been with another or others. I had no idea of her past, but it was clear in many ways she was still innocent. She had not been taken care of at all. What? She asked. I chuckled, sat up, and placed my feet on the ground again, before waving her closer. Come here. She looked around, not sure if she should do it, but she took a step closer though. That's not really what I meant. I said. I think I am close enough. She said. Say what you need to say. I want to show you something. I told her. Which is? Well, it can't really be explained. I'm fine here. She said. You act like I am going to burn you. I said. She looked at me very skeptical, but eventually, she walked over to me. I believed it was more to prove to herself that she could control herself around me. She sat down beside me, but still with her arms crossed. What? She asked. Give me your hand. She shook her head. Why not? I am not asking you to take your clothes of yet. I said. Lucian. Come on. She looked at me for a little while, but then sighed and gave me her hand. The moment I took it we both gasped. It was like lightning went through us both, and I felt my body grow hotter, getting ready to mate with my little mate. You feel that? I asked. I feel nothing. Sure, you don't. I chuckled. She pulled her hand away. It doesn't matter. She said. I already know how this will end. You think we are all the same? I asked her. What? Us males? I asked. Unless you are also interested in females. You haven't told me. I like liked males. She said. And do you think we are all the same? I asked. She shook her head. No, but I think alphas are. She said. Why? I asked. She looked away, as I studied her, and then it finally clicked. I should have realized it sooner though. Your last mate was an alpha, wasn't he? I asked. She sighed and looked back at me. He was the son of one, but second in line. She told me. Ah, that makes sense. I said. It is very rare that an alpha, who is first in line, doesn't get mated to a Luna. She nodded and just crossed her arms over her chest. And you were true mates. She nodded. Or else he would never have wanted me. She said. I was a lone wolf. But you are a descendant of a beta, right? She nodded again, and I was happy she was not just shutting me out. I wanted to learn everything about her. Every tiny little detail. It would help me help her. But as I said, I am done with alphas. She said. You know I am second in line too. She nodded. And you remind me to much of my past. She said. Are you saying I look like your old mate? She shook her head. No, but the way you act right now. The way you try to charm me and all of it, it just reminds me to much of everything I went through. She said. Cecilia. I said and moved closer to her. I am not him. Lucian, you have no idea what I went through or what I experienced. You have no idea how much I fought just to get rid of the mark I had on me. I can't go through it all again. I know, and you won't. But I will. If I accept you. I mean, have you completely forgotten who you are already? She asked. What? You like both males and females. She said. You think it is a competition? I asked. No, but as I said, you have got an appetite, and you will grow bored of me in the end. Right now, you can't see beyond the bond, but when it all calms down, you will see. Say what? That you could do better. She said and stood up. I did too, quite pissed now. So do us both a favor and go home. She said. No. Lucian. 
Go home, she said. Why don't you make me, Wildcat? I challenged her. Cecilia, he was doing it on purpose. He just wanted to see what made me lose my mind. I knew alphas. They were always thinking so many steps ahead. They liked to get to know their opponents to find their weak spots. I knew it wasn't that much different now. Lucian couldn't help it. He wanted to learn everything about me, and not just because we were mates. Alphas had a need to conquer, and he wanted to conquer me, but I was not so easily won. I wanted to pull my hair though. He should never have come, and now he was fucking moving in, and I was moving rooms to, to get closer to him. I knew I couldn't tell Lara not to because she wanted me to be safe too, and apparently, Lucian's evil twin brother had now locked his eyes on me. Could Lucian not see how better our lives would be if we were not connected to each other? You want me to make you? I asked. He smiled and nodded, and I grabbed his hand, but the moment I touched him it was like I was being burned, and I quickly let go. His smile grew because he had felt the electric shock too. He had felt the bond spark to life only for it to slowly simmer down. I am not a slave to this damn bond anymore. I told him and grabbed his hand again. I pulled him with me, trying to ignore the way my body responded to just touching him. Good. Make him go away before we can't stay away from him. His wolf is impossible, constantly calling out to me and making all sorts of promises. We need them to leave. I was glad my wolf was not succumbing to the bond either. Neither of us could take a second round of what we had been through. The people here barely knew a small part of what I had been through. No one truly knew what had happened or what I had gone through, and I did not wish to talk about it. I just wanted everyone to leave me alone. So, I pulled Lucian over to the door. He allowed me only because he found it a little funny, and I held open the door, while I tried pushing him through it, but he just stopped in the doorway, turning towards me. You're only pushing me out of the room. He said. I mean if you want it, we can switch, but if you want me gone, shouldn't you bring me down to the front door? Otherwise, I won't believe you really want me gone. Fine. I stepped out of the room and started dragging him with me again. I heard him chuckle, and only seconds after, his other hand suddenly ran up the side of my body before landing on my shoulder, massaging the marking spot. I shook his hand away, but it just went lower, running over the curve of my eyes before he decided to move a little closer to me while squeezing my hand. I stopped and swatted his hand away before turning to him. I know what you are doing. I growled lowly. What? He asked innocently. Stop trying to distract me. Distract you? He asked. Lucian. Yes? He asked with a smug smile on his lips. You're leaving. Am I? Don't play this game with me. I said. What game? He asked and walked closer, pushing me back. I swallowed hard, barely able to focus on the task in front of me. I knew I should kick him out. I knew I should show everyone I could fight this bond, but as he moved closer, he cornered me slowly, pressing me up against the wall behind me. He placed his hand on the wall, while still holding on to my other. I found it hard to look at him when he was so close. It was intimidating, but I was not scared. No, it made my body tingle, as I reacted to the power coming from him. Stop. I whispered. Stop what? He asked me. You need to go. Why? He asked. Because we both know it would be for the best. Because I deserve better? He asked. I nodded. Cecilia, we were chosen for each other. You really think I could do better? He asked me. I know a lot of females and males, humans or wolves would be glad to have you as their mate. I said. But not you? I can't. Why? He asked. You know why? Because some ID asterisk OT from your past didn't know what he had? There is so much you don't know what? I said. Then tell me. I shook my head. I can't. Why? Because I don't want to. 
I told him. I want you gone, so I can think again. So, I know I will be safe again. I am keeping you safe. He said. Safe from you. I growled. Are you scared of me? I know that if I let you get to close you will rip out my heart in some way. I said. How can you know that? Because I know alphas like you. You might have changed, becoming close with the king and a good fighter, but before that, you were a social one. You liked the parties, all the sex, and the power. You still like most of those things. I am not special. I am boring and plain, and I just like to be on my own. Crowds make me feel uncomfortable and so does the spotlight. I am not a firecracker in bed and I might be a beta now, but I would never abuse my power. I told him. I wouldn't want you to. He said. A good beta wouldn't. I just nodded a little, since we agreed on this topic. And you are right. I do come from a rich and powerful family. My uncle and aunt loved those parties and the power. He said. And I did a lot of things for my uncle because he was the alpha then, and I was too young to inherit what was really mine, and later on well, I knew I couldn't take over considering my brother was still alive. I hated it though. What? All of it. The parties and those snobby upper class people thinking they were so much better. My parents weren't like that, and they didn't raise me to be, and when I got stuck with my uncle and aunt, I had my cousins to remind me of the good in me. We survived together in that house, trying our best not to turn into power-hungry beasts. I know what I must look like in your eyes, but I am none of those things. I looked at him shocked. I had never imagined he might say he hated the whole social climbing and all those rich people, and I couldn't say I dared to believe him since Nolan had told me so many things, but then suddenly he changed, ignoring all the promises he made. And I think the reason why you think you aren't a firecracker in bed is either because someone told you that you aren't, or because you were never taken care of. Sex can be really boring if there is no encouragement and no chemistry. He said. I don't think there is anything wrong with our chemistry because right now I want to rip your clothes off right here in the hallway, and I will gladly tell you how beautiful you were when you come. My eyes grew big, and I stared at him, not able to form any words because when he spoke of fucking me right there in the hallway, my whole body just started to heat up and I felt my core tighten in need, wanting him deep inside of me again. He had felt so unbelievable good, stretching me wide. It had been so long since I had been with anyone. I hadn't for years. Not since Nolan. I simply didn't have any need to be with anyone, but with Lucian I had not been able to control myself. I had thought to myself I would just give him what he wanted and he would leave, but I had enjoyed it. I had enjoyed it a lot, and I had not been able to stop myself from screaming when I came. I had never been very verbal, but Lucian had said he wanted me to enjoy it and I certainly had. We can, of course, go back to the room. Probably better than risking traumatizing anyone, and I don't really like to share anymore. He said. You like to be with more people at once? I asked. He nodded. But not with you? Just the thought of someone else touching. His voice turned into a growl towards the end, and I saw his eyes shine yellow as he imagined someone else actually touching me. He cleared his throat and shook his head and his eyes went back to normal. You're mine. He said. I sighed and looked away. Everything in me screamed that I should let him take me back to the room and just get lost in each other, but as I had told him, I put my heart and soul into everything I did. It once made me a passionate person, but now I knew better, and if I went with him, I wouldn't be able to stop, and my heart would slowly start beating for him. I'm going to let you unpack. I have some things to take care of, I said and let go of his hand before walking around him. I could feel his eyes on my back as I walked away, but I did not look back at him, afraid I would just get hypnotized by those green ones. Lucian. It was very early in the morning when I heard a door close. I had always been a light sleeper. Alphas usually were, considering they always had to stay on alert, but now that I knew my brother was out there, I was barely even sleeping. More like staying in between that place where you were kind of asleep and awake at the same time. 
So when I heard the door to the bedroom in front of mine close, I quickly woke up and reached for my phone, checking the time. Who the fuck gets up at? I asked and quickly got out of bed, putting on some pants and taking one of my guns from the nightstand, as I walked out into the hallway. I walked over to the room Cecilia had been put in and gently knocked, but there was no answer. I wasn't sure I should just barge in, but I thought I had a free paw now with my brother out there. I walked in, only to see the bed was empty. I got worried, but then I saw a shadow move outside, and I remembered my little mate telling me she liked to get up early. I just hadn't realized how early. Had she even slept? I walked back to my own room and placed my gun on the nightstand again before I went to change into some running shoes and training shorts, and then I followed my little mate. It was a little chilly here in the morning night, what could I even call this? It was so early, but it also gave me a chance to be all alone with my mate. She was not going to be alone on these runs anymore. I would join her from now on for two reasons. Safety and because I wanted to be around her. I quickly caught up with her. She wasn't pushing herself too hard, and I knew she could run faster than that, but when she heard someone behind her, she looked over her shoulder, seeing me there, and then sped up. I smiled, following her, and I had to admire how she tried to outrun me. She was definitely very fast, but eventually, I was catching up with her anyway, but before I could actually get a hold of her, she stopped and turned around. I almost ran into her, but was able to stop in time. What the hell are you doing? She asked and ripped the headphones out of her ears. Just making sure you were safe. I said. Safe? I am running in Lara's territory, of course, I am safe. She said. You don't know my brother. And your brother doesn't know me. I chuckled. She had a point. I bet she could even drive him insane. Not that I would ever let them get close to each other. My brother had better stay away from Cecilia or I would rip him apart. Well, he is an alpha and a psychopath. I just want to be sure you're okay. She crossed her arms over her chest. Cecilia was in really good shape, and it was easy to see with those small tight shorts and the sports bra she was wearing. She had clear lines running down her stomach, forming 11-line abs, and her arms were toned. I had to say I was impressed by her. She was definitely not someone who spent her time on the couch. It also meant she could take me. She was strong enough for anything I had planned for her. I'm fine. You can go back now. She said. But I might as well go running with you now that I am out here. I said. She shook her head. No, I like to run alone. Lone wolf thing. I smiled. You're not a lone wolf anymore. I said. No, but I still like to do it alone. She told me. I chuckled, finding it funny how she constantly fought me. I wasn't sure why. Maybe it was just the way I was. I didn't like it easy. I liked it a little more challenging, perhaps because I was not so simple either. I liked that Cecilia matched me in certain ways. We were both a little fucked up. All right, then continue. I will just run my own route, I said. She didn't seem to believe me, but then put her headphones in and continued, while I just followed behind her with a little distance between us. She quickly noticed and stopped, ripping out the headphones again and looking at me angrily. Lucian, she said. Yes? You said you would run your own route. I am, I said. Are you going this way too? I pointed right ahead in the direction I knew she was heading. She shook her head and groaned frustrated, but I just smiled. She said she was boring and plain, no one had just brought out that side of her that hid so much more. I knew she could be passionate. A boring person wouldn't let this bother them and get so worked up about it, but a person who was hiding a fire, did. Don't do this. She told me. What? Don't ruin my morning. It is one of the only times I have to myself, and where I don't have to think about duties or anything. This is my time. She said. I see. I said. I didn't mean to ruin your time. I was just running. You are unbelievable. She said and walked closer, 
pressing her hands to my chest. I was surprised by the power behind the push and actually stepped a small step back while she came for me, all angry and fired up. It triggered something in me, because when she came for me again, I grabbed her, lifting her and she instinctively wrapped her legs around me, before our mouths found each other. I wasn't sure how it happened or really where this was going, but then I found us on the ground, both of us frantically pushing down our shorts, and then I was spearing inside of her, while she tightly wrapped her legs around me, pushing me deeper into her. I groaned with pleasure as she wrapped her arms around my neck and pulled me down for a powerful kiss, as I moved my hips, my cock sliding in and out of her fast. There was no control over this. We were just so desperate for each other, wanting the pleasure we could bring each other that we weren't thinking. We were just mating like animals, both moaning and groaning loudly. It was so fucking fast and so animalistic, I had no control over myself, and as soon as her pussy started to squeeze me, as she came with a scream, I came to unable to stop myself. She brought me so much pleasure, it was like she owned my body, and she milked me from everything I had, making me feel almost dizzy. She said she was no firecracker in bed, but she was so wrong. That had been one of the hottest things I had done, and it wasn't my first time fucking in the woods or strange places, but it was Cecilia that made it so much more. She made it all feel so passionate and hot. The other times had been with strangers and both of us just wanted a little release. It was good, no doubt, and other times it had been very hot too, but it was different because Cecilia was my mate, and she had such control over me. I could usually hold back longer, but not this time. Not when her pussy was wrapped around me so tightly, I was just done for. We were both breathing heavily, sweating like we had just run a marathon, and I couldn't stop the smile that spread on my lips. Ah, uh, fuck. She said and let her head fall down on the ground. I chuckled a little. Didn't expect that. I said, sounding out of breath. I could run for fucking hours and barely break a sweat. I was an alpha after all, but Cecilia had a power over me that I had never tried before. I loved it. I fucking loved it. This was what I had dreamt of. I had wanted to find her so badly. She had no idea. Right. She said. No truly, I did just want to keep an eye on you, not for you to attack me like that. Me. I nodded. You were the one who kissed me first. She said. I shook my head, but honestly, I had no idea who kissed him first. We were suddenly just kissing and then clothes went flying and I entered fucking heaven. No, no, you leaned closer to me. I did not. She said and pushed me back. I slid out of her but was still hard, ready for more. I couldn't help but react to my mate, so it sucked when she got dressed. I knew I had promised myself next time we were fucking she wouldn't be running, but just as I had gotten my clothes back onto, she was already on her way out of there. Wonderful. I said as I watched her run away. Arr. Why so stubborn? Did she not just come so hard her screams echoed in the woods? She did. Her wolf is blocking me out all the time too. She is? My wolf nodded and laid down, looking so sad, but it just made me realize just how badly Cecilia was hurt. If her wolf wasn't even willing to accept us, then how much hope was there? No, I needed some advice, and I believed I knew where to get it, but first I had to see my cousin. Lucian. Lucian. Maddie came running down the stairs and threw herself at me, wrapping her arms around my neck, and I picked her up, laughing happily as I received such a big welcome. Lucian. Maddie came running down the stairs and threw herself at me, wrapping her arms around my neck, and I picked her up, laughing happily as I received such a big welcome. Evan was standing further away, not looking happy that his mate was touching someone else. The only reason why he didn't rip me apart was that I was family. So, he could just barely allow this to happen. He wasn't happy about it though, and it showed clearly, so when Maddie finally pulled away, he wrapped a possessive arm around her and pulled her close to him. She giggled happily and kissed his cheek, which turned the big and dark alpha all soft, as he smiled down at his mate. I hoped that it would be Cecilia and I at some point, but my little beta was a hard one to crack. I am so happy you came to see us. 
I heard you moved in with Lara to be closer to Cecilia. Is that permanent? Maddie asked. I smiled a little. Don't you think we have got more important things to talk about? I asked. But she is your mate. You have been waiting for so long. Yeah, compared to my sweet cousin who met her mate when she was 19, I had been waiting for quite some time. I was going to turn 26 soon. Yeah, I said. Oh, is she fighting you? Evan asked. It was clear he saw right through me and saw the trouble I was having. Define fighting, I said. He chuckled a little. Don't worry, I have got the advice for you. Maddie said. Considering. Considering what, little wolf? Evan asked. Maddie just smiled up at him. Well, if I remember correctly, I was the one who had to chase you, and I kissed you first, and you ran from me for a while before I entered my heat. I am just saying I might have some advice. She said. And who is ready to sacrifice herself for her sister and go with Hunter? He asked. I had to do something. I had to mark you to get you to stay. Who says I am not the one who has got good advice? He asked her. Eh, who said I was looking for any? I asked them. They turned to me and Maddie just smiled, looking so happy for me, and I rolled my eyes. Can we get onto the important thing here? It is important, Lucian. She said. After everything, this is just what we all needed. How many are involved in our non-existent relationship? I chuckled. I just mean this is good news, especially considering we now have trouble coming. I nodded, and we all walked back to their office, where we could talk privately without any PAC members listening in or interrupting us. We all sat down in the seating area, a fireplace behind the couch Maddie and Evan were sitting on. He had still not removed his arm and kept her close to him. I understood better than ever the need to keep your mate close. If Cecilia would just finally accept me, we could get on with the marking and just be happy. So Landon. We are not moving. Evan said. Nor are we giving up this pack. I understand. I wasn't going to ask you to do that. It is just legally it does belong to him. Then fight him. Evan said. I looked away, not sure how I could explain how complicated it was. No one knew what it was like growing up with him, and despite everything, I had a hard time doing what was necessary. I had hesitated back then when we fought that night he killed our parents. The flames had been all around us as we fought to take the other down. Eventually, I had come out as the winner, but but I couldn't do it. I know I have to. But you don't want to. Maddie said. I looked at her and shook my head. Why did you never tell us? I always thought when you disappeared, it was because you were mourning them. Were you doing something else? She asked. I tried forgetting I had failed them. I told her. I tried forgetting I let a monster live that night. Lucian. I fucked up, Maddie. I said. I should have ended it back then. I had the chance, but I couldn't do it. Sounds very much like Chris, Maddie said. What? He had a chance to kill his father, but he couldn't do it, she said. He actually had more than one chance. He was protecting his mother, I said. Yes, and you were protecting your brother. He didn't deserve it, I said. He was a monster even when we were kids. I remember him, Maddie said. At least a little. He made me cry once. More than once. Whenever we went to visit, your parents tried keeping you and Kate away from us. I guess they feared I was the same, and eventually, my parents left Landon at home, thinking it was better. I said. Maddie nodded. I remember that. Something was just wrong inside him and always has been, but despite it all, he wasn't always cruel to me. I said. I remember good times as well. Good times? Evan asked, not seeing how that could be true. I just nodded a little. I was teased once by some older wolves. I was quite a small alpha when I was a kid, and my brother was a little bigger then. He was good at playing tricks on people, and he embarrassed the bigger wolves in front of some females that had clearly shown interest in them, but they stopped being interested when he made all their hair fall out. 
I said, smiling a little. He made sure that everyone knew that the only one who could torture me was him. Maddie seemed to understand, but Evan seemed skeptical. It was not strange. Evan knew his territory and mate were being threatened. He might have lost everything, but he was born to be an alpha, and all his instincts were triggered and put on edge. If you don't challenge him, I can. He said. No! Both Maddie and I said. What? He asked, confused. I am not risking you like that. Maddie said, and I heard the power in her voice. I love you and I refuse to lose my mate like my sister did. I know I made you a promise, but we don't need to challenge fate. Little Wolf. No, Evan, you don't know my brother. He doesn't play fair, I said. And he might just choose to find a way to kill you before the challenge. Like burning you alive. So, what the hell is the plan then? He asked. He could do the same to you. I nodded. I'm aware. Maybe we should do as he says. Maddie said. What? Evan and I asked. Just to begin with. We make him believe he got the upper hand. Let him feel like he got what he wanted, just until we find a way to take him down. Right now, we don't know much about him. How many people stand behind him? Is he alone? Does he have powerful friends? How long has he planned this? We need to know more. She said. You're right. I said. But you two cannot give this up. He won't take care of them like you two do. He will rule this pack. We are not giving it up. Just waiting for the right moment to strike. She said. The pack could choose not to follow him. Evans said. If they walk away, they can join us, but we would have to give it up first. I thought about that. I said. The thing is, it is so hard for the members to leave. It is letting themselves be cut off completely from each other for a while. Friends they have known their entire lives. They would be lone wolves until you two stepped up and formed the pack anew. It would be hard on them. Maybe a little damaging. I am not sure they want to risk it. Besides, Landon is the true heir to this pack. They might just choose to follow him. I said. That is why you never wanted it. Maddie said, understanding even better why I never stepped up. I nodded. I knew he would want it one day. What do we do then? Evan asked. I need to find a way to kill him. You two work on the pack. Just to be sure. Tell them everything and tell them to be prepared. We all need to be ready. Lucian. I walked into the castle, feeling rather troubled. I knew I had to find the strength to kill my brother, but it was not easy. When I looked at my brother, at least when we were younger before he killed our parents, I saw someone I wanted to be. He was strong and never gave a shit about what people thought about him. I just didn't realize how sick he truly was. Not until I grew older and pulled away from him, and then he killed our parents. I knew he was a monster, but I guessed I never forgot the good times really. I quickly climbed the stairs and all the way to the top, where I came by the queen who smiled at me. She looked like she was about to go down to work out. She always made sure to keep in shape. How's it going with Cecilia? She asked me. Horrible. I told her as I walked towards Celine's and Ryder's room. Horrible. I told her as I walked towards Celine's and Ryder's room. Octavia chuckled as she walked down the stairs, and I went to knock on the bedroom door. One moment. I heard Celine shout. I waited until the door was opened, and then Celine appeared, wearing a long white dress with a small white tie going around her waist. Her long blonde hair was down, and she looked like the beautiful upper-class female she was. Lucian, I heard you went to live with Cecilia. She said and winked at me. So happy for you too. Yeah about that. What? She asked. You have some time? She nodded and moved to the side, letting me in. I saw Isabella was in the room too, and it was clear I was interrupting. I didn't know you two were together. I can come back later, I said. Celine waved a hand through the air. 
No, come on, it seems important. She said. Isabella just nodded encouragingly, and we went to sit on the couch in front of her. So, what is going on? You know Cecilia well, both of you, right? I didn't talk to her much when she came to the safe house, Isabella said. Mostly I just took care of the paperwork. I talked to her a little, Celine said. What did she tell you? I asked. It was rather strange, to begin with. She talked about how happy she actually was. Happy that she was free of her mate, and she encouraged me to do the same, removing the mark I didn't want. She told me. Did she talk about her old mate? I asked. She shook her head. Not a lot. Just that he left her for another. Celine said. What about herself? I asked. What exactly do you want to know? Celine asked. I just want to understand my mate better, and why she refuses to even give us a chance. I said. She is really fighting you, isn't she? Isabella asked. She actually wanted to reject me. I said. Oh, shit. Celine said. I nodded. And she keeps running from me, it is driving me insane. I said. Sounds a bit like us. Celine said and looked at Isabella, who nodded and laughed. Yeah, we couldn't really accept our mates. She said. So, what changed? I asked. Well, Lara kind of knocked some sense into me, telling me I had to stop trying to make everyone else happy and choose myself for once. I knew I wanted Ryder more than anything, but I feared he wouldn't be my ticket back into my old life. I realized though I never wanted that life. It took some time though. She said. And I want Damien dead so. You can kind of imagine it took a long time for me. Isabella said. But you didn't kill him. I pointed out. Isabella shook her head. No, I actually changed my mind before Clarissa came to find me again. I realized he wasn't the person I thought he was and I wanted to give him a chance, but I also wanted to avenge my brother and Clarissa used my own guilt against me. I realized my brother was the psycho though. I guess we have something in common then, I said. Isabella chuckled a little. Yeah, I guess we do. How much time do you guys think she will need? Or what can I do to get her to trust me? I asked. The two females seemed to think about it for a little while, looking for the answer I needed. Have you made it clear what you want from her? Celine asked. Very clear. She thinks I am tricking her. I told them. Has she told you why she doesn't trust you? She says I will change my mind later on. That I will get bored of her, because her last mate was an alpha, so she is done with those. An alpha? Celine asked. I nodded. Second in line. Like me you can kind of see where she is drawing the connection. I said. Celine nodded. It does explain some things. She said. I just want her to trust me. I sighed and leaned back on the couch, feeling a bit defeated. I need her to if I have to keep her safe from my brother. Why don't you tell her a little more about yourself? Isabella asked. Show your past to her. It worked when Damien showed me his, bringing me back to the life he could have had with his first mate. Show her why you are different. I am not sure she will believe me either way. She believes I will just be this caring person now, and then change later. I can't show her the future. You need to start somewhere. Celine said. Slowly work your way closer to her. Maybe this is a good way to start. Celine gestured to Isabella, agreeing with her plan. Hmm. I said. Maybe I should. I can't keep going like this. She just needs some time. Cecilia is guarded and she is very happy about her. Freedom. I don't think she is as happy as she wants people to believe. I said. You're probably right. When she came back, she did seem different. Celine said. Less happy. She was probably just relieved to be free in the beginning. Isabella said. I'm just afraid. She won't ever let me close. I sighed. Just give her some more time. Celine said. I am afraid I don't have a lot of time. I looked down and could feel the energy in the room changing. 
Any news from your brother? Isabella asked. I shook my head. No, I still have got a few days before he burns my family alive. I said. You will figure it out. Celine said. We are here to help you. I know. I said. But I need to handle him myself. He is smart and cunning. He will just punish me in some way if I let others play this game with him. The two of them looked at me concerned, and I just shook my head, pulling myself together before I stood up. Now I have taken up enough of your time. I said. I'm sorry we can't be of more help. Celine said. It's okay. It did help actually, but now I am going to go. Say if I can't get started on getting my little mate to trust me some more. Celine smiled at me before I walked out of the room, but just as I walked down the stairs, I realized there was someone else I wanted to go see as well. Cecilia, I was so stupid. How could I let it happen again? How could I be so weak and let him fuck me again? And why had it felt so good? Why had I not been able to stop myself? I had just wanted him to fuck me and fuck me hard. We had been so caught up in the moment. We had been two desperate animals just wanting some quick release. I had never done anything like that, but it had been quite amazing. And you complained that I might be giving in to him. You might just. I said as I stood in the shower washing myself clean. My new room was a lot bigger and so was the bathroom. I felt a little out of place. I was not used to having so much room, and it felt a little wrong, but it seemed like I didn't have any choice. That was why I wanted Lucian to go home so that I could finally return to normal, but it didn't look like I would be returning to normal any time soon. So stupid. It was. Oh, glad you're sharing your opinion. I said sarcastically. What do you want me to say? You don't think I want him to leave us alone too? No, I know you do. I said. Then don't kiss him again. Me. My wolf nodded. He kissed me. I said. Then don't kiss him back. My wolf was right. It didn't really matter who kissed who, I had let it happen. I had given in and I had ended up with my pants of Lucian inside of me, sliding his hard cock in and out of me, creating such delicious friction. Oh, fuck I had been so turned on, I came so hard. What was he doing to me? This was not what I felt with Nolan or, I had felt it in the beginning. We both had, but then things had simmered down, and and he had left me. I won't do it again. I promised. I will believe it when I see it. Don't act like you don't feel it too. I said. I do but I know what is good for us or do you want us to end up like that again? My wolf pushed painful memories forward, and I felt my heart break into pieces at the sight of them. Oh, it was so cruel of her to do that, but it was also why I needed to get those high walls up again. No of course not. Then don't let him get to close it broke us once, we don't need to go through that again. No we don't. Then we agree. We agree. We need to get Lucian out of here. I said. My wolf nodded and I left the shower, quickly drying of and dressing in some black shorts and a white t-shirt before I walked downstairs to get something to eat. I was sure that I would run into Lucian, but I didn't. No, it was someone else I didn't want to run into. James was in the kitchen, clearly preparing some late breakfast for him and Lara. When he saw me, he smiled. Hey Cecilia. He said. I just nodded, before slowly taking a step back. I will just come back later. I said. Why? The kitchen is big enough for a fucking army. He joked. James didn't really know why I felt uncomfortable around him. He probably just thought it was the whole title thing. He was technically alpha, and people around here knew that and could feel it. Sometimes it was intimidating, but really, I was mad at him for what he did to Lara. Lara said I didn't understand, and he didn't try to leave her for someone else, but I wasn't sure I believed that. It's fine. Not that hungry. I said. Is everything okay? He asked and turned to me, resting against the counter behind him. 
Fine. I lied. I can understand if you are a little overwhelmed now that Lucian is here. I don't want him here. I said. We can't fight the bond. Be smarter than the rest of us. We always end up giving in. He said. Not me. He chuckled a little. Yeah, we all said the same thing. But it is different for me. I said. Because you had a mate before? I did too. He said. One you loved and who didn't abandon you but who you were clearly ready to abandon others for. The last part one whispered, but James heard it anyway, and he narrowed his eyes a little, as he placed his hands on the counter and tightened his grip around it, so I could hear the marvel given a little. Shit, he was a lot stronger than I ever thought. Lara mentioned you had said some things that upset her. She wasn't clear about what, but I see now that you have a problem with me. He said. Not a problem. I said. I just expected it. Expected it. Most alphas are the same. I said. You just can't be faithful. Oh, I was digging my own grave. Lucian coming here had messed me up. I was usually good at not saying shit like this. I was good at holding my tongue, but Lucian had me all worked up and confused, and there were just too many confusing feelings inside of me. I didn't leave Lara. He said. You were about to, until you realized there was no one to leave her for. I said. I wanted to tell myself to shut up, but I was I was just not in control at the moment. Cecilia, it was never about leaving Lara. He said. I love her. I love her like crazy, and I have felt very guilty for loving her. Guilty? I asked. He nodded. I promised one special female, who saved my life, that I would only love her, and now I love someone else. I wanted to make up for that. He explained. How? I asked. He shrugged. I hoped to apologize, but but I wasn't sure what I was doing really before I was already on my way to see her. You didn't explain this to your Luna. I said. No, I did that later. He said. Why wait? Because I barely understood what was going on with me. He said. I just knew I had to go see if it was true my mate had come back. Your mate? I asked with a little attitude. I want to spend the rest of my life with Lara, but it doesn't change the fact that Jane was my mate and always will be. I am happy with Lara, and I wouldn't change a thing. Really? So, if you could go back. James shook his head. Don't ask me that question, because that is not fair. They are both my true mates. Lara might be my second chance, but she isn't any less my true mate. I can't choose between them, so that question is just unfair. He told me. I sighed and looked away. It might be difficult for you to understand considering everything you went through, but I was never leaving Lara. I just needed to fix the broken thing inside of me. He said. And hopefully, you will believe me at some point, so you don't have to go around and be angry with me. He grabbed the tray he had prepared and left the kitchen, and I could only say, I did feel like an ass. I had stepped way over the line, and I knew I would have to apologize for my behavior. Lucian. I walked to the underground tunnels where we had our hospital. I walked into the hospital, the automatic doors sliding to the sides, and then I walked down the long white hallways. I ran into Ryder on my way. He was in his office, but I only said a quick hello before I continued down to where all the patient rooms were and found the person I was looking for. Angela was outside her mother's room at the moment, clearly needing a small break. I could hear yelling and screaming from inside her mother's room, and I knew she was having one of her bad days. I walked over to Angela, who was sitting on the floor, and pressed my back to the wall as I slid down to sit beside her. How is she? I asked. Bad, very fucking bad. Angela sighed, looking so tired. I thought she was doing a little better. It goes up and down, she said. Some days are worse, where it feels like she can barely recognize me, and other days it almost feels like she is coming back to me. Important you don't MES with the bond, I said. I never knew it could be so bad when it wasn't a true bond, Angela said. Are we sure it wasn't? I mean your parents kept a lot of secrets. I said. Angela smiled a little. 
Yeah, I thought about it. But I read a little about the powers of the bond once they grow older, and my parents spent a lot of time together, even though they weren't talking much. It is enough to give it power over you, and do this to you. Angela said and gestured to the door that was closed. I heard another scream and felt goosebumps appear. It sounded like something out of a horror movie, and like someone was being tortured. If this could happen from not being true mates, then what wouldn't have happened had anyone here actually rejected their true mate? She is strong, your mother. I said. She will get through this. Angela turned to me and smiled. I really hope so. She looked so damn tired, and she was wearing clothes I believe she had not changed for a week or so. Last time I saw her, she was wearing that exact outfit as well, but I didn't believe she knew. She probably lost the feeling of time down here, and I understood. She had a lot on her mind. Do you remember to eat? I asked. What are you, my mates? She teased me. I smiled, glad she could still joke a little. I wished I once was. I told her, seeing her look at me shocked before we both laughed. She gently nudged me with her shoulder. Good, they aren't here to hear that. She laughed. Doesn't matter now, I think. Not now that I am chasing after someone else. I told her. Yeah, how is that going? She asked me. I groaned and ran a hand down my face. Of all the females and males out there. I said, and Angela laughed. She is being that difficult. She asked me. She will barely let me get close to her. Wow has to be a first. Angela said. I chuckled and nodded. Yeah, I didn't expect my mate to be that stubborn. Maybe it is exactly what you need though. What do you mean? I asked. Well, I couldn't see how Hunter and Elijah could ever be my mates, to begin with. I couldn't see how we fit at all, but slowly I realized it. We were all making each other better and stronger. She told me. Yeah, can I just skip to that part? She chuckled and shook her head. No, you have to show her you will fight for her. Don't give up. I am not. I said. I just wish she wasn't so guarded. I have been waiting for quite some time for her, and now all she wants to do is run from me. Yeah, I wanted that at first too, she said. What changed? Angela shrugged. I guess I just forgot about it. They were good at distracting me, she said and winked. Yeah, don't want to understand the hidden meaning in that. Angela smiled and shook her head, before bumping her shoulder against mine again. You two will figure it out, she said. Hopefully, sadly, I am more worried about something else. Your brother. I nodded. What are you going to do about him? She asked. I have no fucking idea. I know if I try to fight him, he will not fight fair. I said. He might just find a way to kill me before we get to the duel. Then what? We might just have to let him win. For now. I said. Let him win. I nodded. I talked to Evan and Maddie about it. They will have to do their best to turn the pack against him, and it also might also make it easier for me to get close enough to end him. Wow, careful now, she said. You do know you can be charged with murder if you just kill him without challenging him. I nodded. Lucian, she said and grabbed my arm, and I looked at her. You can't. What do you want me to do then? I asked. You can't do that. You will have to challenge him. He will just find a way to kill me. I said. Lucian, you just found your mate. Do you really want to go to prison for murder? She asked me. What choice do I have? It is a bad plan, and I am telling you no. Angela. No. She said. But. No. We smiled a little at each other, and I shook my head. I will think about it. I said. No, no thinking. You challenge him or you allow him to win. She said. Wonderful. Evan could challenge him too. She suggested. I shook my head. No, he is my brother and I don't want another cousin to go insane from losing her mate. I said. We lost Kate and Chris. We don't need to lose any more people. And what about you? She asked. What? Aren't you people? She asked and smiled. 
I smiled back at her, and then another scream cut through the air. We turned to the door, and I heard Angela sigh deeply. I took her hand and squeezed it before quickly letting go. I shouldn't really be touching her so casually, considering who her mates were, but when I tried to let go, she grabbed harder onto me and rested her head on my shoulder. She will be all right. I whispered. And so will you. She whispered back. Lucian. When I got back it was already dark, and I believed most people had gone to sleep, but when I went by Lara's office, I noticed the door was open and someone was still up. They were sitting in the dark, only the computer screen lightening up the room. I looked curiously at the little dark form sitting there on a chair with their back to me, but I already had a feeling of who it was. Cecilia? Cecilia turned in her chair, looking at me, and I quickly reached for a light switch. I saw her blink her eyes a little and then turn to her computer again. What are you doing sitting in the dark? I asked. Just working. She told me. I walked closer, walking around her chair and placing myself in front of her. Just working? I asked with a little smile as I crossed my arms. She nodded, not even looking at me. I sighed and leaned against the desk behind me. Are you just going to ignore me now? I asked. Why not? I sighed, shaking my head. Because I don't want you to. If you regret this morning. I regret this morning. She said. I rolled my eyes. Well, I don't. She looked up from her screen, and I could see her studying me, seeing if I was telling the truth, but I was. I couldn't help wanting her. I fucking wanted her all the time, in fact. She was my mate, of course, I did, and she needed to be okay with wanting me to. Good for you. She said and looked away. You need to stop that. I said and took her computer from her. Hey. She stood up looking like she was ready to fight me or something. It was actually incredibly hot. I had no idea I would like a female who seemed ready to throw some punches so much. I mean, I had grown up in that snobby upper-class environment, where it was definitely not seen as something attractive if a female wanted to fight or act so tough. No, she had to be sweet and delicate and innocent and I was going to throw up if I continued down that road. Cecilia was different. It was clear everything that had happened to her, and coming here had changed her so much. Both in a good and bad way. She was strong but guarded. Smart, but cold. I needed to get beneath all those layers and find what she was hiding though. Then perhaps I could finally get her to accept me. Give that back. She said and tried reaching for the computer I had hidden behind me. I just moved a little to the side so she couldn't reach it, and she growled annoyed. Lucian. Say the magic word. I told her. Lucian. Not that. You asshole. She growled. Very wrong word. I told her. She crossed her arms and I smiled before I reached out and placed my hands on her hips. She pushed my hands away, but I put them back, only for her to push them away again. Little Beta. I growled. Don't cow me that. And don't cow me wildcat, or sweetheart, or anything else like that. Just Cecilia. No better yet, don't talk to me. She said. Why are you like this? I asked. Maybe because when I say I want to be alone it is not a cry for help. I like being alone, and yet people keep following me, asking if I am alright, asking if this is really what I want. Why is it so hard to believe it might just be what I want? She asked. Because we know it isn't. What? We can see it. I said. Say what? Say how much you're hurting. I told her. You might have gotten your mark removed, but you lost something. I didn't lose anything. And now you're lying. I said. Lucian, just stop. She told me. She looked away from me and I could see she was doing everything in her power not to cry. I reached for her again, and this time she let me touch her. I pulled her close and stood up, hugging her close to me. She actually leaned on me a little, and I was happy that she allowed me this close, even though it was just for a moment. I don't want to talk about it. She whispered. 
I wasn't asking, I said with a little smile. I'm done with mates. Don't be, I whispered. I pulled back a little so I could see her, and she looked up at me with those big green eyes that I just loved. Fuck, I wanted to kiss her. I leaned closer, and she tilted her head back a little, clearly wanting the same thing. We couldn't stop this. It was like pure fire burning between us, keeping us hot and needy. We could never get enough, but then Cecilia turned her head and pushed back. No, she said. I sighed, seeing her walls come up again. It isn't happening again, she told me. But it will, I said, making sure she felt my power. She took a step back, surprised by the energy I was releasing. I reached out and grabbed her chin. She looked up at me shocked. It will happen again and when it does you will be in my bed and you will stay in it. You will not want to leave and you will beg for me over and over. She pushed my hand away, clearly ignoring my alpha energy, but the only reason why she could was because she was my mate. I liked seeing it though. I liked her fighting back a little because it meant she was strong enough to be my mate. No, I will never beg. She told me. And I will never be in your bed. You're so wrong. I said. Lucian, this cannot happen. It already has. I said. It won't happen again then. She said. You are mine, Cecilia. I told her and tried reaching for her. She just stepped away and I felt so hurt as she rejected me over and over. I am my own, and I made a vow to only be my own when I set out to have my mark removed. Cecilia. It took me so long to find them, and I cannot have your mark removed. She said. You will never have a reason to. I don't trust you. She said. I looked at her shocked. Those words cut me deep. My own mate did not even trust me wow. I didn't know words could hurt so much. And I never will which means I will never let you mark me. I won't survive going through it again. She said. You won't. But I don't trust that. She said. I can't risk it. Cecilia, I will never hurt you, I swear it to you. Have you ever been loyal to one person? She asked me. I. Have you ever been in a relationship? I couldn't really say I had. I was too busy. And being in a relationship in my world meant you had decided you wanted to be with this person forever. Your silence gives me my answer. She said. You like to be with a lot of people, doesn't matter the sex, you really think you could just be happy with me? Sex isn't everything. I said, surprised by my own words. Male, female, I just want someone to spend the rest of my life with. I just want to be with my mate and be happy with her. So, I like both, so what? You really think that will matter? You, little mate, have changed sex for me. I don't know how you do it, but you make me lose my mind. So, if you are scared that I will lack anything, you are wrong. I just want you, and not just a fuck, I want a chance to love you. Is that so bad? She looked at me for a little while and then looked down. I'm sorry, but I can't give you that chance. She said and then turned around and walked away. Cecilia. I'm done with you. I sit on the floor and watch as my own mate walk away from me. He spoke the words he rejected me, and now I feel nothing but pure and agonizing pain. It cuts me so deep that I feel like I can't breathe. I did everything I could to keep him. I felt him pulling away long before this, but tonight I saw him with someone else, and he discovered that. He came home only to rip my heart out of my chest. I was ready to stay with him regardless, but now I have been thrown away. I tried telling him it didn't matter, but he told me I was nothing. I was dragging him down. I cry, the tears running down my cheeks, as I sit in the living room of our home, feeling like I can't breathe. My entire body burns and my heart feels like someone is squeezing it with their hand, sinking their nails into it. Please. I cry. But he is already out of the door, not listening to me. I don't know how he can just walk away. Why doesn't he feel the pain too? 
Or maybe he tries to ignore it until he is far gone from me. Or maybe maybe he never loved me. Maybe he has already pulled away from me. Maybe he doesn't feel it as much, because he has already given me up. He wants someone else now. No Lin. I Cal. I am not sure if I am calling him back, because I want him to come back, or because I need someone to help me. It hurts so fucking badly. I just need someone to help me, but no one comes. No one hears my screams, as they drag on for hours and hours. I just want to die. I just want it to be over with, but no one comes for me. Our house lies far away from the main house for privacy. It was what I wanted, and he had given me my wish. I thought he would always want to make me happy, but I am wrong. He doesn't want me. He never wanted me. He tolerated me. I feel myself grow so cold as I lie on the floor, seeing the way the sun slowly enters the house, lighting it up, but it seems different now. It doesn't look like my home. I had thought I could make him stay there was something important I needed to tell him, but now it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. There is nothing but pain I sat up, sweating like crazy, and feeling that old pain in my heart coming back. I reached up and felt how wet my cheeks were. It had been a long time since I dreamt about that night, and I couldn't help but think about everything else that happened after. It was so painful to think about though that I tried my best to just block it out. No one knew my entire story, and I didn't want them to. Some things we just wanted to keep hidden. Some things we were just too embarrassed by or hurt by, so we didn't want to share them. I laid down again, and just took a deep breath, drying my tears with the blanket. I couldn't go through it again. I understood Lucian wanted to be given a chance, but if I gave him one it meant putting my own life at risk again. I just couldn't do it. It was better if he moved on. It is just better that way. I whispered. I hadn't been able to get up for my morning run. My nightmare had kept me awake for a long time, and when I finally fell asleep, I slept through my alarm and everything. I was so tired as I finally got out of bed and took a shower, and got dressed. I wanted to go eat something quick before I went to work with Lara again, but as I opened the door, the door in front of mine opened too. I froze as Lucian appeared. He stopped too, looking at me, neither of us saying anything. He looked like he was on his way out to go for a run though, only wearing those black training shorts, and his upper body just exposed to me and looking so damn good, I just wanted to lick and kiss every inch of his skin. I had expected him to say something, but he didn't. He just grabbed his phone from his pocket and earphones, before walking away, closing the door behind him. I felt bad. It was my fault that he was acting like this now. I had pushed him away too many times, but I couldn't change anything. I didn't want to. Hey. I turned my head and saw Lara coming my way. James wasn't with her, and I believed he had gone back to the castle for a little while. Everything okay? She asked. I nodded. Yeah, why wouldn't it be? I asked as I closed my bedroom door. Well, you have dark circles under your eyes, and it looks like you barely slept tonight. She said as we walked downstairs. I'm fine. No, you're not, but I'm not going to ask. She said. Good. We both walked into the kitchen and quickly made something to eat. There was a smile on Lara's lips, as we both prepared breakfast for ourselves. She often smiled now. Maybe it was true. Maybe I knew nothing of their story. Maybe Lara and James had just gone through a rough period and had now come out so much stronger. Coffee? She asked me. I nodded. Sure. I said and watched as she found another mug and poured me some, before pushing it over to me. She knew I liked milk in it too, so she had not filled it all the way up. I poured something in, as she poured herself some coffee, enjoying it black. So, how is the new room? She asked me. Big. She chuckled a little. Do you like it? She turned to me, and I shrugged. I guess it is fine. I said. 
But. But what? I asked. You don't like who lives across from you. She said. I shook my head. I don't want him here. I said. Why not? Because I told you, I don't want him. I said. Do you want to talk about why? She asked. Isn't it enough? I just don't? I asked as I went to sit by the kitchen island with nothing but plain toast with some butter on it in front of me. After everything that happened to me, food had lost its taste. Now it all just tasted the same, so I didn't really care what I ate. Lara grabbed an apple on her way over to me though, and placed it beside me, as she went to sit on my left. Yeah, I guess it is if I truly believe that. She said. I sighed. Believe it. I said. But I don't. Why? Because I believe you want what most of us want. She said. And that is? Passion. A love that consumes you but doesn't drown you. You want someone who knows you but won't try to control you. Someone who will be there when it counts. She said. You want some danger too. I can tell you it definitely keeps things interesting. She winked at me and I shook my head. I don't need to know what you and your alpha do to keep things interesting. I said. She chuckled a little. I am just saying, I believe you want the same. I just want to be left alone. I told her. Why? Why did you want to be left alone? I asked her. Good point, but I never truly wanted to be left alone. I just thought it was best until I met James. I did tell him to reject me though, but neither of us was able to, and then we thought we could just fuck it out of our system. It did not work either, and before I knew it, I was in love. She told me. Which is why I am keeping my distance. I know what happens when you let them to close. I told her. But you don't actually. Tell me, do you stop riding a bike because you fell and broke your arm? She asked me. Not the same. But in a way it is. She said and smiled at me. I am just telling you not to miss this chance. I almost did. I don't want to see you make the same mistakes as me. I'm fine. I told her and got up, grabbing the apple and the coffee mug before I left the kitchen, just needing some time alone. Lucian. She was driving me insane. And this time it was not in a good way. I had barely slept tonight after our conversation. I couldn't believe she wouldn't even give me a chance. I understood why she didn't, but I just oh goddess, I knew I was speaking like a child, but I thought it was unfair. Of course, she didn't know me, so how could she trust me? But how could she get to know me if she wouldn't let me get close to her? It was simply just messing with my head, and so I had gone out to run myself tired, hopefully getting some of this angry energy out of me, before I decided to chase down my little mate and fuck her until she couldn't walk. At least then I knew she wouldn't be able to run from me after we had fucked. No, she would have to stay, and she would be forced to allow me to get close. I knew it wasn't so simple though. Cecilia would stay away from me from now on. She couldn't allow me to get so close again, despite liking it. I can't take this. My wolf growled loudly in my head and I slowed down a little because his voice was echoing inside of my head. Me neither, but don't shout it. I said. He growled annoyed. She needs to accept us. Why does she keep running? I am tired of this and her wolf keeps blocking me out. I could feel how much it annoyed my wolf that hers didn't even want to talk to him, but it made it clear how hurt Cecilia was. It showed how deeply damaged she was by what had happened. Even her wolf didn't dare give us another chance, and that said something. I know this is frustrating, but we just have to be patient. I said. We will win her over. We better. No one gets to touch her but us. I could only agree. I wanted to own Cecilia. I wanted her to be completely mine, just like I wanted to be completely hers. I wanted everyone to know we were taken, and the only ones allowed to touch us now were each other. Suddenly, my phone rang. I didn't recognize the number, but I already knew who was calling. I still had a few days left, but I knew my brother had never been the patient type. I answered and his voice was right in my ears because of my headphones. Well, brother, he asked. 
I still got time to decide. Five days, in fact. I said. I am just making sure you understand what is going to happen if you don't agree. I understand. I said. Yes, because I am looking at our dear cousin right now. Landon. She really grew up to be beautiful. You know I always thought if you were going to hand over the pack to anyone, it would be Kate. She had fire, but no, you chose little Maddie. Why is that? He asked. You have no idea how strong she is. I said, growling a little. No, I mean, I understand her mate being a good choice. You don't get eyes like that unless you're crazy. He said. Funny, you don't have eyes like that then. I said angrily. My brother chuckled a little. Well, then maybe I am not as crazy as you think. We both know that is not true. You killed our parents. I had a vision for us, he said. We could have been the next great rulers. Think about it, Lucian. Twins, we would have been so powerful, but you had to telephone me no. I swallowed hard, remembering the day before it had all happened. My brother had come to find me and started talking about how special twins were. The power that laid in our blood, because we were so connected. We could have been strong alphas together. I thought he spoke of a faraway future, and I pointed that out, that neither of us was ready, and that he had to wait until he could step up. Landon had said something weird, of course, that should have tipped me off, but I didn't dare to think my brother would kill our parents. He had asked me what if we were ready now. I had just looked at him confused and said we weren't before he had just dropped the conversation and left the room. That night the whole house was swallowed up by flames. We were still kids, I said. And you were never going to be a good ruler. But you were? You think if I thought that, I would have given the pack to someone else? He chuckled a little, and I could just imagine the smug look on his face. No, you were never very confident. You still aren't. We all know it is an act. You might show one side to everyone. The confident player type. The one who can screw your mate if you want to but we both know you have never believed much in yourself. That is why you couldn't kill me either. You doubt yourself. Al the fucking time. It is rather pathetic. Landon. Am I wrong? He was not wrong, he was right. I just didn't like to hear it, because it meant he knew my weakness already. He knew I didn't feel confident enough to fight him. I wasn't sure why I had never had the same confidence as him, and it didn't help when I went to live with my uncle and aunt. They did not believe in encouraging kids to do their best. Either you did your best or you were a failure. Maddie had changed though. She turned more confident than me. She was able to fight it all, but I still doubted. I still felt like I was barely worth calling myself an alpha. I still have five days. I said. Yes, I know that. I am just keeping an eye on our cousin. You see, she is sitting all alone, reading a book, and no one is around her. Landon. Yes, brother. Don't you fucking go near her. But I missed her. Remember how easily I could make her cry when we were small? She was always so sensitive. Of course, her sister would always come after me afterwards. Kate really knew how to punch even as kids. He said. Landon, you leave Maddie alone, you hear me. Hem, maybe I should pay your little mate a visit. I mean if it wasn't for the burn scar. I bet I could parse you. That would be fun though, wouldn't it? She would think I was you, and I would easily sneak into bed with her and fuck her. It would be even more fun if you found us together. Can you imagine the look on her face when she realizes it was my cock inside of her and not yours, or that I had made her suck me, thinking I was you? I heard him laugh, while I was about to crush my phone in my hand. He painted awful pictures that I saw so clearly, and it made me want to go find him and kill him now, but I had to be patient. My brother might have a hard time waiting, but he was smart and he was cunning. He wanted me to come find him. He wanted me to give him a reason to kill me too. I couldn't let him win so easily. You're a fucking asshole. I said. I want my pack, Luke. He growled. I have five more days. Are they really going to change anything? He asked. Hopefully, they would buy us some time, and Maddie and Evan could get working on getting the pack to turn on Landon. I needed to weaken him. I needed to give him a reason to fight me, and hopefully fight me fairly. I couldn't risk him actually burning my family alive. I would never risk fighting him because of that. No, I needed him to lose his mind. I needed him to slip up and make him want to fight me. They might just. I said. 
Want me to have a room prepared for you? My brother laughed. You did always like to joke around. You liked fire, I liked jokes. Indeed, he said. There was a small pause, and I wondered what he was doing, but then I heard him turn on his car, and I breathed out relieved. Five days, Lucian, make them count. Oh, I plan to. Landon hung up, and I sighed, feeling even more on edge now. He had not just threatened my family, now he planned to go after Cecilia in the worst fucking way possible. If he touches her my wolf couldn't complete that sentence before his voice turned into a powerful growl. He won't. We won't let him. I said darkly. My wolf agreed, and I quickly continued the run, running faster and pushing myself harder. I couldn't go back all on edge and risk snapping someone's neck if they got on my nerve. Cecilia. What are you doing? I looked over my shoulder and saw Lara looking at my computer screen. I was sitting in the living room hoping not to run into her because I knew she wouldn't like finding me and seeing I was still working. Lucian didn't know Lara had told me I was on vacation, and therefore he had not known when I sat in the office last night, I was not even supposed to be there. I had chosen to sit there after it got dark and Lara had gone to bed, hoping to get some work done because I just couldn't let it go. Nothing. I said and slammed my computer shut. Just shopping. Goddess. Was that the best lie I could come up with? Lara crossed her arms, shaking her head. Are you going against a direct order from you, Luna? She asked me. No. Oh, fuck. Computer. Lara said and held out her hand. I felt like a child that had been caught playing with their computer before doing their homework. I sighed and handed her the laptop, shaking my head. I told you, Cecilia, either you accept him or you reject him. Until then I can't use you. She said. That is not fair. I said and got up from the couch. No. I shook my head. You haven't even eaten anything. She said and nodded to the cup of coffee and the half-eaten apple on the coffee table. That has nothing to do with Lucian. I said. Doesn't it? She asked me. You are trying to distract yourself from the thought of him by working. Either work it out or don't bother coming back to work. You need me. I said. We have trouble coming. And I need someone who won't be distracted and constantly on edge. I am not. You are, and you would be able to see that if you weren't so distracted by him. She said. I am not distracted by him because that would mean I cared. Lara shook her head and just walked away. Eat some food. She yelled, before disappearing. I wanted to rip something in half or punch something. I couldn't believe how I had gotten here or I could, and it was all Lucian's fault. I was going to strangle him. It was then I saw him walk by the living room I was in, and I clenched my hands before I followed him. Either work it out or don't bother to come back to work oh, I was going to work it out, right now. I was going to say the words, and I was not going to be stopped this time. Lucian had climbed the stairs fast though and was already in his room when I finally got up to the top floor. I walked over to his room, so angry that I didn't even think about knocking. I just grabbed the handle and opened the door, only to come face to face with a very sweaty and naked Lucian, who stood a little turned so I could practically see all of him. He turned his head and looked at me confused, and I just stood there with an open mouth, letting my eyes drink it all in. Fuck, he looked so good all naked and slightly sweaty from his run. He was rippled with muscles and had the moon cycle going down his right arm, which had to be twice the size of mine, and that burn scar on his stomach definitely did not ruin his looks. It just gave him a harder edge to all that perfect skin, and it seemed just me looking at his long and thick cock was enough to make it slowly get harder. He already had quite the size, but he was definitely also a grower. He had his phone in his hand, and earphones, and was clearly about to put them away when I stopped him. I slowly moved my eyes back to his and it was then I realized I had been staring. I gasped and put a hand over my eyes before turning my back to him. No, please do come inside. I was not doing anything important. He teased me. Why are you naked? I said. If I remember correctly, this is my room, and I was about to go shower. 
Then why not undress out there? Are you telling me what to do in my own room? He asked. I. He chuckled. Just I will find you later. I said. Or you could join me in the shower. He suggested. Fuck, my whole body turned warmer when he suggested that and a very clear image of him and me in the shower appeared in my head. I could see myself pressed up against the tiles, as he fucked me from behind, his hand on the wall and one of my hips, and both of mine on the wall, pushing back as he thrust hard into me. I almost let a small moan escape me because I knew what it felt like to have him inside of me, and I could feel it just as I thought about it. I wasn't going to say yes, though. I couldn't say I regretted yesterday and then jumped into the shower with him that would be just wrong. My whole body begged me to do it though. It begged me to go in there with him and explore every inch of him. I wanted to feel him grow hard in my hand, and I wanted to feel him in my mouth and in my pussy again. I wanted it all. No, I. I promise to keep my hands to myself. He said. You expect me to believe that? Either close the door or join me. He said. Why did people constantly give me ultimatums? It was pissing me off. And when I didn't say anything, I just heard him sigh and then the door to the bathroom closed. I slowly lowered my hand and looked towards the bathroom. I could hear water running now, and I finally made a decision, going into his room and closing the door. I went to his bed and sat down, but it smelled so much of him, that I had to move from it and walked over to the couch. It didn't matter where I went though. It all smelled like him, and I realized too late what a bad choice I had made to come in here. I couldn't control myself. I was wired to react just to the scent of him, and it was getting to me. I started to pace, feeling how itchy my skin felt and how much my pussy was throbbing. This was bad. I didn't remember it being like this. Maybe it was in the beginning with me and Nolan no, it wasn't. It had lacked something from the beginning, but with Lucian, it felt so powerful. Al consuming. I didn't know what came over me, but I turned to the bathroom door, and then I started to strip, as I walked over there. I was completely naked and shaking with need, as I pushed the handle down and walked in. Lucian had his back to me, as he washed the front of his body, and the way his back was flexing as he moved his arms, made me feel even wetter for some reason. He just had to move, and I was turned on. Was my body already tuned into him so well? I couldn't believe it, but I was not stopping now, and when I finally joined him in the shower, he turned to me, looking over his shoulder and looking surprised. Last time. I said. He smiled and turned around ready to grab me, but I got on my knees and started to work him with my hand, feeling him grow harder and harder before I took him in my mouth. He hissed a little and reached out, placing his hand on the wall. Fuck, it felt powerful, knowing I could make such a powerful alpha feel unsteady on his feet, as I took his hard cock as far as I could. I teased the head of it with my tongue, and his other hand wrapped itself in my hair, holding on tightly, and pushing me a little further down on him, making me test my limits. I relaxed my throat, and let him go even further, as he started to fuck my mouth. It turned me on like crazy, my pussy feeling like it was burning with need, as he lost himself to me. I scratched his thigh a little, hearing the low growl that left him, and when I moved it to caress his heavy balls, he grabbed onto me tighter, and then he came, groaning loudly, and shit, I had never tried anything hotter. I swallowed his C asterisk CM greedily, and when he finally released his tight grip on me, I moved back and licked my lips, as he watched me. He pulled me up from the ground, and kissed me hard, as he pushed me up against the tiles behind me. Oh shit, yes, just like this. This was exactly what I had wanted, but as he lifted one of my legs, I pushed him back a little and then turned around before pushing out my ass. He growled deeply pleased, and it was like my pussy responded to his cow, and I felt my own slick running down my thighs. Fuck, I wanted him. I wanted him so much it hurt, but it was his hand I felt first. I screamed at the first contact, and when he started to run slow circles around my clit, it drove me insane. Do you want me? He asked. I nodded. I want to hear you say it. 
I realized then he wanted me to beg for it. He wanted to drive me so insane that I couldn't stop myself. Lucian. Say. It. He pushed me harder, circling my clit faster, and just as I was balancing on the edge of a sweet orgasm that I could feel would just make my whole body explode, but then he slowed down. I whimpered in pain, not liking this, but he was not giving up. He wanted to hear me say it, and when he almost made me come again but then slowed down, I was shaking, panting, and just so needy, I couldn't take it anymore. Please Lucian. I need you. Please fuck me. He didn't hesitate, as he made me come with his hands and just as I was coming, he spread my legs wider, before he pushed all the way inside of me, stretching me, and filling me up. We both moaned with pleasure, and I was still coming, as he started to move. I felt how much I was shaking, not at all satisfied. SH, I will make you feel better. He said darkly in my ear, as he continued to fuck me, driving into me harder and harder, as his fingers worked my clit. I came again, screaming loudly, but he was far from done with me. He made me come two more times, both just as intense and powerful as the ones before. And only when I was coming down from the last one, did he pull out and come all over my as before he smacked it hard and whispered in my ear. This says is mine and so are you. Cecilia. I quickly dressed after I had dried off. Lucian watched me, while still wearing a towel around his waist. He had a stupid smile on his lips, and I knew it was all my fault for him having it. I had lost my mind again. I kept saying it was over with. I kept telling myself only this once, only to strip myself of my clothes and then spread my legs open for him. I was more clear-headed though. Those orgasms were just what I needed to get myself back in the game. Running again. He said as he watched me put on the last piece of clothes. I must say it did surprise me you joined me. Last time, as I said. I told him. He nodded, but the smile didn't disappear. Why did you actually come up here? He asked. I. Shit, I could barely look at him without thinking about what had just happened. It was amazing. I had never before felt so free and sexy at the same time. Lucian brought something out in me no one else had, and I knew he hated I would only open up to him when we were fucking, but causal sex was all I could do, being vulnerable and letting someone close was something else. Still want to say the words? He asked if he had read my mind. We should. I said. Why? Because I will never be what you need, and you will never be what I need. And what is that? He asked. You need someone who can open their heart to you, but I can't do that again. I said. You just need some time. And what if I never change my mind? I asked. He seemed a bit scared almost, but quickly masked those feelings, shaking his head, and refusing to believe I wouldn't change my mind. Isn't it easier if we just end it now? I asked. No. Lucian. I walked over to him hoping I could make my words stronger if I was standing closer, but he walked towards me too, and soon we were standing right in front of each other again. He grabbed my hand before I even had time to stop him and placed it on his chest. I swallowed hard, as I felt all the smooth skin under my fingers and hand. All those hard muscles moving as he shifted his weight a little. I am not letting you go. He said. Lucian. You are my chance. He said. You got the bad one. I said. He shook his head. I don't believe that. Why not? Don't you see how broken I am? I asked him. Broken? No. Cautious. Cautious? I asked with a little smile. That's a nice way to describe me. I'm the one broken one, Cecilia. He said. I looked at him confused. I'm so damaged that you should be the one to run screaming away, not the other way around. He told me. I found it hard to believe him though. It was even harder to listen to his words, as he held my hand over his heart, and I could feel that strong and steady rhythm it pounded in. I loved the feeling though, I realized. It was calming and made me feel safer than I ever had. 
there was just something completely solid about Lucian. Like I knew, without really knowing, that I could count on him. It was like instinct, but it also scared me. It scared me so much, but not because I wished it wasn't true. No, I wished with everything inside of me, that it was true. You have no idea the beginning of it all. He said. Where it all started. I think I have an idea. Your brother has kind of threatened my life. I said. He smiled a little. Yeah, but it was long before that. My family was always messed up. He said. I have done a lot of bad things to survive in the house after my parents died. Such as? I asked. You don't want to know. I do. You just want a reason to run. He said and his smile grew. I shook my head and he seemed surprised. Just tell me. I said. I'm tougher than I look. He chuckled a little. I'm aware. So? What have you done? I asked. Kill people. He said. I looked at him shocked. My uncle was a bad person. He said. Sometimes he needed someone else to do the dirty work though. Lucian. I didn't want to. He said. But I had to. It was either them or me. I shook my head a little, and his hands tightened around my wrists as if he feared I would run from him now, but I had no plans to run. At least not right now. The longer I stood there with him, the safer I felt. The calmer I felt. I liked it. It had been a while since I had been able to just relax like this. It's not your fault. I whispered. It was. I could have done something when I got older, but I just didn't. He said. I got used to it. Or maybe my brother is right. Maybe I am not as good as I want to think. I shook my head again and then used my free hand to place it on his cheek. He seemed shocked I would touch him so willingly, but I wasn't sure what came over me. When he spoke of the way he saw himself, I felt a need to reassure him and calm him like real mates did. No. I said and stroked his cheek. It's not true. A bad person wouldn't treat me the way you do. And how do I treat you? Other than taking care of certain needs of yours. I couldn't help but chuckle a little, and the sound surprised me. I had not laughed in a long time. It seemed to surprise Lucian too, but his smile just grew. If you stopped running, I could truly show you how I would treat you, which is with nothing but love. I don't deserve your love. I said and lowered my hand. How can you know that? Because your former mate said so? I sighed and looked away, before taking a step back. Lucian let me go, seeing my walls coming right back up. I couldn't help it. His love it was too much. It was more than I could handle. I'm sorry, Lucian, you got the bad one. I said. I don't believe that. I can't be your mate. I said. So, are you rejecting me? He asked me. I wanted to say it. I couldn't be selfish. I needed to let him go, so he could find someone who could be there for him like a real mate should. I knew that would never be me, but as I looked at him, I felt my heart beating faster, and it demanded me not to say the words. It wanted him, I realized. It was what I didn't want to happen, what I knew would happen if we spent too much time together. It's happening again my wolf knew it too. She knew we were already falling for him a little. We did everything with passion, and therefore, things happened so damn fast too. I have to get out of here. I said instead, and turned around and walked away. Cecilia, Lucian. I watched as things were being carried inside the house. It had changed so much after Evan and Maddie had moved in. It became a house full of love instead of horrors. They had really done so much to make it a home, and not just for them, but for all the pack members to that either lived here or nearby. My uncle and Anne had always wanted the house all to themselves, never making it seem like a place people could come and go, and never connecting with the pack members the way Evan and Maddie had done. That was why it was so awful to watch their stuff being taken out and my brother now moving in. Luke.
I turned my head and saw my brother appear at the door. He wore a pair of dark sunglasses and was smiling from ear to ear. He walked closer, taking of his sunglasses as he went inside, and then placed himself at my side. I was there to make sure Evan and Maddie were actually allowed to leave. They just needed to pack the last of their stuff and then they would go back to the castle. I just hoped they had been able to convince the pack to turn against their alpha, but such things could take time. I wasn't giving up either. I just needed my brother to feel like he had one, so he wouldn't come after Cecilia. She had to come first, right now. I am glad you realized what was the right choice, he said, as he watched some of the people that he had brought with him, carrying his stuff inside. I had no idea how many wolves he had behind him, but I had a hunch he had not survived for this long without making himself a little army. Not big enough so people could track him down, but just so he was protected. It is not like I had a choice. I mumbled. My brother smiled and smacked his hand against my back. How is that mate of yours? He asked, as he walked to the living room. I knew he wanted me to follow, and so I did. I placed myself further away though, leaning against the doorframe, as I watched him pour himself something to drink before he went to sit on the couch, looking at me with such a stupid smile on his lips. Alive. I said. He chuckled. Well, I would hope so, since I got what I wanted unless you maybe got tired of her. He choked. Are you really suggesting I would kill my own mate? I am not you. I said. He didn't find it insulting that I thought he could kill his own mate. He was almost proud of it. Well, I mean, he said and then held a hand up to the scar on his face. You really think you aren't capable of it? I am not a monster, and I care about her. I said. And, it doesn't mean you can't lose your temper. I mean, look at you, he said. You really grew into the alpha you were always meant to be. I knew you would stop being so scared all the time. I am just sad I was not here to make sure our uncle didn't turn you into a social one. I found my way out of it myself. I said. I was not sad to hear he died. Landon said. Or killed, right? I nodded. Cheating on our aunt, and then she killed him and his pregnant lover. Mate. I corrected. Oh, they were true mates. He asked. I nodded. What the fuck? He laughed. That is hilarious. Please do tell me how. Oh, come on, he said. You think our uncle ever deserved to find his mate, and then he left our aunt to be with her, only to get killed by our aunt. That's the funniest thing I have ever heard. My brother continued to laugh, but I just stared at him shocked. Maddie had been the one to find her father and had been taken by her mother. It was all very horrible, and she had been working together with Elena, who had come to take Evan while Maddie was distracted. It was not funny at all. Besides, my uncle might have been a horrible person and I was not sad he died, but I couldn't find his death funny. When did you become so boring? He asked when he saw I wasn't laughing. I never thought these things were funny, nor did I find it funny when you tortured small animals and hid them in different rooms to rot, so the whole house would smell. My brother just shrugged. I thought it was funny, he said. They could never find my hiding places until dad made you telephone him where. Thanks for that, by the way. I was living in that house too. I said. I couldn't stand the smell. Yeah, but you also always told dad where he could find me. He said. I was worried about you. I said. Worried? I nodded. When we were kids, you were important to me. I told him. And now? I think you know. I said. You threatened my mate and family. Landon. We are no longer brothers. But that is where you are wrong, he said and placed his drink down before pointing at me. We have always been brothers and always will be. You will see soon enough where it is you belong and who to show your loyalty to. I am not the same scared kid that needed his brother to stand up for him. I said. No, now you are an alpha. A true one and I know you and I are going to do great things. Do you not understand I want to share all of this with you? Share? He nodded. I wanted us to rule together, he said. I want us to do something that has not been done before. Two alphas, think about it. I'm going to pa. I told him coldly. He shook his head. You just don't see it yet, he said. No, no, I see it clearly, and I see you turning into the next Connor, 
and then you will be killed by us. I told him. My brother started to laugh, and I looked at him confused. Oh, right, Connor. I am surprised it took you so long to take him down. He was nothing, he said. Nothing compared to me. In a way, I feared that was true. Connor actually regretted killing his son, but Landon no, he was not sad he had burned our parents alive. He would not be sad if he killed Maddie, or even went after Ethan oh shit. He might just come after Ethan. Oh, Madeline. I looked over my shoulder and saw Evan and Maddie had appeared. Evan was keeping a protective arm around Maddie, but she was not showing any fear right now. She had grown into a strong Luna, and she was showing Landon that she was not afraid. Landon, she said. Just came to say we're leaving. Landon nodded, satisfied. You certainly have changed, he said as he leaned back on the couch. You have been gone for a long time, she said. He nodded. But now I am back. I wish you would burn in the underworld, she said calmly. I looked at her shocked, and Evan pulled her closer, but Landon just laughed, finding it funny that she told him to die. Landon had a strange sort of humor. Oh, dear cousin, I love the fire, he said. So sad about Caitlin. Heard she left this world not long ago. Perhaps for the best. She would never have given up the pack to me. Maddie narrowed her eyes, and I could see how angry this made her, but we needed to buy some time. We needed to play the long game. Enjoy it while it lasts. She told him. Was that a threat, cousin? He asked her, his voice turning darker. No. I said and placed myself in front of her. It wasn't. Landon just looked at me, but then seemed to calm down a little, letting it go. We are leaving, I said. You too, he asked. I nodded. Come to the party then, he said. Party? I am throwing myself a welcome party, inviting everyone from the upper class. You are going to come too, he said. Aye. And bring that mate of yours. I would love to meet her, he said. No way. Or I could just go pay her a visit and... Fine. I growled. Landon smiled. Shay you Friday, he said as he grabbed his glass, and I turned away, walking out of there with Evan and Maddie. Cecilia. I feel so tired. I feel like I am floating between dreamland and reality. It isn't the sound of a child crying that wakes me though. No, it is the lack of crying. I force my eyes open looking around in the delivery room for my child. I can't see her at first. Everything feels like a bad dream. Like I barely know if it is all really true, but I know it is. I am in so much pain, and I feel so weak, but it tells me that it is all real. I love it. My baby? I whisper. Suddenly, a nurse appears in front of me, everything is so blurry, and I can barely focus on her. It's going to be okay. Her voice almost has an echo, and I see her move around as another nurse joins her. Let's take her to surgery. I hear someone say. Surgery? I ask. You will be fine. The nurse says again. No my baby, I want my baby. I breathe. It's all going to be okay. I reach out, trying to get to my baby. I want to see her. I want to know everything is okay, but I can hear the machines I am hooked to going crazy. Something is very wrong, my baby, those are the last words I get out before the world turns black. It feels like no time passes at all, but when I wake up again, I feel better. Still weak and in a little pain, but I am stronger this time. I look around the room I have been placed in, only able to focus on one thing. My baby. I whisper. I can't see anything but all the standard things in a patient's room. The bed, the machines, a small TV, a small couch, and a door leading into the bathroom. I look around frantically, just as a nurse appears again. It was the same one who told me I was going to be okay. She smiles at me and walks over to me. How are you feeling? She asks. I reach out, grabbing her arm. Where is my baby? I ask. She slowly loosens my hold on her arm. 
I am still not strong enough to put much power behind my grip, so she easily gets my hand of her. I will get the doctor. My child. I yell after her. Where is she? I can't control myself. I am so angry. I don't even care if I am yelling or anything. I am just so desperate to see my child. Why isn't anyone listening? Soon the doctor comes though. She is an older female, looking at me with eyes that tell me everything. I don't want to listen though. I just want my baby. My little pup. She was the only thing that got me through being rejected. It hurt me so much when Nolan left me for another. I was going to tell him the night he left me that we were expecting, but I never got a chance. I decided to raise her myself and clung to the idea of holding her in my arms. She got me through it all, and so now I want her. I want her in my arms. My child. I growl, feeling myself grow so desperate. Miss Clark. The doctor starts. No. I say. The doctor looks at me confused. Don't. I told her. I want my child. As you know, you went into premature labor. I want my child. I scream. We did everything we could, but there were complications, and your daughter had not developed properly. I just want my child. Can't you hear me? You wouldn't stop bleeding, so we took you to surgery and it all went smoothly. You will be able to have more kids in the future. I want my daughter. I just want her. I am crying like crazy now and grabbing the sides of the bed as if I am ready to jump over there, but I can't move. I am too weak. My whole body is shaking, and my wolf is screaming in my head. Our pup. We need to go find our pup. She needs us. Please. I yell. Miss Clark, your daughter didn't make it. The doctor finally said. No. I am very sorry. She has to have made it. We survived it all together. I say. The doctor looks at me a little puzzled, but she doesn't know my entire story. No one does. I didn't want the news to get back to Nolan. I feared he would force me to get an abortion or would do something to me to make sure our daughter didn't make it. I am only 21, but I know I want her with all my heart. I need her. Miss Clark. No. Just get her for me. I yell. I can't. She said, trying her best to calm me, while the nurse comes over to me. She strokes my shoulder and back, looking at me with eyes that say it all. My daughter is not coming back. They can't bring her to me. There is no way I will ever hold her in my arms. Please I need her. I whisper. The nurse just continues to stroke my back, but she cannot give me what I wish for. I need her I just need her. It went downhill from there I did not lose my mind when Nolan rejected me. I was able to cling to the thought of my daughter in my arms, and it kept me going, but after I lost her I lost myself. I ended up spending weeks in the hospital because I had nowhere else to go. It was there another patient told me about the spirituals. No one believed that they were real, but she did, and she kept talking about them and so I started to look into it. Just for fun to begin with, but then that research helped me find my strength again and it stopped me from trying to take my life again. Cecilia? I looked over my shoulder and saw Lara looking at me. I was just standing in the kitchen, watching the water run. Are you okay? She asked. I nodded, turning back to the water and finally filling the glass in my hand. I think you're right. I said as I took a sip. What? She walked closer to me, and I slowly turned to her. I am not clear-headed. I said. Lara sighed. The bond. No, it is more than that. I said. She looked at me puzzled, but I didn't try to explain it. No one knew about that part of my life. No one knew what I had lost. I didn't want to talk about it. It was too hard. I haven't been clear-headed for a while. I said. 
It is time I took some time to heal. Lara nodded. I think that is a great idea. Are you going to accept Lucian then? She asked. I don't think I can. Cecilia. I want to. I admitted. You do? I nodded. But I don't think I can. I told her. Why? I. I pressed my eyes together as an image of my daughter appeared in my head. I couldn't go through it again. I couldn't survive losing another and being all alone. I just couldn't risk it. Too much pain. I told her. Lucian is different. She said. I want to believe it. Trust me, I do, but I just can't. I said. Lara sighed and then placed her hand on my shoulder. Okay, it is your choice, but I agree with the time thing. I think it would be good for you. She said. I do too. I told her. Dinner tonight? At the castle? She shook her head and smiled. No, my dad and brothers are coming over. Want to join? She asked. I sighed. I guess I don't really have anything else to do. I said. Lara smiled and then walked away. I wasn't sure I had made the right choice about taking time off, but Lucian was actually making me realize some things. You can't run from the past. Lucian. When I came back, it was a little later in the day, but when I entered the house, I could hear loud voices coming from further inside the house. I looked around confused, not sure why it sounded like a dinner party was going on. I walked further into the house and down a long hallway until I reached the dining room. In there I found Lara, her family, James, and Cecilia. One of Lara's brothers was sitting too close to her, in my opinion, and talking to her with a smile on his lips I didn't like. A small growl left me, and it made everyone turn to me. Ah, great Lucian, there you are. Lara said. Want to join us? I wasn't sure if I should. After today, I should probably just relax a little and try to shut my mind of. I had left the house with Evan and Maddie, going back to the castle, but not staying long. I just made sure they settled in well and told them to be patient. I would fix it all. I just needed my brother to let his guard down a little. I needed to learn more about him before I decided to strike. I knew I should take a little time of though, but when I saw Lara's brother sitting so close to Cecilia, I just couldn't leave. Sure, I said. My eyes were on my mate, who looked away, and her behavior just confused me. We hadn't really talked or seen each other since the morning she joined me in the shower, and it annoyed me that she wouldn't even look at me. I walked over to her, to the other side of the table. There was a free seat on her left side, but I needed to get in between those two. Switch seats with me, I said, as I moved in between the two, looking at Cecilia and giving Lara's brother my back. I was not sure who was who. I didn't know her brothers that well, but I knew they were all unmated, and I was not letting my mate close to them. Eh, why? Cecilia asked. Because I am telling you to. I heard someone laugh and turn my head, seeing James beside Lara trying his best not to laugh too much, while Lara was shaking her head. James understood why I was doing this. Her father might be sitting on her left side, but James was sitting almost as close as he could and was even holding her hand. Lucian, I am not moving seats. She said. Okay. I pulled her chair back and she squealed surprised before I picked her up and then sat down with her on my lap. She had wrapped her arms around my neck for support, but it was clear she did not like this. Lucian. She shouted. Stop. You had your chance. You are unbelievable. She told me. Thank you. Everyone started to laugh, and it was starting to become clear why I was acting like this. Lara's brother, oh, uh, Mason. That was his name, even backed of. Are you two mates? Another one of Lara's brothers asked. No. Yes. I looked at Cecilia who turned to me, looking annoyed. Don't lie. I told her. She sighed and shook her head. Why are you doing this here? She whisper yelled. Doing what? You might as well just have peed all over me, stating your claim like that. I chuckled, 
and it was clear the others heard her. She looked around, now looking very embarrassed, but I just found it funny. Yes, I was territorial, and no, I was not going to apologize for it. Cecilia was mine, and that was not going to change. Get used to it, Wildcat. I told her. She rolled her eyes. So, you are? Mason asked, pressing for an answer. Fine. Yes. Cecilia finally said. Or, no? Lara's brothers started voicing their complaints, and it just made everyone laugh. Only Lara's oldest brother Noah, I believed he was called, remained silent. He was the next beta of his pack, but he seemed very quiet compared to everyone here. Too bad. Lara said. She is taken now. I am not. Cecilia said. Oh, but you are. I told her. She turned to me and shook her head. Of all the places. What? I asked. You couldn't have waited. Until we were alone? I leaned closer and whispered. I saw her cheeks turn pinker, and I just loved the color of it. It was good to know I could make my mate flush such a beautiful pink. No. She said. Then what do you mean then? I asked. I just you just I didn't. Yes? I asked. She sighed and just crossed her arms. Can I get my seat back? I shook my head. No. I told her. Then can I at least go sit on my own? She asked. I thought it over, but then finally nodded and let her stand, but as stubborn as Cecilia wasn't defying to, she didn't sit down beside me, but walked over to the other side, where there was another available seat beside Lara's other brother the second oldest what was his name now? Are you trying to have me killed? The brother asked, as Cecilia sat down. No, I just thought I would sit more comfortable besides you, Alexander. She said. She was sitting right in front of me, and when she turned to me, I knew she saw how mad she made me. You don't MES with an alpha. It came from Logan, Lara's father. Good thing I am his mate then. It gives me a free paw. A free paw? I asked. She nodded and smiled smugly. You have no idea how little of a free paw it gives you. I said. She just shrugged, looking so pleased with herself. You just wait. I told her. For what? She asked, challenging me. You have no idea, little beta. I heard Lara's brothers laugh, and I knew most here understood that once I got Cecilia alone, she would quickly learn not to defy her alpha. I would show her exactly what happened when she played with fire. You could just not be such a possessive alpha. She told me. Al alphas are. Al alphas are. And not just alphas. I said and pointed to James. I am an alpha now. He said. You still went after Lara before you were one, and you didn't want her to leave the castle. I told him. He nodded. You're right. He said and smiled as he turned to Lara. He leaned closer to kiss her, but then Mason interrupted, telling him that was not happening while they watched. I had heard that Lara's brothers had tried teaching James a lesson after he went after the copy of Jane and everything, but no one had really come out as the winner. James was, after all, no normal wolf. He had trained with the king and the rest, but once they had all gotten it out of their system, it seemed like peace had been made. There are just some things we don't need to see, Mason said. I chuckled and turned to Cecilia, who I found watching me still. You just wait, I whispered. She narrowed her eyes. Bring it on. Lucian. As soon as dinner was over, and people were starting to leave the dining room, I saw my opportunity to get Cecilia alone. She was one of the last ones to leave the room, and just as she tried, I pulled her back and closed the door before placing myself in front of it. Hey. She said. Hey. She said. Cecilia tried going around me, but I blocked it completely, and when it looked like she got ready to push me back, I grabbed her wrists and then forced her back and down on the table. She gasped, shocked, but when we got as close as this, there was no stopping us. You like to play, little beta, but you don't play with fire. Or what? 
You like to play, little beta, but you don't play with fire. Or what? She asked and eyed my lips. You know the answer to that. I turned her around and then forced her arms behind her back before I unbuttoned her pants and pulled them further down before I spanked her as, and a little moan escaped her lips. You know you're not supposed to enjoy your punishments. I whispered darkly in her ear. She turned her head and smiled at me smugly. You call that a punishment? I think you and I have different definitions. Oh, my little beta seemed to like it hard, and so I gave it to her, over and over, until she was panting and pushing back against me, wanting me inside her. I turned her around, got her back on the table, ripped her pants off, and then we both fumbled to get my own open, freeing my hard cock, before I slid inside of her. Last time. She gasped as I went all the way inside. Sure. I groaned, feeling the way her pussy squeezed me, adjusting to me. It was never the last time. I would show her how many last times we would have. It was going to be fucking amazing. She thought she could run from me, but Celine and Isabella were right. I just needed to be patient. She was already slowly coming to me, and did Lara and James not start out like this too? Cecilia would be mine. Lucian. She screamed so sweetly as I fucked her harder, the plates and glasses clinging and the table groaning, but I wanted her screams to be mine, and the others were not far away. I placed my hand over her mouth, and I saw the desire in her eyes become stronger. She liked my possessiveness despite telling me she hated it. I continued to move in and out of her, feeling like I could barely hold back. She was really testing my strength, and I loved it. I loved the power she had over me, and what she was able to make me feel. If she would just let me into her heart too. I reached down between us and stroked her clit, and then she was coming hard, leaning her head back and screaming into my hand, while I continued to fuck her faster and harder, desperate to come to, but I wanted this to last as long as it could. She only let down her guards when we were fucking, and I really wanted to be close to her. I leaned closer and kissed and bit her marking spot, and it made her fly directly into another orgasm, this time squeezing my cock so hard, it was hard to almost move, and then I was coming to, thrusting one last time into her and then stilling, before I released inside of her, marking her as mine. We were both breathing so heavily, and when I lowered my hand from her mouth, I realized I hadn't even kissed her. It just went so fast all the time. I never really took my time to adore her. Maybe that was what we needed. I leaned closer to her, grazing my lips with hers, coaxing her to come to me, and she did. She crashed her lips into mine in a hot and powerful kiss that just made me hers completely. This is all it can be. She suddenly pulled back and whispered. You're wrong. No, I am not. She said. I know you want more from me, but I can't give it to you. Cecilia. She shook her head and kissed me hard, telling me not to tell her it was not right. She did not want to hear it, but was I willing to accept this? I mean, she might change her mind or she might not. Maybe she was right every time she said she liked being alone and didn't need anyone. I wasn't sure what to do, but I had always been thrown into so many challenges my whole life, and if I wasn't willing to go as far as to gamble my own heart, could I even cow myself her mate? Fine. You just want this? I pulled back and asked. Lucian. What? You said that is all I can have. Yes, but I don't think that is fair to you. Listen, I have a lot of things to work on. She said. You don't say. I said with a little smile. You deserve more. She said. No, I really don't. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? I asked back. She smiled a little and I smiled back, loving just having her wrapped around me. Apparently, we talked better when we were still completely connected. I would have to remember that. Cecilia was a wildcat by nature, but when petted correctly she turned into the sweetest little kitten. Don't use my own words against me. She said. Has it ever occurred to you we both are bad? I asked. Are you saying we should be bad together? Why not? I asked. She leaned closer, slowly kissing me this time. We will have to clean this table. She chuckled. 
I smiled and nodded before I finally pulled out of her and we both got our clothes back on. I quickly grabbed her though and pulled her back to me when she was fully dressed and wrapped my arms around her. If a small piece is all you will give me, I will take it. I said. Lucian. No, I mean it. A piece, that's fine. I said. I lied, but I wouldn't tell her that. Cecilia watched me for a long time, not sure if she wanted this. She might want me, but she didn't want to hurt me. I knew that. Cecilia was not cruel, just protective of herself. Is that really enough? She asked. It will have to be. No, that is not true. She said. But it is. Why are you willing to sacrifice so much for me? She asked. Because we are mates. It should not mean you have to give up your own happiness. Trust me, I tried. She said. What? Do you think you will have to give up your happiness? I am talking about yours. She said. Yeah, but you were talking from personal experiences. I said. Just eh, uh, forget. She said. I just don't think you should give it up for me. Who says I am? Cecilia wasn't convinced, but that was okay. I would win her over. I just had to be patient. I do need you to do something for me though. I said. What? Landon is throwing a party for himself, and he wants me to come and bring you. I said. What? I know, I tried telling him I wouldn't but. But then he threatened me again. I nodded. Yeah, he will hurt you if you don't come. I said. I can't allow that. So, you will drag me to the party? She asked teasingly. Just tell me you will come. Fine. I nodded, satisfied, and then let her go. I will clean up here. She said. Her walls were coming up again. Fine. She wanted some space? Then I would give it to her. I had to know when to push and when to pull away, and that was what I needed to do right then. So, I left the room, going to find the others. Lucian. I found the others in the living room talking and drinking and just enjoying themselves. Some of them glanced at me as I appeared, smiling at me with knowing smiles. Yeah, it was quite obvious that I was almost floating on a cloud. I just couldn't help it. Your mate brought you strength. How did it go today with Landon? James asked me. Bad we are all invited to his party. Including Cecilia. I said. Shit. Laura said. I nodded. He is planning something. He is going to make this party, the party from the underworld. I said. Landon loves chaos, but in a manipulative way. He likes to see things burn just to see them burn. He will try to play us in different ways. So be prepared. Everyone nodded, knowing this party was not going to be a fun one. How is Lauren? Logan asked. Laura looked at her father and shrugged a little. Not so good. I hear she is still fighting and definitely has some good days, but it is hard to say where she will be when she wakes up. Maybe she will be changed forever. Laura said. I sighed as I went to grab a drink myself. I had visited the castle not long ago, checking on Angela. Yeah, Lauren was really not doing that well. The bond was a mysterious thing. We thought we had it figured out, but sometimes it just surprised you. Maybe I should go visit her. Say how she is doing. I did know her once. Logan said. Well? Laura asked. He shook his head. No, she rarely talked much at those parties we were both at. She acted like a good upper-class female, and just stayed by Connor's side, but I would like to see her. I think that would be a good idea. Maybe you can remind her why she has to keep fighting. Laura said. Logan seemed to agree, and I had to say maybe it was a good thing he visited her. Lauren needed someone to remind her of the old days, but then again, were the old days that good for her? Not many really knew that much about Lauren. I wasn't even sure her kids knew that much about her. Connor had had a certain reputation for being the powerful alpha he was, but Lauren kind of disappeared into the background. We should get going though. Logan said and stood up. 
We will come again soon. Laura nodded and went to hug her brothers and father before seeing them out. I smiled a little as they all walked by me before I downed my drink and went to my room so I could finally rest a little. Cecilia, I beg of you. You have to help me. I say as I looked at the high priestess. How did you find us? She asks. It took me a while to understand the old books, but my world hasn't forgotten you completely. You are a myth now, but desperate people are willing to believe anything. I tell her. She walks closer to me and studies me a little. I just stand still, waiting to hear what she has to say. How much you have lost? She says as she stands in front of me again. You will just continue to lose if we help you. No. You will be giving me my life back. We cannot give back what is already lost. She tells me. Please, I can't stand it anymore. I want it gone. Help me. Do you understand that having a mark removed has its price like everything else? She asks me. I don't care. Have you not read what it does? You don't gain back the piece you lost. She says. You just lose more. He is torturing me. I tell her. I can still feel him. I can feel what he does with her. You should learn how to shut him up instead. The high priestess says. I can't we are true mates. She shakes her head like she is disappointed in me. So much you wolves don't understand about yourself. Please, just remove it. It will be painful. Okay. It might leave you just as empty as you are. She tells me. Okay. I just say. You are willing to go through it all. I nodded. Good, then let's get you prepared. She quickly summoned some other spirituals that had me prepared before I was brought outside to this unbelievable place with a big bright moon shining down on us and an altar further out, where the high priestess was waiting. Lie down. She tells me. I do as she tells me, and soon the ceremony begins. At first, I feel nothing. I just stare up into the moon, which seems bigger than it has ever done before, but then it is like I am being burned from the inside and out, every nerve on fire, and I just want to scream for them to stop. But then I black out. When I wake up, I see nothing but white. Hello? I say. No answer. Hello, anybody there? I ask. I look around this white land, not sure where I am or how I got here. I don't understand. Did something go wrong? But then I hear it a child crying. I look around not sure where it is coming from, but then finally I see something in the whiteness, something moving. I run over there and there she is. My little child. Oh, goddess. I reach down and pick her up, shushing her and trying to get her to calm down. Soon she does, and she looks up at me with those green eyes. Green eyes like me. I am so happy she got those instead of Nolan's dark brown. Oh, she is perfect, but then I remember my child was born too early, and she had not developed properly. Who are you? I whisper, but for some reason I know she is mine. I look around, not sure what I am doing here. What is this place? You can keep her, someone suddenly says from behind me. I turn around and see a young woman has appeared. She wears this white and long dress, and she has long blonde hair, but what stands out is her yellow eyes. Such a strong color. Who are you? She just smiles at me. You can keep her, you can keep her, she repeats. She is mine. She was always mine to keep. I say. She nods. That is true, but you exist in two different worlds now. If you want her, you can't go back. She tells me. What? You heard me. If you want her, you can't go back. If you want to go back, you can't keep her. She explains. I, I don't understand. Your journey isn't over, Cecilia. You came here for a reason. Don't forget what that was. But. I look down at the child in my arms. She laughs as she looks up at me and reaches her small hands towards me. You are needed elsewhere, she tells me. My child needs me. 
She shakes her head. My child needs me. She shakes her head. I left the other world too early too. I left a brother behind that needed me too, in fact, but there are always other ways we can help. I don't understand. Do you want to stay here with your daughter? You can't go back though. She tells me. Maybe I don't want to. But you have to. She tells me. I thought you said it was my choice. It is, but I think you should listen to me. The fight isn't over and you are needed. Dark times are coming and someone needs you in order to fight what he let live. Let live? You will know what I mean soon enough. Don't worry. She says and comes closer, taking the child from me. I will look after her, like I look after everyone else. Who are you? She just smiles at me. Go back. It is where you belong. I. I look at my daughter for a long time, but despite everything in me wanting to stay, she is right. My fight is not over. I can't let Nolan break me. He has had too much power over me for too long. I want the last laugh. Okay, send me back. The young female smiles and then reaches out, touching the place where Nolan's mark is, and then the burning pain comes back before I am sent into darkness again. Lucian. Oh, fuck. My little mate was riding me until she was coming hard, her whole body tensing and she leaned her head back, moaning loudly and squeezing me so fucking hard, it took everything inside me not to come with her. She was so beautiful when she came. The way she thrust out her chest like she was begging me to suck her tits, and I sure as hell did, only prolonging the fire in her, and her hands went into my hair, pushing me closer, while she moved her hips faster, wanting more, demanding more from me and I was more than thrilled to give it to her, turning us around and fucking her harder. She whimpered so sweetly when I hit just the right spot, focusing all my attention on that, and then she was coming again. Goddess Lucian. She screamed my name so loudly that I was sure everyone in the fucking house heard. Good, let them know who my little wildcat belonged to. Let them know I was the one pleasing her, and no one but me would ever get to see her like this. Fuck, she was sexy. And when she dug her nails hard into my skin, it just turned me so much fucking on. I had scratch marks all over me since we had begun this, and I loved it. Even though she wouldn't leave a mark that lasted forever, in a way, without even realizing it, she was marking me as hers, and it drove me crazy, making me want her all the fucking time. We had both left our rooms at the same time this morning, and all she had to do was smile at me, and I quickly grabbed her, before she could get to far, and pulled her into my room. She never stayed for long though, but she didn't fight me, but leaned into me, wanting this as much as me. Oh shit not again. She panted, as she started to come again, barely able to take any more. I kissed her this time, swallowing all those sounds she could make, before I lost myself, coming with her and releasing my cum inside her, and knowing I left a scent trail on her, just made me even more fucking possessive. Shit, what was going on between us was so intense, I could barely explain it. I laid down beside her, both of us breathing heavily and a thin layer of sweat covering our naked bodies. All the pillows and the blanket had been pushed away. We were just us lying naked on the mattress, recovering from an intense round of mating. Oh fuck. She breathed. I smiled. It seemed like that was all she could say at the moment, and that pleased me like crazy. I loved making it hard for my little mate to speak. That's a good way to describe it. I teased. She turned her head to look at me, and I turned to her. I saw such a beautiful smile on her lips, but then she shook her head and got up. Running? I asked her as I popped on an elbow. Don't know what you mean. She said, as she started to get dressed. Well, you clearly aren't staying. I'm hungry. She said. Always something pulling you away. Hey, I told you, if you don't want to continue this. She said as she turned to me. Who said I didn't? I asked. She shook her head a little and came back to me, slowly crawling closer to me. You can just say stop. Why would I do that? Because you deserve someone who can love you back and not always be so afraid. She said. So, you admit you are afraid? She rolled her eyes and I pulled her closer, kissing her hard, 
and she moaned sweetly, as I slipped my tongue into her mouth, stroking hers with mine. I mean it, Lucian. She said as she pulled back. Sure. You should just say stop. I mean you could have a real mate who would actually want to stay in your bed. She said. Okay. Don't do that. She said. What? Ignore the problem. Listen, little mate, if you want to stop this, we can. I said. But I am fine right here. She shook her head a little and then placed her hand on my cheek, caressing it before running it through my hair. I loved it when she was the one touching me. Never had such a simple touch felt so good and calmed me so much. You need to shave. She just told me and pulled back. I chuckled a little. I have been busy tending to my little mate. And a haircut too. She just said. As I said, I have been busy. Worrying? Making my mate scream from pleasure. I said and placed my hand on her hip. You don't want to talk about your brother? I shook my head. The party is tomorrow. I am aware. I said. What should I be prepared for? She asked. Just don't be alone with him. I said. Just stay close to me or any of the others. The Queen and King will be there too, Lara and James as well. Cecilia nodded. It wasn't just those. Maddie and Evan were coming, and so were Ryder and Celine. We would not be alone there. So, I wanted someone to always have eyes on Cecilia. I was afraid of what my brother might do to her if he got the chance. Okay. She said. But I am not scared. I know, Wildcat. Stop calling me that. She said, but with a smile on her lips. Never. It fits. She shook her head. I am not wild and I am not a cat. You are wild. I don't know why you see yourself as plain and boring. A boring person doesn't scream like you or tell me to fuck her harder when she is close to coming. I said, and saw my little mate blush so sweetly. It had been made quite clear to me, quite fast that Cecilia wasn't used to talking so openly about this, but that would change. She and I were not going to ever get tired of this. It was fucking heaven on earth sinking into her sweet pussy and feeling her wrapped around me so tightly, it was almost hard to move. You're distracting me. She said and pushed my hand away. I am not. I am hungry. I heard you. I said and then let my eyes run down her beautiful little slim body. Lucian. She chuckled. What? No more. I didn't say anything. I said. She rolled her eyes and then got out of the bed before taking my clothes on the floor and throwing them at me. Oh, you want us to eat together? I thought you were running from me. I said. Fine, then I will just go on my own. She said. I shook my head. No, no, not now that you're offering. Offering what? She asked. To spend some time with me. I said and got my pants on before meeting her over by the door. I had my t-shirt in my hand and I put it on as we walked out. I quickly leaned closer to her and kissed her, just because I knew I could and she wasn't fast enough to pull away, but she did not look angry as I pulled back. No, she just smiled, as we continued downstairs to get something to eat. Cecilia. I stood in the walk-in closet, turning from side to side, not sure if I liked this dress. I so rarely wore dresses anymore. It just felt wrong, and it was so long, going down all the way to the floor, with an open slit by my left leg. It looked good, but I was just not used to it anymore. It had a dark blue color, and it would shine a little when it caught the light. I had put my hair up into a high ponytail and made a few small braids that became part of the ponytail. I wore a little mascara and eyeliner, but I was not used to wearing makeup, so I didn't want to overdo it. Knock. Knock. Coming. I said before I quickly put on my black high heels. I walked over to my bedroom door and then opened it, seeing Lucian looking so good in his black suit. Even his shirt was black, and I was close to just pulling him into my room, so we could stay here all night and not go to some stupid party. Wow. He said. What? 
It looks ugly, doesn't it? I knew it. I am going to change and just wear my usual clothes. I was about to walk away when he grabbed my arm, shaking his head. No, I meant wow, you're beautiful. He said. So damn beautiful. Oh. He smiled at me, and I couldn't help but smile back. You're playing with fire, I ignored my wolf. She had not liked what I had started with Lucian. She feared it would turn into more, and maybe she was right, but after I had taken some time of, I had really gotten a chance to just focus on myself, and I wasn't so scared anymore. I couldn't say I would ever accept Lucian, but I was not as scared to spend time with him. Thank you. I said. You look really good too. I know. He teased me. I shook my head and rolled my eyes. You ready for this? I shook my head. No. Are you? I just want to run away. He admitted. Okay, where are we going? I asked. You're coming with me? Well, I have taken some time of and I don't really have somewhere else to be. So, where do you want to go? I asked, playing along with our little game. Lucian's smile grew bigger, and he wrapped his arms around my waist, pulling me closer. I was thinking somewhere more south. Mexico? I bet we could disappear there. Your brother would never find us. I said. Sounds good. Do you start packing? He asked me. Sure. Something important do you want to bring? He shook his head. I just need you. I could feel my heart starting to beat faster, as he said this. I could barely breathe, as he looked at me with those wonderful green eyes that seemed to carry so much depth. Come on, you two lovebirds. We have a party to get to. Lucian and I looked down the hallway, seeing James smile at us, just as Lara came to join him. Oh, they looked so good together. Like you could just see in how sync they were, and how much they loved each other. I had really fucked up when I judged the two of them, not even knowing what had happened. I should not have let my own feelings get the best of me, but they often did. Let's do this. Lucian said as they walked by us. My lady. Lucian pulled back and then held out his arm. You're so goofy. I said and took his arm. Hey, I will do anything to see you smile. He told me. I rolled my eyes, but inside of me, my heart was beating like crazy, just clinging to every word he said. You should end it. I didn't answer my wolf as we walked through the house. It will end badly. We will lose another pup. I knew my wolf had really taken the hit. I was hurt, but she was damaged after everything that had happened. First, she was ripped from Nolan's wolf, and then we lost our child. Nolan had not cheated on me until the night I had found him. I believed he wanted me to. It was a way to weaken the bond, and I believed that was why he found it so easy to reject me. He had already betrayed me, so the bond had taken quite the hit, but I had not stopped loving him. That was why it had hurt me so much. I couldn't say if he did not feel any pain at all, but I had taken the greater hit because my feelings for him were still there. He had already given up on us. He had already stopped loving me. Hey, not getting cold feet, are you? Lucian asked as he held the car door open for me. I had barely noticed we had gotten out of the house and were already by the car. No, I said and shook my head. If you are, you can tell me. I won't force you to this. He said, placing his hand on my lower back. We were going in our own car, so we could go home whenever we wanted to without having to worry about the others. And instead, be killed by your brother? No, I think I can handle this. I said. I know what he said, but you know I would never let him get close to you, right? I smiled and nodded, taking his hand and squeezing it. Of course. I said. You trust me? He asked. In a strange way, I kind of did, and I knew he saw it in my eyes. I just want you to know we can leave whenever you want to. He said. I know, and same with you. I am not sure my brother will let me leave. You think he will keep you trapped? 
I asked. Lucian nodded. At least until the party is over. I am sure he is going to tell everyone what a big liar I am and embarrass me. Liar? Think about it. I never told anyone he was alive, but that he died with my parents. He will make it seem like I am the villain tonight, who wanted the pack for myself. He explained. But you gave it up. It won't matter. He said. I still lied. That's not fair. No, but that is my brother. He knows how to manipulate people. Lucian said. I squeezed his hand harder. I won't let him hurt you like this. I said. You will defend me? He asked a bit teasingly. I nodded. If I have to. I am tougher than I look. I know, Wildcat. He said. Let's just go, and let's get this night over with. I couldn't agree more. He said and kissed my temple before I got in the car. He closed the door, and then walked to the other side, getting in the driver's seat, and then turning on the car, before we sped out of there, going to the party that would surely be one big disaster. Lucian. The party had already started when we arrived, and I could see many of the others were there too. The king and queen, Evan and Maddie, Celine and Ryder. They all looked so tense and for good reason, but what I was surprised about was the fact that Rick and Andrew were there too. What the hell were they doing here? What's wrong? I turned to Cecilia, who was looking at me concerned. I hadn't told her about Rick, nor had I told Rick about her. I hadn't seen him for a while. That was the way between us. We just fucked and then didn't really speak, and I was fine with that. I had never before ever thought I should explain myself to anyone. I made things clear from the beginning, but Cecilia had kind of come out of the blue, and now I had to explain to Rick that we weren't going to continue whatever it was we did, but honestly, I didn't think it would be the hugest loss for him. We both knew who he truly wanted. Eh, there might be something I haven't told you, I said. About your brother? I shook my head. You know I have a past. I said. She nodded. We all do. She said. I kind of have one with Rick. Cecilia looked over to where Rick was and then turned to me. Feelings involved or. I shook my head, and yet I wasn't sure, but it almost seemed like I sensed a little jealousy from my mate. She would not admit it, I knew that, but it was good to know she felt possessive over me. I didn't think she would ever become crazy jealous, but it was good to know she wanted me all to herself. Aha. Uh -huh. She said, sounding a little bit annoyed. Something wrong? I teased. No, no, of course, not. She said. I smiled, but then saw my brother further away, waving us closer. I sighed, not liking this one bit, but I knew we had to go over there. Just stay close. I said. Like I was going to run. You like running? I leaned closer and whispered. She smiled at me but didn't deny or agree with what I said. I led us over to where Layden was. He was standing together with Andrew and Rick, and I could already feel like this was going to go wrong very fast. I had only just gotten a chance to explain myself to Cecilia, but not Rick. Ah, uh, there you are, brother, he said. And bringing your mate with you as I ask. Rick turned to me, but he was good at hiding his feelings. Even though I knew he was shocked, he did not really show it. You could only see it in his eyes. There was something there almost like hurt. I knew he didn't really have feelings for me, but I knew he valued honesty. He didn't like secrets, and who really did? But it was not that I tried keeping things a secret. I had just been distracted. Yes, we are here, I said. Great party. And yet neither of you are drinking anything, my brother said. He quickly waved a waiter over and handed us our drinks, but Cecilia and I just glanced at each other, not sure if we could trust what was in this. Oh, come on, my brother said. You think I would poison you? Yes, I said honestly. My brother smiled pleased. Glad you still know me so well, but no deaths tonight. I promise, he said and held up one of his hands, the other one holding onto his drink. I am not sure I believe you. I told him. I mean, 
If I really wanted to steer things up, I would just invite Andrew's father. Have you talked to him recently? Landon had timed it so well, that just when Andrew was taking a sip of his drink, he mentioned his father, and it made Andrew choke on his drink. I looked at him shocked. His father? Who was his father? Maybe I should have. I did consider it. Does he know where you are? Landon asked. I saw right through my brother. He knew a lot more than I thought and used that information to play with us tonight. He wanted us to feel how vulnerable we were, and I could see he was getting to Andrew, because he was turning white as a sheet, looking actually terrified, and that said something. I had not seen Andrew or Rick scared ever, but Andrew didn't say a word before he quickly walked away, like fire was chasing him. Great. I heard Rick mumble, as he glared at Landon. Did I say something wrong? Landon asked. Rick just shook his head and went after Andrew, as my brother turned to us. Oh, I see, I hit a sore spot. I glared at my brother, who just smiled. At least now you know that I didn't come here empty-handed, he said. Working together with Andrew's father? I asked. My brother started to laugh and shake his head. I don't need to work together with anyone. Why do you think I only came out of hiding after Connor was taken care of? I can get what I want just fine on my own because it isn't about muscles or numbers that give you power, it's the mind, brother. You see, people often have a way of ruining their lives all on their own. All it takes is a little nudge, a small secret, and you can see their world crumbling, he said. You just like to watch the world burn, don't you? I asked. He nodded. I love it, he corrected, before he turned to Cecilia. Cecilia wasn't scared and I was proud of my mate who just looked my brother right in the eyes. Landon smiled, liking it too. You're a feisty one, aren't you? He asked. I can be a bitch, yes. She said. My brother chuckled and then turned to me and nodded as if he approved of my choice. He took a sip of his drink and then turned to my mate again. But even a bitch has her secrets, he said. Really? Oh, indeed. And what are yours, little one? He asked. I turned to my mate. Don't tell him anything. I said. Don't worry. I am not scared. Cecilia said. Really? Have you been honest with my brother? We aren't so close that a secret would matter. She said instead. I think you're wrong about that. Why else would you be here? Because you threatened to kill me. She said. Landon shook his head. We both know you're here because of my brother. If you only cared about yourself, you wouldn't have come with him. You would perhaps come on your own or come find me before the party, telling me to go burn in the underworld, he said. No, you came with him, because you care. Cecilia narrowed her eyes, not liking the way my brother was getting to her. Okay, that is enough. I said and grabbed her arm. Let's go. Wait, but I am not done, he said. Has she been honest with you, brother? There is nothing you could tell me that would make me change my mind about her. My brother turned to Cecilia. Isn't there? He asked her, as if he truly knew what it was she was hiding. I understood we all had our secrets. I was not mad about that, but the way my little mate suddenly paled, made me wonder what it was my brother knew. Weeks, am I right? He asked. Was that a code? But whatever it meant, made Cecilia back of and suddenly take of like Andrew had. That's great. I growled at my brother. What? He asked innocently. I shook my head, about to go look for my mate, when my brother grabbed my arm. Let's talk privately, he said. When I have checked on my mate. You have got five minutes. Better hurry. And then my brother walked past me, looking like he had just come out victorious in a bloody battle. Maybe in a way he had. Lucian. I found Cecilia at this bar outside, drinking together with Andrew, and both of them looking like crap. Rick stood beside Andrew clearly trying to calm him down, but whatever Landon had said to Andrew and Cecilia, it had shaken them like crazy. I walked up to my mate, placing my hand on her lower back, and she quickly turned to me. I told you to stay close. Sorry, I. What happened in there? I asked. She shook her head and just downed her drink. Your brother is an ass, that's what happened. She said. Yeah, I am aware, but the only reason he has power over you right now is because you have secrets. I said. 
She turned to me, looking so angry. What? Am I supposed to share everything with you now? She asked. I shook my head. No, of course, you aren't. You are allowed your secrets, but think about it, Cecilia. That is the way he gains power. I said. My brother likes to play with people and strike hard without barely lifting a finger. He is right. People have a way of ruining their lives just fine on their own. He barely has to do anything. He just has to push a little and the domino effect starts. Cecilia might not like what I was saying, but she knew I was right, and I could see it on her face. She sighed and turned to the bar again, getting the bartender to make her another drink. I have to go see my brother. Don't go anywhere, and if you do stay with the people we know, I said. You are going to see him? Alone? She asked. I nodded. I have to. Lucian, he is a psychopath. She said. I am aware. I said. You can't be alone with him. She grabbed my arm, afraid to let me go. I am sorry, but I have to. I will come back quickly, I promise. He won't kill me. I said. How can you be so sure? She asked. Because he already has what he wanted. The pack and the house. I am another thing he wants, but not dead. I said. I don't like it. I will be back soon. I said and kissed her forehead. Don't go anywhere. She nodded and I quickly took of. But just as I had come inside again, Rick called out to me. I turned and saw him coming closer, having that same neutral expression as always. So a mate? He asked. I'm sorry. I meant to tell you, but... But your brother got in the way. I nodded. Rick sighed and looked away for a moment, before turning to me. You should have warned me, he said. I sighed too, shaking my head a little. I know, but I just I got busy, and we haven't seen each other for a little while. I said. It is not like I knew this would happen. You know your brother, he said. Yes, but but all of this, Cecilia, me moving, my brother coming back, I had no idea it would all happen so quickly. He nodded, understanding that. I am sorry, I said and walked closer to him. But I think we both know who it is you truly want. Rick looked behind him to where Andrew and Cecilia were standing, drinking together but not talking. I wish it was that simple, he whispered, before turning to me. But I will never have him. I understood. I hadn't asked, but I was pretty sure that Andrew was not into males, and I knew that Rick was the one who had feelings for him. I just hadn't realized how deep they were until tonight. I could see it in his eyes. He loved his best friend, and not just as a best friend. He wanted more. Something deeper. He wanted them to truly be together. Maybe even as mates. That was how deep the love I saw was. Hopefully, you will find your mate soon, I said. Rick just shook his head but didn't say anything. I will keep an eye on yours, he told me. Thank you, I said and placed my hand on his shoulder. And I am sorry for not telling you. I was going to. Landon just got to it first. He nodded, accepting my apology. Go, before he comes looking for you. I smiled at him and then left quickly tracking down my brother. He was not hard to find. He had closed of this part of the house, placing two huge wolves in front of the doors, leading into a small living room. I opened one of the doors, went inside, and saw my brother had already made himself comfortable, sitting on a couch in front of an unlit fireplace. It also had a TV hanging above it. He had his drink in his hand and smiled as he saw me. I almost thought you wouldn't make it, he said and then looked at his watch. But he arrives just in time. You said five minutes. So, five minutes it took, I said. You're just afraid I would do something to your mate. You already have, I said. What, did I say something? Don't do that. You know you brought up something she did not want to talk about, I said. You know what you did to her and Andrew, I merely implied a few things, he said. 
and it made him scared. He chuckled, looking so happy with himself. It is just so easy, you see, he said. I have been watching for a long time. I mean, do you even know who your mate is? I am aware of who she is. I said. Then do you know what her past is like? We all have a past. I said. And skeletons in the closet. Don't you want to know hers? He asked. I shook my head. Only if she wants to tell me. I said. Noble, brother, you were always so forgiving. He said. I just understood that playing with people's feelings gives you a very lonely life because no one wants to be around you. I said. Are you saying I am lonely? I shook my head. I think you actually prefer to be alone. I said. Landon smiled. You just know me so well, brother. You are the only one who ever got me. He said and stood up. I want us to be family again. I don't want to be. I said. Come now, Luke. He said. We are brothers. We have been since we started to exist. Landon, I don't want us to be family. Not when you were threatening the one that I have. I said. Not when you play with the people I care about. My brother began to nod as if he understood all the reasons why I never wanted us to be brothers again, but I knew he didn't really. Landon always got what he wanted, and he never asked people to give it to him. He just took. I understand, he said. But to show you that I care about you, brother, and that I want us to start anew and work together, I am going to give you something. What? I am going to give you what you so clearly want and are desperate to have, but can't get yourself, he said. I looked at my brother confused, not sure what he meant, because I couldn't come up with something that I knew I wanted that I couldn't get myself, but then behind me the door suddenly opened. Cecilia. I didn't like Lucian leaving me I mean I didn't like Lucian going to see his brother. It was dangerous and after what just happened I mean he was insane. Landon could already be doing all sorts of cruel things to his brother, and it pained me so much to think about. If you're worried about him, why don't you go after him? I turned my head and looked at Andrew, who just glanced at me. He looked more like a MES than I, but soon his friend came to join us. Rick patted his shoulder a few times, and it was clear it had a calming effect on Andrew. These two were very close. I wasn't sure how close. I didn't know that much about them, except Rick, who had slept with Lucian. Had Andrew too? No, then Lucian would have told me, right? We're keeping secrets from him to how many don't you think he has? My wolf might have a point. We all had our secrets. More the reason not to trust him. I don't like what you have begun. No, I knew it would all just become very messy, but I couldn't help it. Lucian just drew me in like no other. It was wrong for me to keep it up though. It was wrong for me to even come here tonight. Landon was right. I could have gone to see him myself, but I decided to come with Lucian. I couldn't keep this up. I needed to leave. Hey, where are you going? Rick asked as I started to walk away. Just leave me alone, I said. I hurried inside, but just as I turned a corner, coming out of the big living room, I ran into the last person I had ever wanted to see again. Nolan. I looked up into those dark brown eyes that I had loved so much once, but now that I looked at them, I just felt pure and undeniable rage. I hated him. I hated him so much, and yet yet I couldn't tell him that. I wanted to tell him how much I hated him, but no words came out. I just stared at him. Cecilia. I took a step back because he was still touching me. He had reached out to stable me, as I ran into him, and I didn't like him touching me now. What are you doing here? He asked. What are you doing here? I am an alpha. He said. And you're? A beta, I said. As I have always been. So, it is true? You actually got that title? He asked. I was born to be one, I said. But we both know you never really fit into the role. He said. I gasped, feeling his words still slicing me so deep as they did back when I was bound to him. He just said it so easily, and like it meant nothing, but it meant everything to me. I had worked hard to become the person I was today. It just hurt he still saw that small wolf I once was. 
And this party is for alphas and lunas, so what are you doing here again? He asked. I, I looked away, and then suddenly someone came up beside Nolan, wrapping her arms around his left arm. There she was the one who he had betrayed me for. The one who could make him an alpha and bring him the status he wanted, and not drag him down like I had. I turned to look at the two of them, just feeling like my heart was being ripped out of my chest all over again. Well, well, what do we have here? Crystal asked. I remember you. Good for you. I just said coldly. Don't speak to her like that. Nolan said. And how should I speak to her? I asked. You left me for her. You knew we weren't compatible. He said. Then why mark me? Nolan just shrugged. I was just waiting. Waiting? I asked. For something better to come along, of course. He said and turned to his mate, who smiled at him, and I just felt disgusted as I looked at them. You are unbelievable. I whispered. Have you any idea the pain you caused me? Nolan didn't seem to care, and neither did Crystal. He just shrugged, as if it didn't matter. Come now, you're still standing. He said. Not thanks to you. Nolan rolled his eyes and Crystal just looked bored. Have you any idea, Cecilia, the pain you caused me? He asked. I sensed he wasn't talking about the rejection because he had walked out of there looking fine. I couldn't say something hadn't happened to him afterwards though. Being trapped with someone like you. Someone so far beneath me. He said. That is fucking painful. I tightened my hands into tight fists, feeling so much anger, and yet I didn't throw that anger into his face. I should, but somehow seeing him again, just turned me back into that person I had been before. The little one, who would do anything to please him just so he would see I was worthy of being with him. Just come to the realization that you two never fit together, Crystal said. We were true mates. I whispered. And, she asked. Sometimes the goddess makes mistakes, and she did this time. This one really had no idea what she was talking about. Challenging the goddess like that, she definitely had no respect for the bond or the gifts it could provide. I just shook my head at the two of them, feeling glad I was no longer a part of Nolan's life. She's right, Cecilia. Realize you will just never be good enough to be my... Luna. We all turned as someone called out Luna. Not a lot was in the hallway with us, so it was easy to find the source of the voice. Behind us stood a member of this pack. Clearly, a fighter and his eyes were on me. What did you just call her? Your presence is requested by the Alpha. He told me. Wait, Landon? Nolan asked and I turned to him. I shook my head. Never would I ever act like I was that crazy person's mate, even to rub it into Nolan's face. No, Lucian. I said. His twin brother. Nolan stared at me shocked, and I could see he had never expected me to find another Alpha. Maybe he had never even expected me to find another mate. I felt a little good about seeing that stupid look on his face, but there was no time to rub it in. Now that I had a chance to see Lucian, I forgot all about my escape. I just needed to make sure he was all right. Though it did confuse me why the pack member had referred to me as Luna, but then I started to put two and two together. Lucian had said his brother wanted him, but not dead, and I realized his brother wanted the two of them to rule together, which technically then made me Luna. That was weird to think about, but I didn't let it distract me. I just looked at Nolan and Crystal one more time, lifting my chin in the air, and showing them that I would not let them step all over me again. If you will excuse me, I have to go see my mate. I said, and then turned on my heel, feeling ten times better than I had in a long time. Lucian. I watched, scared, as Cecilia was being led into the room. Her eyes landed on me right away though, and she quickly walked over to me. I was standing not that far from Landon, who slowly took a seat again on the couch. I really didn't like where this was going, and I got even more worried, as the pack members from outside the door joined us in the room. Are you okay? She quickly asked and placed her hands on my arms, as she looked me over. 
I wished I could have enjoyed hearing her concern for me, but I was too worried at the moment. Oh, how sweet, my brother said. You know I must say you two are perfect together. What is it that you want? I asked him. Me, no, no, this is for you brother, he said. Landon. Come on, you're dying to have her, he said. Cecilia turned a little so she could look at Landon too, and I could see the way she was glaring at him, probably wishing him dead as much as me. And I bet she really wants to rub it into her former mate's face, that she has now found herself a keeper. I can telephone you little beta, you won't find anyone better than my brother, Landon said. Why are you doing this? She asked. What is it I am doing? He asked her, playing with her. Just tell us what you want so we can leave. I said. You know I don't really feel like you are very appreciative of my present, he said. Present? I just looked at Landon confused, not understanding at all where he was going with this. Exactly, you, brother, are going to mark her right here and right now, he said. I just stared at my brother, my brain not able to process his words, because what he was saying was more insane than anything I had ever heard come out of his mouth. I couldn't mark her. Not here. Not like this. I mean, it was clear Cecilia wasn't ready to accept me, so it would be a forced marking, and that was like the deepest violation ever. I would never do that to her. No! I quickly said. Well, either you mark her or... Landon pulled out a gun from his jacket and rested it on his thigh. I pulled Cecilia closer, blocking her with my body. Are you insane? I shouted. Brother, I am helping, he said. Helping? How? I am giving you what you are so desperate for, but aren't willing to just take, he said. I am not like you. I don't just take, I shouted. But you should, you will see how easy things are then. Just mark her and I will let you go, he said. I shook my head. Never. Then I will just kill her, he said. I mean come on, it is clear this one is too scared to take the chance. You will be miserable no matter what. I am just speeding up the process, so you and I can go back to being brothers. You think this will make me want to be your brother again? I asked. I think once she has your mark on her, she will quickly come to realize that this dancing around, sleeping around with you, not addressing the real issue, is all pointless, he said. She just needs a push. You both do. Landon. I growled deeply. Lucian, come on, he said. You know you want to, and so does she. He leaned a little to the side so he could see Cecilia, and I growled as his green eyes landed on her. The same kind of green eyes that I had, but I would never look at her like she was a toy. Like he was right now. You know you want to, little beta, he said. You know the only thing stopping you is your fear that my brother is the same and will leave you all alone and pregnant. Pregnant? I asked, confused, and turned to Cecilia, but she was looking at the ground in front of her. My brain quickly went into overdrive, trying to connect the dots, and it wasn't long before I understood what my brother had taunted Cecilia with earlier tonight. I just I could barely believe it. You were pregnant? I asked her. She looked away this time, not wanting to answer me. Stop. Okay. Cecilia said and took a step forward. Just stop. My brother smiled, as my little mate turned to me and I saw the devastating look in her eyes. I hated the sight of it, and I just wished we could be alone right now, so we could talk this out. Pregnant but I hadn't heard Cecilia had a child. Where was the child? Had she given it up? Had she lost it? What had happened? And did her former mate now? I had so many questions, but now was not the time. Just do it. She whispered suddenly. What? No, I said. Cecilia grabbed harder onto me, and then looked so determined. Do it, or he will kill me or just do it. She said. Not like this, I said. I want you. But I am not forcing you. It is either this or me dead. She said. Don't listen to him, okay? We will figure something else out. I said. Tick-tock, my brother yelled. I am getting bored. Lucian. Do it. She said lowly but hard. It's okay. Her voice turned a little softer, 
and she gave me a small smile. Just do it. She whispered. No. Lucian. My brother sighed, disappointed, but then lifted the gun, pointing it at Cecilia. No. I shouted and pushed her behind me again. No. I shouted and pushed her behind me again. You two aren't getting out of here and I can just have you removed and get a clear shot. Don't think you can stop me. He told me. I knew I couldn't. That was why there were now more people in here. So, that I wouldn't stand a chance against him. Lucian. Cecilia placed her hand on my shoulder and turned me towards her. She gave me a small smile. Just do it. She said. I don't want it to be like this. Sometimes we don't get to choose. Just please do it. She whispered. I knew she wasn't just doing this for herself. She did it for me. I would be crushed if she died, or maybe we would never be allowed to leave. Maybe my brother would find another way to force me to mark her. He was crazy. There was no telling what he could do. Cecilia lifted her hand to the top of her dress and pushed the strap down that went over her marking spot. It's okay. She whispered again. Go on. I really didn't want it to be like this. I whispered. I know. I was hesitant, but every time I stopped, I looked over at my brother still holding the gun, and it forced me closer and closer to her until my lips touched her sweet skin, and my taste buds hummed at the taste of her. I felt my canines grow longer, but it took a moment before I could force myself to do what I had to. I opened my mouth and then sank my canines as gently as I could into her shoulder. She hissed and jerked against me, but I held onto her tightly until the pain went away and she felt nothing but the sweet pleasure of my mark. I didn't stay connected with her for too long. Not as long as I wanted. Not as long as my instincts demanded, but I did get a chance to taste her sweet blood, making me feel so hungry for another taste. I licked the wound, helping it close, but there was no feeling of happiness inside of me seeing it. I hated myself for it. There. I whispered and pulled back to look at my brother because I couldn't look at my mate. I didn't want to see the anger and resentment in her eyes. Now let us go. In a moment, now you, he said and gestured to Cecilia, who looked at my brother, before turning to me. I saw her eyes glistening a little, but there was no way she would allow herself to cry before she was alone. You don't have. Ah, oh, my brother said. She does. We need to complete this or it won't be enough. I wasn't sure what my brother was talking about, but Cecilia quickly moved her hands to my tie and loosened it before opening the buttons of my shirt, and then pushed it away together with the jacket until my marking spot was revealed to her. She didn't hesitate as much as I and just bit down hard, making me as a little in pain before the most unbelievable feeling went through me. I had never before felt such pure bliss and power go through me as when I connected with my little mate completely feeling what she was feeling. We were one now. The moment was broken as my brother suddenly clapped. Cecilia pulled back and I saw her lips coated a little with my blood. I quickly turned to my brother, who had put the gun away and looked so satisfied. Now, welcome to the family, Cecilia. It's wonderful to have you. Cecilia didn't look at my brother as she just turned on her heel and walked out of there. Landon looked at me, still smiling but I slowly shook my head, leaving the room to, no one stopping us. Lucian. I quickly followed behind Cecilia, not wanting to lose sight of her, because I had a strange idea that if I did, then she would disappear completely. I was afraid this would make her run further and faster than she had ever run before. I was able to catch up to her though, just as we were getting closer to the door, and I grabbed her arm, pulling her back. Wait! I said and turned her to me. She quickly pulled away from me and I could understand why. I had never seen this coming. I had never thought my brother would actually force me to mark her. It had seemed like to me that he wanted me all to himself. The two powerful twin alphas together, but now Cecilia was marked by me. Could it be he had done that so he could control me? Now that we were bound, like truly bound together, if something happened to her, then it would completely destroy me. Just let me go, she said. Listen, I am so sorry. Don't it's not your fault. I allowed it to get so far. 
I said. And what would you have done? She asked. Killed him? I should have. He would have killed me first and did it occur to you that he might have people watching your family? She asked and gestured to the people further away. Maybe he was going to kill them too. You don't know that. That is why you're playing this game with him. You need to figure out just how much power he has, so you can take him down without having to watch your family burn again. I knew she was right, but had it already cost me, my mate? I wanted to give Cecilia space and time to accept me, but now time was up. Cecilia. I heard someone laugh loudly, and we both turned, looking into the living room where most people were gathered, and that also led out into the garden. I turned to Cecilia again, when I saw nothing interesting, but then I saw her still staring at the couple that had been laughing. I turned to look at them again, and I slowly realized who it was. That's him? I asked and looked at her. Cecilia turned to me, looking almost scared now, and then shook her head. I don't know what you mean. She said and looked down. Do you know when you're lying you look down? I told her. She looked up, just shaking her head a little. Let it go, Lucian. I shook my head. Fuck no. He left you while you were pregnant. I said. Nolan is an asshole, nothing can change that. She said. No need to use your energy on it. Did he know? Cecilia sighed. Let it go, Lucian. She said. Cecilia, tell me. Did he know? No. And I don't want him to. She said. I will fucking kill him. I was about to turn away when she grabbed my arm and held me back. I just told you he didn't know. How can it piece you of more? She asked. Because as your mate he should have known. I growled. How? Did you and he not spend your heat together not long before you found out you were pregnant? I asked. She slowly nodded and let me go. Then if he was a real alpha and actually had some common sense, he would have figured out if you were pregnant before risking the life of his baby and you. I growled. Or maybe he already knew and wanted to hurt you and the baby. He is a dick, but not a monster. Are you sure? I asked. She seemed hesitant, and that was enough for me. Good to know. I walked away, and I heard her call out to me. Lucian. Where the hell are you going? I didn't listen to her, as I stormed right over to this Nolan, ready to fucking choke the guy. I realized I had met him before. I had never talked to the guy, but I had seen him at a party or two. Never gave him much thought, but now I was ready to spill blood. I knew I wasn't thinking clearly. Because of everything that had happened, I shouldn't be getting into fights right now, but that was exactly what I did. Nolan barely got a chance to look at me, before I punched him so fucking hard he fell backwards, tumbling into another person behind him. People gasped shocked, but I didn't give them a chance to overcome the shock before I grabbed Nolan by the collar of his jacket and then punched him over and over. You fucking piece of shit. I growled. Lucian. Stop. I felt someone trying to grab me, but I pushed them away, as I continued to hit Nolan over and over, not caring if I did any permanent damage. He deserved it all after everything he had put Cecilia through. He deserved to have his face permanently changed forever. Lucian. That's enough. I felt someone stronger grab onto me this time, pulling me away, but it took at least three of the others before they were able to get me of Nolan. I was so angry. My wolf was so angry. The thought of Cecilia all alone and losing her baby without having anyone to support her made me lose my mind because she was my mate now. She should never have been treated like this. That's enough. The king got in my face, finally distracting me from the bloody MES I had left on the floor. I just looked at the king for a long time, before I finally looked down, showing him I was surrendering. He shook his head, looking so angry, but when I turned away from the group, I saw Landon standing further away, silently clapping his hands and telling me well done without words. I walked over to him, while the rest took care of Nolan. I did not care if he lived or died at the moment. I just placed myself in front of my brother. 
Was this what you wanted to prove? I asked him. That I can be a monster too? We aren't so different, brother, he said. But we are. I don't manipulate people. No, you just change their faces forever, he said and gestured to the huge burn scar on his face. He deserved it. I didn't say he didn't, but this won't really make your mate like you more, will it? I mean where is she? He asked. I looked around, but I couldn't find Cecilia anywhere. Shit. Maybe if you hurry, you might be able to stop her from leaving you forever. Do you want us to work together or destroy me? I asked him. I haven't decided yet. What? You need to make a decision first, he said. Once you have, I will make mine. You're sick, brother. Always have been. Sick? No, I would say ambitious. You just like watching things burn. I whispered. Because they burn so prettily, he told me and smiled. Now, don't you have a mate to chase down? I shook my head a little, before looking over my shoulder, looking at the MES I was leaving behind, but I didn't really care. Lucian. When I came back, the house was dark and silent. I walked upstairs all the way to where Cecilia's room was, and then I placed myself in front of the door. I knew she was in there. I could feel it. It was strange suddenly being so connected to someone else. I had never imagined it felt like this. Almost like a tugging, but I could also feel pain, and I knew it wasn't mine. I held up my hand, ready to knock, but then lowered it again. I grabbed the handle and pulled it down, and then opened the door. Cecilia? I looked around the empty room, before suddenly seeing the door to the bathroom opening, and saw her coming out in a thin black robe that didn't cover her much. She had clearly showered and gotten herself ready for bed, but when she saw me, she looked at me with so much anger. What are you doing here? She asked. Let's talk. I said and closed the door behind me. We have nothing to talk about. She shouted. We do. No. We don't. So, get out. She said and walked closer, looking like she was ready to throw me out if she had to, but I just took a step closer to her, meeting her head on. He deserved it. I said. You were going to kill him. And you don't think he deserved that too? I asked. You're not your brother. She shouted at me. You're fucking right I am not, but that doesn't mean such a fucking bastard should go unpunished. I told her. But I told you I didn't want him to know. Good thing I didn't say anything. But don't you think this will become a whole case? She asked me. You don't think his family will want you punished? Let them. You're crazy. She said. No, I am just showing them that no one treats my mate like that. Can you not hear yourself? She asked. One night with your brother and you are suddenly a different person. Or maybe it is the secret you kept from me that changed me, I said. Oh, so it is my fault. My brother is right. Secrets destroy people. I have kept quite a big one too, and look where it has gotten me. I told her. Cecilia shook her head, looking so damn disappointed at me. Get out. No, I said. We aren't done. Lucian, we are done. She said and walked closer to me, trying to push me, but I grabbed her wrists, shaking my head. You can't reject me now, I said. Watch me. She growled lowly. I smiled a little because I suddenly realized what I was feeling from her end of the bond wasn't just anger, it was lust. We were fully mated now, and we couldn't help but react to each other. Go ahead then, I challenged. She looked at me for a long time clearly trying to get the words out, but failing. I can do it. I am waiting. I told her. You alphas. Al the same. You're wrong because I would never fucking leave you. I told her. I would never leave you or a child. Just stop. You don't know what you would do. You could still change your mind. Never. I will never change my mind. When will you hear me? I shouted. You're mine, Cecilia, and I take care of what is mine. She looked at me shocked. My brother might have forced this to go a little faster, but I am not sad that I have marked you. 
I know that sounds awful, but I am only sad about how it happened. I want you, and I want you for the rest of my life. I told her. Lucian. I am not changing my mind, because little mate, you might be driving me crazy, but it seems to only make me want you more. A long pause happened between us, and then we were both reaching for the other. Our lips found each other, and things turned so heated, as clothes went flying, and she pushed me towards her bed. I sat down on it, still wearing my pants when she got on her knees before me and then, desperately got my pants opened and I helped get them afar enough, so my hard cock sprang free, and then she didn't hesitate, as she took me far into her mouth before she started to move her head up and down. Shit, it felt like she craved me with such desperation I had never felt before. I could feel it in the bond. She might hate I went after Nolan, but a part of her loved it too, and now she just wanted to please me, and fuck she pleased me. The sweet sucking of her mouth had me thrusting my hips upwards, and I grabbed onto her hair, pushing her further down, and she just let me fuck her mouth, before coming hard and releasing into her throat. Fuck, I could feel how much it turned her on to see me lose such control, and I quickly pulled her up from the floor and got her down on the bed, before I quickly undressed, throwing the rest of my clothes away, and then spread her legs wide, exposing her sweet pussy to me, before I leaned down and gave it a long lick. She let out a small scream, before she grabbed hard onto my hair, as I went to suck on her clit. Oh shit, yes, Lucian. She moaned as I continued to drive her faster and faster towards her edge. She was practically dripping into my mouth when I pulled away. She whimpered displeased when she felt the orgasm draw back a little, but I didn't let her wait for long. I had legs over my shoulder as I speared inside of her, hearing just how sweet she could sound when she was stuffed full with my cock and her pussy, and then I didn't hold back. I fuck her hard and fast, the bed moving and banging against the wall, and she came with a scream before I lowered her legs, having her wrap them around me, as I leaned down and kissed her while continuing to move my hips, making sure the pleasure never stopped. Why are you doing this to me? She whispered, but it didn't sound like a question. We're mates. Say it. I commanded. Lucian. I reached between us and stroked her clit, until she was coming again, and squeezing my cock tightly her inner walls rippling around me and trying to milk the cum from my balls, but I did not let go yet. Say it. Lucian. I drove her towards another orgasm, my little mate so sensitive now, and she screamed, almost trying to get away from me a little, because it was so intense for her, but I continued to fuck her, before I pulled out and turned her around, having her up on all fours. Then I was inside her again, grabbing her hair hard, and pulling her head back, as I bit her neck. I didn't bite through the skin, but it was a warning of the fact I could if I wanted to. Say it. We're mates. So, I can hear you mean it. I told her. We're mates. She said, as she pushed back, meaning me thrust after thrust, and only hungry for more of what I could give. Don't you dare forget it. I told her. I grabbed her hip hard knowing I would leave bruises, and then circled her throat with my other hand before I, this time, bit her through the skin, marking her like I should have marked her. In privacy and just for us. She screamed and I felt her pleasure running through my own body, demanding I came with her, and so I did, thrusting into her one more time and then shooting all my cum inside of her, loving the fact she would only be mine from now on. No one could take her from me. I wouldn't allow it. Cecilia. After two intense rounds of mating, both of us needed a break. I was lying halfway up on Lucian, enjoying the feeling of him stroking my back with the tip of his fingers. It felt so damn good. I felt calm around Lucian. Now that we had marked each other, there wasn't much reason to fight the bond anymore, and I just allowed it to pulse happily between us without trying to shut him off. I could feel his feelings for me. How deep they already were and I knew when he said he wasn't leaving me, he actually meant it. He couldn't lie to me now that we were so connected. I still don't regret doing it. He whispered. It was stupid. I told him and looked up at him, but we were both smiling. Maybe. He said. No, it was, but I kind of don't regret you doing it either. I told him. 
His smile grew, and he just continued to stroke my skin, making me feel so good. Even my wolf was humming in pleasure inside of me. Now that we were completely connected to Lucian, she hadn't really been able to shut his wolf out, and it seemed like she was slowly just accepting our fate too. I wasn't sure what the future would bring, but I don't remember ever feeling like this. At first, everything had seemed so perfect with Nolan, but now that I was with Lucian I realized, things weren't perfect, not even from the beginning. Our bond had lacked something from the moment he marked me. He really deserved it. Lucian said. Leaving you like that? We all have messed up people in our lives. I said. I am messed up too. Then we can be messed up together. He said. I like that idea. We smiled at each other and everything just felt so perfect at that moment. I'm sorry for everything you went through and how alone you were, but I mean it when I say I wouldn't leave you or our child. He said. You want that? What? A family? I asked. He nodded. So fucking much. I lost one so early, and I really want to create one of my own. Don't you? He asked. I promised myself I would never want it again. I told him, and he looked worried. But you're slowly making me change my mind. A smile spread on his lips, and I could feel how happy he was from hearing I wanted a family too. But first we take care of your brother. I won't have our child growing up with a sick uncle like that. I told him. That's fair. He chuckled. What was your family like? I asked. Besides your crazy brother. Well, my uncle and aunt were just as crazy. He said. My uncle liked to run some illegal shit, drugs and such, and those trying to stop him he made me take care of. Fuck Lucian. Lucian just shook his head, not wanting to talk about it. My aunt almost tried selling me to her friends when I grew older, he told me. What, don't worry, I never let that happen, but if I hadn't said no and also been so busy working for my uncle, she would definitely have used me. That's sick. I told him. My aunt almost tried selling me to her friends when I grew older. He told me. What, don't worry. I never let that happen, but if I hadn't said no and also been so busy working for my uncle, she would definitely have used me. That's sick. I told him. What? Don't worry, I never let that happen, but if I hadn't said no and also been so busy working for my uncle, she would definitely have used me. That's sick. I told him. He nodded a little but clearly did not want to talk about that. My parents were great though. Unbelievably kind and good. The best people I knew. He told me. Sounds a bit like you're more like your father and your brother is like your uncle. I said. Lucian nodded a little. It does seem like history is repeating itself. He said. But my uncle didn't try to kill my father. While he, of course, wished to be the leader of the pack, he accepted he was number two. It was my own brother who killed them. And I, I had the chance to end his life too, but I couldn't. You see, my brother, despite torturing me, also took care of me. He defended me in many ways because I really was just a very small alpha when I was a kid. I was very underweight when I was born, my brother was completely fine. I wasn't breathing the first two minutes or something like that. Sounds like your brother tried to kill you from the beginning. I said. Maybe. Lucian said. I looked up at him while he just stared out into the air. I could see how much this weighed on him. He had carried all of this on his own for so many years, and I was glad he was sharing it with me now, just like I had shared my past. Tell me about your family. He said and turned to me. Oh, there isn't much to telephone. My father was a beta, who found his mate in a lone wolf. While they, of course, had me, he didn't really claim us. But he must have claimed your mother then to have you. He said. I nodded. And then, like my own mate, he threw us out, found something better. I said. I guess maybe it was just in the cards for me to live the life my mother did. That's not true. I was willing to stay with Nolan even after he cheated, 
as long he just didn't throw me out. I told him. How pathetic is that? Hey! He manipulated you and broke your confidence. Don't blame yourself. Lucian said and pressed me closer to him. It's not your fault. I smiled at him and felt my heart beating even faster. That damn traitor, my heart. It had already chosen Lucian, getting his damn name tattooed on it, just so everyone knew who my heart belonged to. How had it happened so fast? Maybe because Lucian was changing me back to who I was. The trusting and passionate person I once was. He wanted me at first. I said. But then as he watched his brother get all the glory and honor as he met Aluna and had a child with her, he just changed so much. I didn't conceive at my first heat, so he just drew further and further away. I thought getting pregnant would make him love me again, but he had already decided we were done. He wanted to step out of his brother's shadow, and he couldn't do that with me. His brother was actually a really good person, but Nolan turned dark and jealous. He is still the first guy I have loved and the first guy I was with, so it hurt a lot when he didn't want me anymore. Now I see we just weren't meant to be. Lucian smiled a big smile that almost made him look a little boyish. He looked like a kid in a candy store as I said this. It was what he had been waiting to hear, and I could understand why it made him so happy. You weren't. He said. And you never dated anyone? I knew the answer but I still asked. Lucian shook his head. Didn't want to bring them into my messy life. What about Rick? Didn't date. He told me. Were feelings involved? He shook his head again. No. Rick loves someone else. He said. Doesn't mean you couldn't feel something for him. I didn't. He is a great person, maybe a little misunderstood, but no, I did not have feelings for him. Do you regret only having me as your mate? I mean considering you like both? I asked. Lucian shook his head like crazy and lifted his hand to my cheek, caressing it. No, not at all. It's about the person, not the body. He told me. I like both doesn't mean I need both. I just want to be happy with my mate and the family we will create. When your brother is taken care of. He chuckled a little. Yes, when my brother is taken care of. What's the plan then? I hope I can get the pack to turn against him. We worked a little on them before I handed over the pack, but I am not sure we were able to do it. They just need to see you are fighting for them. He said. They need to know a true alpha will be there to take care of them. Lucian smiled at me. Then I better show them. Cecilia. I sat in front of Lara the next morning, Lucian beside me. She moved her eyes between us, going back and forth, back and forth, as we sat in her office in silence. We had been called in here quite early, and there was a strange tension in the room that I didn't like. We hadn't told anyone we had marked each other, but I was sure people had felt it considering we were all connected a little from the pack bond. Okay, just tell me exactly how you ended up deciding it was a good idea to rearrange Nolan's base Lucian? Lara said. Lucian smiled a little and I pushed his foot with mine, telling him not to look so smug. He turned to me, and I shook my head a little, so he tried to get a grip. Because he deserved it. He told her. How? Lucian glanced at me but he knew I didn't want people to know about my pregnancy. He just did. Lucian said. That's not an explanation, and really you should be talking to the king right now, because you belong to his pack, and I can tell you Valerio is not happy, because he is the one taking shit from Nolan's father, who is on the new council. Lucian looked down, knowing how serious this was, but I knew this was what Landon had wanted. He wanted the chaos. He wanted to ruin things for Lucian, so he only had one place to go. Back to his brother. It was brilliant. Nolan is my former mate. I finally said. Lara turned to me and looked shocked. What? He is my former mate. Oh, shit. And and earlier that night Landon had forced us to mark each other. I told her. 
I felt the connection, but but I didn't know he had forced you to. She said and sounded so pissed. That's a fucking crime. Besides our word, what proof do we have? I asked. It was a clever move though. Lara nodded, understanding Landon's plan right away. Yeah, getting Lucian to mark you only made him more territorial. She said. I didn't want to tell her that it was really my pregnancy that had made Lucian see red. She understood what had happened without me having to tell her about this. This is bucking insane. She whispered and leaned back in her seat, rubbing her forehead. I will take full responsibility for what I did. Lucian said. You might not want to. She said. What do you mean? I asked. Well, there might be an official hearing. The king and Nolan's family might be having a meeting. Lucian will have to be there too. And what could they do to him? I asked. Lara shrugged. Maybe get the king to throw him out, or maybe Nolan just wants compensation. I don't know, but it is not making the king look good if he can't control his own pack members. He deserved it. Lucian said again. And I agree with you. Lara said. Now that I know the full story. But you need to tell it if you are called in. This is so unfair. I whispered. I know. Lara said. But we can't just allow people to beat each other up without consequences. You understand this. Still. I said. Unfair. But now that you two have accepted each other, I was thinking you might like to come back to work. Lara said and smiled at me. I looked at her almost shocked. Really? She nodded, but then I turned to Lucian. He was smiling at me, happy for me, but I realized my time was needed elsewhere at the moment, and slowly turned to Lara. Could I get a little more time of? I asked her. She seemed surprised I was asking her this, and I found it surprising too, but Lucian and I were bound now. We had completed the marking process, and if I didn't want to end up like last time, then I needed to put effort into this. Lucian wanted me. Truly wanted me, and I had to show him I would be there for him too. I think my time is needed elsewhere at the moment, just until we sort everything out. I said and gestured to Lucian with my hand. He reached out and took it and intertwined our fingers. I kind of got you into this MES. I said and looked at him. He shook his head. No, I made the decision myself. He smiled at me, and I slowly turned to Lara, who was smiling from ear to ear as she watched us. I quickly pulled my hand away, still not used to this, but it just made Lucian laugh. Very well. Lara said. I think it is a very good idea actually. I nodded gratefully, and then Lucian and I left the office. He stopped me when we were a little further away. Are you sure? He asked. I nodded. I know you want to get back to work. Lucian. I said and wrapped my arms around his neck. He placed his hands on my hips and smiled. Now that we have marked each other, we need to make this work. I cannot go through what I went through the last time I lost a mate. I told you. And I believe you. I interrupted. But we have got a lot of things fighting against us right now, and we don't know what the future will bring. I want us to work on this. Make our bond stronger, so when it takes a lot of hits it can bounce back. We can bounce back. I like the idea of that. I smiled. Me too. Lucian leaned closer and kissed me slowly. I loved feeling him so close and grabbing onto him tighter. You know we can't have sex all the time. The bond needs more from us. I said and pulled back. Well, you are the expert. Lead the way then. I shook my head and laughed. How about a night out, you and me? I asked him. Are you asking me on a date? He said, smiling smugly. Not if it makes your ego bigger. My ego is not big. I chuckled and nodded. It is. I am just confident. He said. More like arrogant, like every other alpha. I think you're projecting. He teased me. Prove me wrong then. You want me to? I nodded and he picked me up. 
Lucian. He threw me over his shoulder and smacked my ass. When I have made you come over and over on my tongue, you will be taking those words back. What did we just talk about? I chuckled. What? He asked and walked towards his room. I don't remember anything. I laughed and shook my head but definitely didn't fight him as he took me with him. Lucian. I read the text from Valerio that said we would be having a meeting with Nolan and his family to discuss what I had done and what should be done. I read it over and over, having a bad feeling inside me. As if I didn't have enough problems, but as Lara had said, I would just have to be honest and tell them what had triggered me. I was not going to bring Cecilia's pregnancy into it all, but I would tell them that we were mates now and how Nolan had just thrown her away like trash. Hey. I looked over my shoulder, seeing Cecilia looking at me worried. We were lying in bed together in the middle of the night. I had trouble sleeping. It had gotten better now that I had her by my side, but knowing my brother was out there, didn't really calm me. Hey. I put my phone away and laid back down again, before reaching out and stroking my mate's little cheek, feeling all of that soft skin under my fingers and loving the feeling of it. What is it? She asked. Nothing. Cecilia smiled and moved closer to me, taking my hand and kissing it. I might hate my brother for what he had forced me to do, but a part of me was also selfishly happy because now that we had completed the marking process, Cecilia was no longer holding back. Like me, she was all in. I could feel it from her side, even her wolf had eventually had to give in. She couldn't stop wanting us now that we had marked each other. Aren't mates supposed to be honest with each other? She asked. As I said, you're the expert. She chuckled and just intertwined our fingers. Seriously, I was with a jerk for years who was never honest with me, so talk to me. She said. I sighed and nodded. There is going to be a meeting. I told her. Cecilia's smile disappeared and she sat up, holding the blanket close to her body, while she seemed to think it all over. I reached out and ran my hand down her naked back. She looked over her shoulder and gave me a small smile, but I could see it was forced. It's my fault, she said. I quickly shook my head and sat up, before kissing her shoulder. No, I have a history of losing my temper. Seriously? She asked. I chuckled a little and nodded. Yeah, why do you think my uncle liked me to take care of certain things? I might not have been as strong back then, but I was still angry. I told her. You always seem so controlled. Years of practice, but sometimes I wonder if what Landon says is true. I said. What? That I am just like him. Cecilia started to shake her head like crazy, and it made me smile as I saw her do it. No. She said. We did grow up together, and in many ways, I looked up to him. I told her. Doesn't mean you are like him. She said. You might share similarities, but in some way we all do. It doesn't mean we are like the other person. I mean, I know you share a lot of things with your cousin too. My smile only grew as I continued to listen to Cecilia. I liked her telling me she didn't see me as my brother. It meant a lot because I had tried so hard not to lose myself to the darkness inside of me. A darkness I knew we all had, but to me, it was just stronger. It wanted me to do bad things and my uncle had made that darkness grow inside of me. I would have almost lost myself to it if hadn't it been for Kate and Maddie. I'm glad you think I am nothing like my brother. It is my fault, Lucian. She said. I should have told you the truth. I shook my head. It was your secret to tell, not my brother's. No, but if I had, then you wouldn't have beaten up Nolan. She said. It is your past, and I have no right to demand anything from it. I told her. Why are you so understanding? She asked. I shrugged. I just want us to trust each other. I told her. I do trust you. She said. My heart started to beat faster from her words, but when I leaned in to kiss her, she didn't allow me to. She placed her hand on my chest and shook her head. We aren't done talking. She said with a little smile. I can think of something better than talking. I told her, 
and I knew she felt my need for her through the bond. She shook her head though. We can't always do that. She said and chuckled. We can try. Lucian. Okay, fine. What? I asked, chuckling a little. They will want you punished. She said. Since you are technically only an alpha second in line, then they don't mind trying to tear you down for what you did. Nolan got mated to a Luna. Crystal is the only child born from her family, and therefore Nolan is of higher status than you now. I see. This is definitely what your brother wanted. Think about it. Who can save you now? She asked me. The king has power to, and I am part of his pack. But the king can't be biased. He needs to be fair to everyone, so if they decide you need to be punished you will be. She told me. I sighed and rubbed my eyes. I knew my little mate was right. The king had to act fair. He could not hold his hand only over certain people. Landon might just have planned all of this out. It wasn't just to show I was a beast like him, but so he could swoop in and make me indebted to him. Nolan hurt you, I said and turned to her. And he was never punished. While it is definitely looked down upon, what he did, it is not a crime. She said. It is when you bring the life of your baby at risk to, I said. Cecilia looked away and I sighed again, knowing it was hard for her to talk about. Sorry, Wildcat. I won't bring it up. I promise. I told her. Cecilia just shook her head and turned to me again, burying her face in my neck, and I wrapped an arm around her, holding her close. I'm going with you. She whispered. What? She pulled back. I want to be there. She said. You don't have to. But I want to. Cecilia, you don't want to sit in front of that idiot again. I told her. I can handle it on my own. She shook her head. No, mates support each other. She said. I will be there. I smiled a big smile, unable to hold back because I just cared so deeply for her. I wasn't sure if it was love yet but I knew I wasn't far from saying those words to her because we were growing closer by the second. There was nothing stopping our feelings from growing stronger now, since we had marked each other, and I knew she couldn't stop herself from falling for me. I could feel how strongly the bond pulsed between us, like a second heartbeat. Thank you, I said. She shook her head. Don't thank me, just don't beat up Nolan again. She said. I will try. I said. Cecilia shook her head and smiled, but then kissed me slowly, until I couldn't hold back anymore and needed her again. Cecilia. We stood in the big meeting room where they usually held the council meetings. It was all so fancy. I had only been here once or twice when Lara needed me to accompany her, but I never sat around the long table that stood in the middle of the room. That was only for Lunas and Alphas. No, usually I kept myself in the background, but this time I would be sitting at the table, once Nolan and his family arrived. For now, it was me, Lucian, the king, and queen. We were all talking together, going over what was going to happen. I held onto Lucian's hand, while the king explained how serious this was. Lucian had practically changed Nolan's face forever, doing a lot of eternal damage that was hard to heal from, but thanks to a very skilled doctor, his face was going to heal up just fine and he would not lose his eyesight in one eye, which was what they feared. So, far it seemed like Nolan was going to be okay, again unfortunately, but his family demanded that Lucian to be punished for hitting Nolan unprovoked and almost making him blind in one eye. There were a lot of things wolves could heal from. Going blind was not one of them though. We could not be made invincible. There had to be a balance in the world. Just like we couldn't heal from being burned either. We all had our weaknesses, and therefore now people wanted Lucian punished. I thought it was unfair. Nolan did not go blind, or at least they didn't believe he would, and if his face became normal again, then what the hell was the problem? The two big wooden double doors suddenly opened and in came the last person I expected to see. Landon? Lucian asked. Oh, Luke. There you are, Landon said and came over to us, 
two big wolves walking behind him. I came to show my support. What? Lucian said and walked over to meet his brother, letting go of my hand. I could feel Lucian's anger like a sharp knife going through my own heart, and I quickly followed him, grabbing his hand again, and holding him back. I felt him turn calmer right away as I touched him, but it was not enough to make him back of. Of course. Landon said. You're my brother and I am here to show you my support. You mean gloat. Landon shook his head and then turned to me. I see you two are getting closer. So, my present was actually helpful. He said. Why don't you just go? I asked. Landon smiled. No, no, I support my family and Lucian is my family. He said. I don't want to be. Lucian growled. Come now, brother, you need me here. He said and placed his hand on Lucian's shoulder. Lucian shoved him away, and I could see he was ready to attack his brother right here and right now, so I quickly got in between them, placing my hands on Lucian's chest. Hey, hey, let it go, if he wants to stay, let him, he won't change anything. I said. Maybe I can help. Landon said. You're the reason why he is in this MES. I said and looked over my shoulder. Are you saying Nolan didn't deserve it? He asked. I am saying, you knew what would happen if Lucian knew the truth. I said. Maybe you should have been more honest with your mate. I narrowed my eyes, glaring at Landon, but then I forced myself to look at Lucian again, and already felt calmer just looking at him. Hey! I said and placed one of my hands on his cheek. He turned his eyes to me, and I smiled at him. Calm down! I said. Lucian seemed to let out a shaky breath, listening to my words, and then finally he allowed me to gently push him back towards where we were standing before. Lucian turned to the king right away, looking almost desperate. Tell me I can kick him out. Lucian said. He is technically family, and as long he doesn't do anything to interrupt the trial, he can stay. The king said, making sure Landon heard the last part. Don't worry my king. I will sit quietly and listen, Landon said. Lucian looked over his shoulder, looking like he didn't really care what the king had said, but before he got a chance to do anything about Landon, the doors opened again, and in came Nolan with his family. Both his father and brother were there, together with Crystal and her father as well. I realized Lucian was going to be pretty outnumbered in this case, but I was not leaving his side, and I squeezed his hand in mine making sure he felt that I was right there with him. He turned to me and I smiled at him before we all took our seats. The king and queen sat at the end, while Lucian and I sat on one side, in front of Nolan and the rest. Sadly, Nolan sat right in front of me, and despite not being able to see out of one eye at the moment, he was still looking at me like I was beneath him. His right eye was covered by a thin bandage, probably making sure it was being kept protected and clean, and the rest of his face certainly looked bad too. He was bruised all over, and had cuts here and there that hadn't healed yet. It was clear his nose had surgery too, since Lucian must have made such a terrible break it needed help to heal correctly. I was honestly impressed by my mate, not that I would ever say violence was the solution, but I had no idea just how strong Lucian was. He was a true alpha, whereas Nolan was a pathetic excuse for one. He might carry the title, but he would never be what Lucian was. Now, shall we begin? The king asked. Everyone seemed so tense, and I just reached out, taking Lucian's hand that was resting on the table. He turned to me and smiled, and I smiled back, but then I noticed Nolan looking at us out of the corner of my eye, and when I turned to him, I was surprised not to see the loathing look. No. He looked shocked and almost a little annoyed, even though his own mate sat beside him. Today we are discussing a very serious. We want him cast out. Nolan's father interrupted. While I had liked Nolan's older brother, I had never liked his father. He had treated me just as badly as Nolan had, and made sure his son knew that he had gotten mated to someone so far beneath him. Father, maybe let the king speak. Nolan's older brother said. He smiled apologetically to the king and even glanced at me, looking at me a little sympathetically. No, we all know what happened and I want him stripped of his title and cast out, Carl said. 
I shook my head, wanting to protest, but then Nolan got ahead of me. And as an apology to me, I want he and Cecilia to reject each other. Everyone turned to Nolan, looking at him shocked. What? The queen asked. I wanted to ask the same thing, but I was too stunned. I must have done some pretty serious damage to your brain if you were suggesting that. Lucian said. I think it is only fair. Nolan said. You did this because of her, and you two together are clearly very dangerous. What? Lucian shouted. I squeezed his hand harder when I felt his anger rise to new levels. You heard me. You found out I was there at the party, and you couldn't handle the idea of Cecilia actually belonging to another, so you decided to fucking kill me. Nolan said. She doesn't belong to you, you asshole. Lucian said. She belongs to me. Okay, enough. The king said, silencing the room. That's quite enough. You heard my son, my king? Carl said. You throw Lucian out and those two end their relationship. It is a true bond, the queen said. The king reached out, taking her hand, and clearly, she looked ready to ruin some faces too, because she looked almost as angry as Lucian. My son and Cecilia shared a true bond as well, and look where they are now. Just perfectly fine, Carl said. What? I asked. It was clear no one had expected me to actually say something. When I lived with Nolan's family, it was always made so clear to me that I was far beneath them, and so I tried acting small and not getting in their way, and therefore, I never spoke up, but I could not just be quiet now. I was not under their power anymore. I was my own and I had become the beta I was always meant to be. Goddess, my mate, was an alpha, which spoke of how strong I truly was. Fine? I asked. I am not fine. When Nolan rejected me, I was in pain for hours. I shouted. I couldn't move. I was sure I was going to die. I have no idea how Nolan could just walk away, but I was in so much pain, and it made me scared to trust someone else in the future. He brought our lives in danger and not just ours, but our babies too. Everyone gasped when I let my own anger get the best of me, and I blurted out the last thing I wanted to tell them. I turned to Lucian, looking scared, but he was just as shocked as the rest that I would say it out loud. What had I done? Lucian. Shit I could see the fear in Cecilia's eyes when she realized what it was, she had told everyone, and I wished I could have said something that was going to make her less afraid, but it was a bit too late to take those words back now. I slowly turned to the others, who were all still staring at my mate, and cleared my throat, but before I got a chance to say anything, the king turned to me. Did you know? He asked me. I. Lucian, you have to answer honestly. He said. He asked me. I. Lucian, you have to answer honestly. He said. Yes. I said and turned to the king. I knew. The king slowly nodded before turning to Nolan and his family, looking at them with disgust in his eyes. Wolves' pregnancies were dangerous enough as they were, and therefore every wolf being born or having the chance to be was treated very sacredly. The fact that Nolan had rejected his mate who was pregnant and left her was simply it was horrific and would never be accepted. That's a fucking lie. Nolan said and looked at Cecilia. Are you calling my mate a liar? I asked, angrily. Come on, Cecilia, you clearly spun that lie to send your mate after me. He said. I know you never forgot me. Okay, that's it. I was about to leave my chair, but Cecilia held me back, shaking her head and telling me not to make it worse. Sir? Nolan said and gestured to me. Your mate is crazy. Hey! Cecilia said and looked right at Nolan. Don't you dare talk about him like that. Just admit you lied. I didn't lie. And if you were half the alpha you claim to be, then you would have noticed the changes in me. She told him and glared at him. I was proud of my mate for standing up for herself. Scum like Nolan should not just go unpunished for the pain they caused others, and I slowly sat down, as I realized Cecilia could handle it on her own. She didn't need me to throw myself across the table and really do some permanent damage. Is it really true? The oldest brother asked. 
I turned to look at the oldest brother, and so did Cecilia, and she nodded. I am not lying, she said hard. My king, a moment with my family, Nolan's father requested. The king thought it over for a moment, but he looked as angry as I felt. Five minutes, he said. Everyone from the other side of the table left the room, and I saw Nolan's mate glaring at Cecilia, but she just looked right back, while I took her hand and squeezed it. The door closed behind them and, together with Nolan's family, the tension left the room. Well, that was fucking intense, Landon said, sitting a little further away from us. I sighed. I had completely forgotten he was even there. Don't smile, I said as I looked at him. Landon didn't stop smiling though. You knew too, I said. Landon shrugged a little. What do you mean, brother? He asked. The little comment weeks, you knew, I said. I might have been guessing. How? Cecilia asked. Landon smiled. You fucking know, and yet you stayed completely quiet, I said. Well, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to say anything. Why didn't you, brother? He asked. Because you knew you wanted your mate to decide, and now she has. And yet still you stayed quiet, I said. Landon just smiled, looking pleased with himself. He loved watching things turn into chaos, and he would gladly buy a front row ticket to watch someone's life completely fall apart. Why are you even here? Cecilia asked. I am here to support my family, of course, dear sister-in-law. You are just here to see Lucian get punished. She said. Landon shook his head, looking so serious now. I would never want that, he said. I care for my brother. I always have. You have a funny way to show it. She mumbled. Well, you are the one with the solution to the problem here. Landon told her. What do you mean? You just changed everything for Lucian when you admitted the truth, he said. Cecilia slowly turned her head, looking at me and then at the king and queen. He is right, Valerio said. You have just changed a lot. How? I mean, Lucian still hurt Nolan. Not that I am sad about it, she said. Because leaving a pregnant mate and being the cause of her miscarriage. I never said he was the cause of my miscarriage. She quickly interrupted. Everyone glanced at each other, and it was clear no one believed that. He put you in danger and the baby when he rejected you, the king said. I just presumed. I was pregnant for 25 weeks. Nolan left me when I was only about four weeks along. She said. I lost the baby because she did not develop properly. Well, he still risked your life and your babies and that is a serious thing. The king said. But can't we prove it? The queen asked. Don't tell me you don't believe her either. I said and looked at Octavia. Of course, I believe her. Octavia said. I mean Nolan almost began to sweat when Cecilia brought up the baby. Maybe he even knew and wanted the baby dead and rejecting her was the way to get rid of her and the baby he didn't want. You think? Cecilia asked. I am just saying he is the kind of scumbag I believe who would do it, the queen said. But we don't have any proof. I sighed and leaned back in my chair. No that we don't. So, even though I was finally honest, it won't change much, Cecilia said. I squeezed her hand. There is your medical report, Landon said. We all turned to him and he smiled. What? I asked. Landon smiled and then snapped his fingers and one of the pack members behind him handed him an envelope which he waved around in the air. Landon, what is that? I asked. Exactly what you think it is, brother, he said. The thing is, do I want to give it to you? I can get access to my own medical report. Cecilia quickly said. I don't need your cheap copy. That's right unless I, of course, deleted your data while retrieving this, he said. You deleted my data? She asked, angrily. It was an accident, he lied. You're unbelievable. I told him, shaking my head. Are you not done with these games yet? I don't know, brother. Am I? He asked. What do you want? I asked him. One day, he told me and held up a finger. One day? 
you and me. I will telephone you where to meet me and then you and I are going to do some brotherly bonding. He told me. Landon. Landon. Come on, brother. Do you not want your mate to save face? I mean, right now, all you have are words. He told me. I turned to Cecilia, who was shaking her head, telling me not to agree, but Landon was right. Right now, we only had words, just like I only had words against him. No proof that my brother had killed our parents, and I didn't want to have to go to jail, nor did I want my mate to be punished for lying. All right. I said and looked at my brother. You have got one day. My brother smiled and then slid the envelope along the table until it reached the king. Valerio took it and opened it before looking through it. Since he was king, he was allowed to look at people's private medical reports he was actually allowed to do anything he wanted, but Cecilia didn't try to protest or anything. She already knew this was necessary. The doors opened up before the king could say anything and then Nolan's family joined us again. Cecilia. I felt my heart beating faster and faster as Nolan's family came to join us again. Everyone seemed less shaken now and more put together after taking a five-minute break, but when I looked at Nolan's older brother, I saw him looking at me with so much sympathy. He was the only one who seemed to actually believe me or had a feeling that I was speaking the truth. He was a good male, and I knew he would be a good alpha too. My king. Valerio held up his hand as Nolan's father tried to speak. The room turned dead silent, and Valerio used it to play with them as he allowed the silence to stretch while he tapped a finger against the long mahogany table. The tension just got thicker and thicker, and I realized at that moment the power Valerio had and how scary he really could get. The room was filled with alphas, but even they looked uncomfortable and like they weren't sure where to look. Only the queen seemed to only turn stronger the scarier her mate turned. I have met a lot of bad people in my life. I have fought a lot of awful people and I have experienced a lot of pain. The king said. But I will never know what it is like losing a child. A child our females carry. It is a pain that can't be described. I felt so hurt at that moment, like the king truly understood my pain. It felt good to be heard and, despite the fact I was so alone when I lost my daughter, I knew I wasn't alone anymore. And leaving a pregnant female just because you got tired of her, that is the most disgusting thing I have ever heard before. He said. You might not have wanted to be with her but you don't risk your child's fucking life. The last part he shouted, so the whole room shook, and it was like a fucking god spoke or something. Everyone just seemed more and more scared, and even though the hair on my arms had risen, I felt very happy to, because I could see Nolan was about to shit himself. My king, please. Nolan's father tried again. My son tells me. Your son tells you lies. Your son tells you lies. The king interrupted. Excuse me. You heard me. The king held up the envelope and then turned to me, and I nodded, telling him he could show them. The king slid the envelope over to Nolan's father and he opened it and looked through it. He had had such a smug look on his face when he took the envelope, like he couldn't possibly believe that this would change anything, but when he opened it, he turned white as a sheet, and Nolan, who watched his father, looked just as scared. When his father finally handed him the papers, Nolan quickly took them and looked through them. The shocked and terrified look on his face told me he never realized I was pregnant. He never even let the idea of me being pregnant paw through his head because he had already decided there was no future with me. He was just done with me. Your grandchild. The king said, and looked at Nolan's father, who looked back at the king, still in shock. Dead. My king, I had no idea. He said. Maybe next time, teach your son what is truly important. He had shared her heat with her, so he should have known the possibility of her being pregnant. Carl slowly nodded and then turned to Nolan, but Nolan was still looking at me like he couldn't believe it was actually true I had gotten pregnant. He probably thought it wouldn't happen, since I hadn't conceived the first time, but I had the second. But back then he had already given up on me. I suggest we let all of this go. The king said. Lucian acted carelessly. He shouldn't have attacked despite being told about Cecilia's pregnancy and what happened, but Nolan also did a horrific thing. 
Now, there is no law that says it is a crime to leave your pregnant mate, but I sure wish there was, because I would gladly make you blind in the other eye. I almost wanted to laugh, but held it in, as I looked at Lucian, who smiled pleased, liking what he was hearing. I just shook my head a little and nudged him, telling him without words, not to look so smug. Lucian didn't try to hide how happy he was at that moment, and I rolled my eyes before looking back at Nolan's family again, but it was Nolan who was focused on me. No one else, and I just looked back at him confused. He had not taken his eyes of me for one second and was still looking at me with so much shock. I had never seen him look like that before. So, can we all leave this room, putting the past behind us? The king asked. Valerio looked at me and the queen too, and I could see he was waiting to hear what I wanted to do. I smiled at him, showing him how thankful I was for his help, and nodded. I can. I said and turned back to Nolan's family, my head held high and showing them, despite the pain they had caused me, I would no longer bow to them. Lucian? Valerio asked. Whatever my mate wants. He said. It is her choice. Valerio nodded satisfied and then turned to Nolan's family. Alpha Carl? It took a moment, but then Carl nodded, clearly not wanting Lucian punished anymore after what he had learned about his granddaughter, and I could see now that Carl was backing out, Crystal's family was no longer acting so high and mighty anymore either. Good, then I am declaring this case closed, and we can all return home. Valerio said and got up. His queen followed him and he wrapped his arm around her waist, as they walked out. Once they got up, everyone else did too, and the room was filled with the sound of chairs scrabbing over the floor. Wait a moment. Lucian told me, just as we stood up. What? I asked, but I saw he was looking at his brother. What? I asked, but I saw he was looking at his brother. Despite Landon being a huge dick, who I wouldn't mind leaving our lives forever, he was also the one who had saved our asses today, and maybe in that cold, cold heart of his, he did actually care about Lucian. I couldn't tell, but I understood that Lucian needed to go talk to him for a moment. It left me alone though, but not for long. Hey! I turned my head and saw Nolan's older brother standing in front of me. Isaac! I said, not sure why he had come over to me when the rest of his family was already leaving. Isaac. I said, not sure why he had come over to me when the rest of his family was already leaving. He can understand if my words don't mean anything. Isaac said. But I am so sorry. I stared at Isaac, shocked. While, of course, he was the only one in his family who had been kind to me, he hadn't spoken much to me either. There was always this distance between us, but now he had come over to me and told me he was sorry. Why? Oh, I. He understand if you don't believe me, but he truly am. He had no idea my brother could even. Isaac stopped mid-sentence and was clearly very mad because he couldn't even say what he wanted to. I quickly shook my head and held up my hand. I have moved on. It was three years ago. I said. Doesn't mean the pain isn't there. I mean if I had known. You would have done what? Forced Nolan to stay with me? I asked and smiled. Isaac shook his head. No, but your child was family too, and we take care of our family. He said. He would have made sure you were taken care of like my brother should have done. Thank you, Isaac, truly. I said. But we can't change the past, and despite the pain he caused me, it was not his fault I lost the child. Are you sure? He asked. I nodded. She didn't develop properly. Which makes you ice a cup away? He said. I shook my head. I don't want to go down that road. I just want to move on and live my life with my mate. I told him. Isaac smiled and looked over where Lucian was standing before turning to me. Well, he wish for a good life for you too. He said. Thank you, and I am sorry he didn't take better care of you. He tried telling my brother how important a mate bond was and that it needed to be nurtured in order to stay strong. Now if he only gave him the solution as to how to end your bond. Isaac said. I shook my head. That is not your fault. You tried teaching him a lesson, 
but he took it differently than you intended. I was sick though. Isaac said. What? Yeah, for two weeks I couldn't leave the bed, and our parents were worried that I might actually die. He told me. Nolan got sick? Very sick. We understood it was from rejecting you, but it was almost like a real disease. He said. It passed, but I did not leave you without feeling the pain of Akai's actions. I wasn't sure if I should feel happy, but I couldn't help it, and Isaac saw the smile spreading on my lips, which made him smile too. Sorry. I said and looked away. No, I deserved it, and now I realize just how much I deserved it. Isaac said. I hope the best for you. Thank you. I hope you will be happy too. I said. I already am. He said and winked before he started to walk away. I had no doubt Isaac understood the importance of the bond. His mate was a Luna and she was his true mate. They were happy together, and I hope to create just as strong a bond with Lucian as he had with his mate. Lucian. I had discussed with Landon when he wanted to meet, and he had told me in three days I should come to the house, and then I would find out what would happen from there. I did not like that my brother wouldn't tell me what was going to happen, but I knew I had no choice. I had to go meet him now since he had helped save both Cecilia and me from being punished. I told my brother goodbye and watched him leave, but not without seeing the way the pack members he had brought looked back at me, almost like they hoped I would say something or do something. I wanted to despite what my brother did today, I could not allow him to go unpunished for what he had done, and he had not just killed our parents, but he had forced Cecilia and me to mark each other. But is that so bad really? Now she and her wolf have accepted us and finally let us in. I am not saying it was right, but we did get what we wanted, right? My wolf had a point. No, neither of us liked how it had happened. But Cecilia had finally accepted us, and I could feel our bond only growing stronger and stronger. Hey! I felt a pair of arms come around my stomach, and I looked over my shoulder, seeing my little mate look up at me and smile. She got on the tip of her toes and kissed my cheek. Ready to go home? She asked. I loved how she said that. I loved that she called it home. I was still a part of the King's Pack but maybe we could live the way James and Lara did it. The two packs were pretty much joined together, since Celine and Ryder were mates. Celine was the Luna first after all, but had given over the title to her sister, who was now mated to James and he was still connected to the King's Pack. Yeah, I am ready, I said. I removed one of her arms so I could pull her closer to me, and then I wrapped one of mine over her shoulders. We left the big meeting room as the last two. I was happy when we left though, and I could feel she was too. A big secret of hers might have come out today, but it actually seemed to have helped her, because I could feel peace in her, there wasn't there before. I am sorry you felt forced to tell everybody what had happened, I said, as we walked outside and into the warm sun. I am not. She said and smiled at me. No? Did you see the look on Nolan's face? She asked. I chuckled and nodded. Yeah, he seemed shocked. Cecilia nodded. Yeah, and now his family knows what a scumbag he is. He will not be very liked from now on, and because Crystal is now his mate, neither will she. It is going to be awful for both of them from now on. She said. I know because I did live in their world once. I nodded. I did too. I knew how small things could make you lose status so quickly, but this was not a small thing, and Cecilia was right. Nolan would be looked down on because of this, and it would be hard for both him and Crystal to get back the same kind of status. You do know their families will keep this quiet though, right? I asked. She nodded. Yeah, but their families won't be happy with them. She said. And that is good enough for me. I kissed her temple. I am happy to hear it. I said. I said. We went over to the car and I opened the door for her, seeing how sweet she was smiling. She really was happy, and I was so glad to see it. When we came home, Lara wanted to see us and hear what happened, but I let it be up to Cecilia if she wanted to talk about it. It seemed like she wasn't so scared anymore and just agreed. 
James was in the living room we went to, ready to hear it all too. He seemed as intrigued as Laura. So, tell us. Laura said as we sat down. Were you punished? I shook my head. No, actually Landon helped. What? Laura said. Your brother helped? James asked. Not without asking for a price though. I said. What price? Laura asked, concerned. A day. A day? I need to spend a day with him. That's all? Laura asked. I feared he would demand you to I don't know, hurt us or join him. You would think so, and I am not sure why he didn't suggest that. He could have, and I would most likely have had to agree unless I wanted to be cast out and stand with nothing, I said. Were those Nolan's demands? Laura asked, stunned. I nodded. And not just that, Cecilia said. He wanted us to break our bond too. What? Laura shouted. You can't be serious. James said. Yeah, that was why Landon had a perfect opportunity to try to gain something from me, but he only asked for a day. Still, I don't like it. Laura said. I didn't say I liked it, but it is better than directly demanding I join him and his cause, whatever that cause is. I said. How did he help? James asked. Well, I turned to look at Cecilia, and she smiled at me before turning to the other two. He had my medical file prepared. She said. What? Laura asked, confused. What does that have to do with anything? Well, there might be something you don't know. Well, there might be something you don't know. She said. I when Nolan left me, I was pregnant with our child. Laura and James just stared at Cecilia, and I could understand the shock. I had been shocked too. Cecilia had hidden it well that she had been pregnant, and no one really expected her to have such a past. Wait what? Laura finally said. You were pregnant? Cecilia nodded. But I lost the child a few months later she had not developed properly. She told them. But after it was revealed, we all agreed to let the past be the past and no punishment was delivered. So, you're of the hook then? James said and looked at me. I nodded. But you should have seen the king. Shit, he was mad. I said and smiled. Cecilia chuckled a little and nodded. Yeah, he was not happy after he heard what had happened. Cecilia said, and I wrapped my arm around her, feeling so happy at that moment. It's good to see you two finally working things out. Laura said. Even though I am very sorry about what happened Cecilia. Cecilia nodded in a grateful way before turning to James. James might have been right. She said. You can't really fight it. James smiled. We all have to learn it. We think we are better of only because we are hurting. He said. Once we stop hurting, it gets easier. You're right about that. She said and turned to me, before leaning closer to me. It feels good not to hurt anymore. I smiled and kissed the top of her head. Yeah, there really was something very healing about the bond. You didn't just find a partner for life. No, you found something you had been missing. You were forced to look at some of the ugly things in yourself and try to become better, so you could be with the one you were always destined for. I was happy we were both healing though, because it meant we could create a strong and healthy bond and, hopefully, a family one day. Lucian. Are you sure? I asked. Cecilia was getting dressed and I was just enjoying the show, as she put on that small little black thong that I would be pulling it with my teeth later tonight. We had just showered it was quite a long shower. Not my fault. My little mate was the one who was very hungry today, and her need for me had only grown since the trial. I was meeting my brother tomorrow, but tonight we were going to the castle. All of us. Laura had invited us, but I was unsure if Cecilia really wanted to go. The last time I had sort of scared her of, and despite moving on slowly, I knew she was still hurting in many ways. She still had a lot to heal from. We both did. I am sure. She said, as she put a bra on and looked over her shoulder and smiled. I watched her for a little while, just admiring what a beautiful and perfect mate I had been given. 
She was amazing, and I could feel my heart beating faster and faster for her. What are you thinking about? She suddenly asked me, when she had gotten a shirt on and I was still only wearing a towel, as I leaned up against the doorframe. Just how lucky I am to have you, I said. Shouldn't you get dressed? She asked. I nodded and walked into the closet. Cecilia's stuff had just been brought into my room, and now we were pretty much living together. I loved every second of it though, but there were still some things I felt we needed to discuss. So, there is something I have wanted to ask you, I said as I got dressed. This sounds serious. She said as she took a seat on the little chair in the room. I smiled, as I turned to look over my shoulder and she smiled back at me. What? She asked. The future. Oh, the future. She teased. That's a big discussion. I know, which is why I think we should have it now. I said as I put on a shirt. Go on. She said. I know you have been through a lot. I said. Cecilia nodded. So, have you? Yes, but you have been through something very traumatic. I said. Is losing your parents not traumatic? She asked me. I thought it over and then realized I might not have put it right. Okay, fair enough. What I was trying to ask you is what you see in our future. I asked. Say? I nodded. Like do you see us creating a family? I asked her. Oh. I know it must have been crazy painful what you went through, losing your daughter like that, but I swear to you I will never leave you. And I will be there with you through it all. I promised her and walked over to her. I crouched down in front of her and then rested down on one of my knees before I reached out and took her hands, squeezing them. Do you want one? She asked. Very much. I told her. Cecilia looked away, and I feared what her answer might be, but then she turned back to me and she reached up with one of her hands, caressing my cheek. It's not that I don't want one. She told me. Okay. Okay. That was not a no to the family thing. Say? Already making progress. We were getting much better at talking about everything and just trying to find common ground and then see where we could go from there. I am scared. She admitted. I get it. I said and kissed her hand. I understand that is not something you just move on from, but I hope it won't stop you from building a family with me in the future. I can understand if it does though. And would that ruin things between us? She asked. I sighed and looked down, not sure how to answer this. Some things you could work through, and others were just a death sentence, but we were mates, so this thing between us was much deeper and much more powerful. It wasn't so simple as a breakup. I am not sure how to answer it really. When one wants kids and the other doesn't, it doesn't end well. I said. She nodded. I'm aware. She said. Which is why I will try not to let my fears get in the way. So, you would want to try? I asked. She nodded and smiled, and it made me feel so happy. But. But? I asked. I am not sure it will happen. She said. Why? After I got my mark removed, I haven't experienced a heat. She told me. And you know our heats are triggered when we meet our mate and get marked by them. It has been three years since my last heat, and I have not felt anything. I see. Maybe something is wrong with me. She said and looked down. I shook my head and leaned closer to kiss her shortly. No, and even if there is, it won't change how I feel about you. I told her. She smiled a little and then hugged me, and I felt my heart just beating out of control. I was falling so hard for my little mate. I could not stop myself, and I would not stop myself. I really hoped we could build a family together, but I would not hold it against her if we couldn't. I wanted my life with her, I realized, more than anything. There is something I have always been afraid of. She whispered. What? If I will be able to be a good mother. She told me. I pulled back a little and looked at her. Why would you say that? I asked. I never had a good relationship with my mother. She admitted. 
After everything with my father, I think she kind of blamed me that she couldn't keep him. That is not on you, and you know that. I said. She nodded. But what if it has screwed me up? She asked. We will figure it out together. Remember who has the crazy family? I said. She chuckled a little, and I took her hand, stroking the back of it with my thumb. Our bond was buzzing with happy feelings, and I loved how alive it felt, almost like we could reach out and touch it, so powerful it was at that moment. What happened to her? I asked. Cecilia shrugged. We kind of just drifted apart. I haven't heard from her in years. She said. Do you want to figure out where she is? Cecilia shook her head. No, I don't actually. She said. If she wanted us to have a relationship, she would have fought for it. That is not the child's job. And you think you wouldn't be a good mother? I teased her. Cecilia chuckled a little. Okay, maybe I wouldn't be terrible. She said. I smiled and then stood up, helping her stand to before I wrapped my arms around her. We will figure it out together. That is what mates do. I said. She nodded. I like to hear that. She said. She said. What? What mates do? She said. Nolan never spoke like that. He never seemed to want to work for anything in our relationship. I told you I am nothing like him. I said. That you aren't. Cecilia was about to kiss me when James knocked on our door, telling us to hurry or we would be late for the dinner. We looked at each other and laughed a little before we finally left the room to go join the others. Cecilia. While the talk with Lucian had made me a little nervous, I was also happy that he had brought it up. It was important we had the same goals for the future. At least some of the same goals, and it was true what I had said. I did want a family. I was just scared and a little uncertain if I could get pregnant again. The doctor had said I could. She had been able to stop the bleeding and make sure no damage was done to my uterus, but what if she was wrong? What if something else was wrong with me? I couldn't help but think about it the whole way to the castle, and it wasn't until we actually got inside that I forgot about it, because then I was distracted by the many wonderful people. I had never really had a big family or just a family, but this was amazing, I realized as we gathered in a big living room, while we waited for dinner to be served. Everyone was chatting happily together, and I sat beside Lucian, in front of some of the others. Everyone wanted to know how the meeting had gone, and while I did not want to share too much, I did tell them enough for them to understand that Nolan and his family would not bother us again. Everyone already knew of the forced marking that had happened between Lucian and me, but we did not really care about it anymore. We were happy, and we were not trying to hide it. I can't believe how big they have gotten. I said as I looked at Celine's kids, who were both growing fast, and I knew they would become strong wolves once full grown. Yeah, time passes by so fast. Celine said. I can't believe it either. She had her daughter on her lap, while Ryder held their son. They were about two years old now, and were both so adorable. You want to hold her? Celine barely let me answer before she came over to me with her daughter, who she had named after me. I put her on my lap and she looked up at me with those huge yellow eyes. I smiled down at her and it made her smile back. I am still a bit amazed you named her after me. I said and looked at Celine. You kind of saved me. She said. I barely did anything but tell you where to find the spirituals. I said. And it helped me a lot. I needed to go on that journey to see what I was actually capable of. And you're capable of quite a lot. Ryder said and kissed her temple. Celine leaned closer to him and I could see how happy they were. For the first time in a long time, I did not feel any bitter feelings watching that. I had both been jealous and very skeptical when I saw two mates together. I wanted it, and at the same time, all I could think was that even a true bond can turn rotten, and you end up all alone. I did not want anyone to experience what I had experienced. The bond was an interesting thing. There was so much to learn about it. 
it had truly turned rotten between Nolan and me because he never allowed himself to have feelings for me. He refused to work together with me and nurture the bond. Even if you were true mates, the bond would only do half of the work. It would bring you together, but if you did work for it, then you would not get to experience all the wonderful things it could bring you. It would turn cold and dark until there was nothing but painful feelings pulsing through you both. Nolan did not walk away unharmed as I thought, and that was only fair. He might have stopped loving me, but I would have felt even more bitter if I was the only one who paid for his awful behavior. So, should we prepare a proper ceremony? Celine asked me. What? I looked at her confused, and she just smiled. Well, you might have marked each other, but we can still have a ceremony. I mean why not? She asked. I turned to Lucian, who was completely bewitched by little Cecilia, but then he looked at me, and I saw so much love. In his eyes. I hoped it was love at least, because when he looked at me like that, I could not stop my heart from beating so fast, it felt like I might have a heart attack. I mean, why not? I asked him, and I saw his eyes only light up even more. It was clear he was not sure what I would think, but I had not even had a proper ceremony with Nolan. He refused to have one with me, and while I never thought I would get the chance again, I saw now I could do it all over again, and this time do it properly. I'm in. He said. Me too. I said as we looked at each other, the world slowly disappearing around us. Fantastic. We were both snapped out of our trance as we turned to Celine, who was smiling from ear to ear, looking so happy. I am going to prepare it all. She said. Of course, you will. Lara said and shook her head. Do you want to plan it? You never even had one. She said to her sister. No, but you know I don't believe a ceremony changes anything. I think it is a waste of time. Everyone knows I love my mate. I was just saying maybe Cecilia wanted to plan it herself. Laura suggested. Everyone turned to me, and I felt very much put on the spot, but then I smiled and shook my head. No, I will let Celine do it, she seems to know what she is doing. I said. Ha. Huh. Celine said and looked at her sister. Laura just shook her head and turned back to James again. I really had misjudged my Luna and Alpha, because when I saw them standing there in front of each other, looking at each other with so much love in their eyes, I knew there was no way James was ever going to leave Laura. He had been scared and feeling guilty, but Laura was the one for him, and my question about who he would choose if he stood between Jane and Laura was completely unfair. No one would be able to make that choice, but no one would have to either because Jane and Lara were both his mates, and he loved them both very much, just in a different way. I could understand if he felt bad for loving Lara, especially if Jane somehow had come back, but she had not had she? You always did love to plan a good party, the queen said. I am the best at it, Celine said. Octavia shook her head a little. Ethan, who she was now guardian of, was sitting with Maddie and Evan, looking so damn happy. He might not have his parents, but I knew he would grow up knowing nothing but love. We were all here tonight though, even Andrew and Rick had come. I knew the king had asked them to join his pack if they wanted a long time ago, but the two of them preferred their lonely status for some reason. I was not sure why. Most lone wolves would seize the opportunity, but not these two. I was trained for this. Celine continued. I am not saying you weren't, the queen said. Then I am the perfect choice. It made everyone laugh, as she said this, but she might not have been wrong. She was a good choice to plan the ceremony. But let us have the ceremony once a certain person is taken care of, I said and turned to Lucian. I handed over little Cecilia to him, and he smiled as he took her. I really hoped that I could still have kids, but I was also a little scared. While I trusted Lucian now, a part of me still had the fear lingering inside of me that I would end up alone. It was stupid, but it was there. It wouldn't stop me from being with Lucian anymore, but I knew I would always feel a little afraid. Some things just left scars you couldn't see. You mean my brother? Lucian said. I nodded. 
We still need to get the pack back from him. I said. I will see what he wants tomorrow, but I know I will have to fight him for it in one way or another. Lucian said. Lucian said. I do believe the pack is already changing sights though. Why would you think that? I asked. I saw the way the two pack members that Landon had brought to the meeting looked. He said. I know they want their old Luna and Alpha back. They are just not sure how to get it. They need someone to stand with them in order to fight back against Landon. I said. Lucian nodded. I know, and I need to be that person. I just need to figure out how I can make them feel like they will not be lone wolves for long. If you kill Landon, you actually become Alpha. Evan said. And if Landon finds out I am trying to kill him, then he will kill all of you. I am not an assassin. Do you know who is? Angela asked, and we all turned to her. Phoenix. Yeah, but do you know who Landon holds hostage? The pack. He can easily kill one of them as punishment if he learns Phoenix is coming for him. But Phoenix is very skilled, Angela said. Maybe, but I can't take the chance. Lucian said. If anyone dies it will be because of me. Could any of you accept those risks? Everyone turned quiet, and they knew Lucian was right. Everyone turned quiet, and they knew Lucian was right. No one here would even sacrifice one pack member, because that was not what good Lunas and Alphas did, despite not everyone here being a Luna or Alpha. We stood together and we would not take the risk and sacrifice anyone. Lucian knew his brother was smart. He always seemed so many steps ahead. Lucian could not be careless. Okay, enough serious talk. Let's eat. Octavia said and went to get Ethan, as we all started to stand and walk out of there. Cecilia. Dinner was a lot of fun. It was a bit like eating with Lara's family, but just more people. Everyone was so close and relaxed around each other. It was just a really happy group, and I was honored to be one of them. I had never really wanted to get to know any one of them because my solitude meant that I didn't have to get hurt. I could just be by myself, drowning in my misery, but at least not getting hurt. It was a lonely way to live though, and as I sat at the table, feeling all that joy and happiness and laughing together with the others with my mate by my side, I realized I didn't want to be alone. I wanted to be here, and I wanted to create a happy life with my mate who made it very hard for me to eat because he constantly wanted to hold my hand. He was not the only possessive male here though. The rest were the same, all needing to touch and hold their mate. The king didn't even allow the queen a chair, but kept her on his lap. That was something else, but he was the king after all, of course, he was even more possessive, considering his powerful genes, and his parents being the last blue blood couple. Valerio might now be mated to Octavia, who descended from a blessed line herself, but she was still not from the blue bloodline like her mate. Not that it mattered. At least they had made sure it didn't. They had taken down anyone who stood in their way, and while there, of course, were sacrifices, it did not stop them from being happy together or anyone else there. What are you thinking so hard about? Lucian leaned closer to my ear and whispered. I turned to him and smiled. A lot of things. I told him. Sounds exhausting. He teased me. I nudged him with my shoulder, and he just laughed, before I turned to him again and reached out, caressing his cheek. I want a future with you. I told him. His smile only turned bigger. I want one with you too. And a family. He looked so happy when I said this and I could feel my heart beating faster and faster, and I couldn't stop myself, as I leaned closer to him and stopped just outside his ear. I love you. I whispered. Lucian drew back so damn fast, that he almost knocked his own wine glass over, but no one seemed to notice. I tried not to laugh too hard, as he looked at me again, after stabilizing his glass. What? He asked. I chuckled. Do you need me to say it again? He nodded eagerly like a child. Yes. I smiled and nodded. I love you, Lucian. I told him. I could feel the side of his bond pulse like a powerful heartbeat, 
and it made me gasp a little as I felt the power of it. Okay, we are out of here. He suddenly said and stood up, turning everyone's attention towards us. Where are you going? Celine asked. Lucian did not even bother answering, he just took my hand and led me out of there. I chuckled and looked over my shoulder, winking at everyone, who quickly understood that Lucian simply couldn't wait until we got home again. It made some whistle and others laugh and joke around, but it did not stop Lucian from leading me out of there and into the first available room. He was quickly on me the moment we were alone and kissed me hard while his arms came around me, and he pushed me back until I hit the back of a couch. You can't just say that and not expect me to take you out of there and have my way with you, he said, as he turned me around and started to kiss my neck, and I smiled happily, laughing a little. Something funny, little wildcat? No, I just love you. I said again, hearing him growl pleased before he quickly got to work on my pants, so impatient to have me, and it only turned me on like crazy. You have no idea how long I waited to hear those words. He said in a dark and low voice, as his hand went into my underwear and he quickly found my clit, working me fast. Oh, goddess. Lucian. I called out, reaching out to stabilize myself because it was so fast and so damn intense the way he touched me. Something felt different now that I had said the words, and I could feel his hunger for me through the bond like a burning river of lava, that seemed to only turn me hotter and I came in seconds, screaming and pushing back against him, begging for more. He did not let me wait for long, as he pulled my pants and underwear down before he got his hard cock free and then slid inside of me so hard the air was pushed from my lungs and I grabbed tighter onto the couch. You drive me crazy, wildcat. He whispered in my ear. Please, please fuck me. I begged, as he gave me a little time to adjust, but I didn't need time, I needed his rough touch and the way he would move his big cock inside of me. I needed all of him, right now, and he gave it to me. I'll love it. He started to fuck me, first taking on a slow pace, but it was not enough for either of us. Right now, was not the time to draw out this moment. No, we both needed it wild and hard, and we even made the couch move forward a little, every time he pumped into me, making wicked sounds as skin met skin, and I only turned wetter, making it so easy for him to move in and out of me. I could feel the orgasm build fast and strong, burning every little part of my body and I screamed his name as I came. He was not far behind me, and so he started to come to, shooting all his cum inside of me and then finally we relaxed a little, both breathing heavily, and just enjoying this post-orgasm moment. I love you too. He whispered in my ear before he gently bit the lobe. You're everything I have ever wanted, Lucian. I wanted to stay in bed with my little mate. After telling me she loved me, we did not stay for the rest of the dinner. We said a quick goodbye and then we went straight home, and we did not stop touching each other until evening turned into late night. Then we finally rested, and both slept so damn peacefully, but an alarm I had put on my phone a few days ago woke me. I quickly turned it off, making sure not to wake Cecilia, who was still sleeping soundly. I quickly showered and got dressed before sending Landon a text, telling him I was on my way. He needed to know I would honor our agreement. I promised myself though, that when I got back Cecilia and I would finally get to go on that date we had talked about. We had not really had the chance to do it yet, since so many things had come in our way. I kissed my little mate, who continued to sleep before I left the room and hurried outside. It was still very damn early. The sun was barely up, as I went to go see my brother. It did not take that long to get to him, and everything seemed eerily quiet as I walked up to the house, like even the world knew I was doing something right now that I would regret. I didn't let it stop me though, as I rang the doorbell and knocked on the door. It opened only shortly after, making me believe my brother had been waiting and ready. Morning, he said with his smug smile. I'm here, that you are. What kind of torture have you planned for me today? I asked. It made my brother laugh and he just leaned against the door, acting like he thought about it. Well, my torture chamber isn't quite ready yet, you see, he said. I just stared at him, and it made him laugh even more. You really thought I had one built? He asked me. I nodded, without even hesitating. Oh, brother, come on, he said. 
No torture room or anything. You can come in. But should I? I asked. It just made my brother smile. He liked to see me cautious because it meant I wasn't stupid, and he hated his T asterisk PID people. I told you, it will be a day of brotherly bonding, he said. So you said. But I think you and I have a different idea of what that is. I said. Landon smiled and then took a step to the side. You can also just stay there, he said. But that wouldn't be just as fun. I thought it over for about half a second, but I knew I was not getting out of this, and so I walked in and Landon smiled pleased, as he closed the door. I took a look around, seeing not much had changed, and I was happy to see it, but the same homely vibe had walked out of the door the day Evan and Maddie had. They were the ones making it feel welcome and good. Landon was not. Well, welcome home, brother, Landon said. It's not my home, I quickly said. Landon smiled, as he placed himself in front of me. Of course, it is. Of course, it is. You lived here for years. Doesn't mean it was my home, I said. Did our uncle traumatize you that much? He asked me, still having his usual smile. Just tell me what you want to do with me today, I said. I told you, brotherly bonding. Landon continued ahead, and I had no choice but to follow. He walked through the house until we reached a door that led out into the garage. Three beautiful cars were parked out there, but it was the one furthest away that caught my eye. No way. I whispered. I walked over to the blue car with white stripes going down the middle and stood in front of it completely in awe. How is it here? I asked as I took in this old Mustang that our father had loved so much. Well, our uncle did not just take father's pack, he took his car too. Landon said. You mean after you killed him? Landon didn't say anything and just smiled. Did it ever occur to you to go check if he had it? Landon asked. I was in the garage many times. I never saw it. Because our uncle did not want to give you any ideas probably. I mean... Remember the last time we drove in it? Landon asked. I smiled and nodded. Yeah. I chuckled. You got it into my head that we should steal Dad's car and got me a month of house arrest because of it. I mean we weren't even old enough to drive it. Landon and I both chuckled, as we remembered the good memory of us, two young alphas just stealing our dad's car and getting hell for it, but it had been so much fun. We didn't drive far or very fast, but still... We were kids and kids were not meant to sit behind a wheel. He did get very mad, Landon said. You never got a chance to drive though. I shook my head. Do you want to? He asked. I turned to him, looking at him shocked, and Landon pulled a set of car keys from his pocket in his pants, holding them up and letting them dangle from his finger like a treat. Hell yeah, I said, and he threw the keys to me. Then let's go. We both got in the car, me in the driver's seat, and we got the old car fired up before the garage door opened and we sped out of there. It was amazing suddenly sitting in the car again. Our father had loved this car, and I never thought I would ever get to even see it again after he died, but there I was, sitting in the old blue Mustang again and loving it. I looked over at my brother, who looked at me and smiled. So, is this your master plan? I asked. What? Bribing me with dad's old car? Landon chuckled a little. No bribing. We are just going on a little road trip, he said. You and me, brother. Road trip? He nodded. Where are we going? I asked. Wherever you want to go, he said. Landon no games. I told him. I just want honesty. I am always honest, brother. I don't lie, he said. The truth is so much more powerful. I shook my head a little, but knew he wasn't lying. Landon didn't do lies. Lies could easily be discovered, but the truth would always be the truth and it was a good weapon to use against others. Like he had already done. Why are you doing this? I mumbled. I told you, I want us to be family again. I just sighed and shook my head. Please, Landon. I said. Family? You see us ever becoming family again? He nodded. I do. We can't and I simply can't believe everything you have done so far is just because you want us to be family again. I said. Lucian, I have no interest in anything but you. He said. Why do you think I came back? I don't know. 
I said and shrugged. Connor had failed. I don't care about the crown, Landon said, and I glanced at him. It was hard to believe when everyone seemed like they wanted the crown. I never have, and I never will. I want my brother. I actually think Valerio is a good king. Much better than Xavier ever was. But he was also crazy and the council pretty much ran everything. You think that Valerio is a good king? I asked, making it almost sound like I didn't think it. But I was just so shocked to hear Landon say this. I simply couldn't believe it. I do, he said. I do, he said. And I really couldn't care less about the crown. Why? What would I do with it? He asked me. Rule. Rule what? I already have what I want or almost. He said and smiled at me. I am just missing one little piece. He held up a finger, and I knew he meant me, but I shook my head again. The pack belongs to Maddie and Evan. I said, and Landon groaned. It belongs to us, he said. I shook my head. No, it belongs to you, at least on paper. I said. I don't want to be alpha. Some people are happy with the status they have and don't feel the need to chase more. Some people are content with their lives, and I am happy with mine. Besides, you and me, Landon, we are the ones that are dangerous together. Using your mate's ex-mate words against me, Landon said, referring to when Nolan said Cecilia and I were dangerous together. It's true, I said. Look what this idea of yours has made you do. You killed our parents. Landon just shook his head, like he didn't want to listen to me. You did. You did. How can we ever be family after that? I asked. But they weren't my family. You were. I was surprised when Landon suddenly raised his voice. He usually didn't lose his temper. He was very good with control. That was how he stayed so many steps ahead of me and everyone else. Landon sighed and leaned his arm against the door as he slowly calmed down. Remember when our parents stopped taking me with them on visits? He asked me. I nodded. They always left me behind, but every time you came back, who was the first person you went to see? He asked me. I sighed. You. You came home all happy and chatty and told me everything because you didn't want me to feel alone. You wanted me to feel like I had been there, even though I had been trapped in the house all day, all by myself. You were my family, not them, he said. They were our parents. He shook his head. No, dad was going to send me away, he suddenly said. What? Lucian. I looked at my brother shocked, as he said this. Dad was going to send him away? I had never heard anything about this, and I was not sure I believed Landon, but the look on his face my brother rarely showed any emotions. He had pretty much been born without any, but right now I could see its sadness almost, or more like the look of betrayal. He looked like someone who couldn't believe our dad would do that to him, and so how could I not believe him? I never heard this. I said. They couldn't handle me, he said. I overheard it one day them talking they had not closed their bedroom door completely, and so I overheard it as I walked to my own room. Dad was talking about what was necessary, and you know mom with her sweet heart. She said she couldn't let me go, but I think she only said it because she gave birth to me, and it was some maternal thing in the end, they both agreed though saying it was best to change the line of succession and send me away. So, Luke, you were going to be Alpha. That's why you killed them? I asked him. We looked at each other shortly, before I looked at the road again, shaking my head. You were always meant to lead, he said. No, I was not. I am not anyone's Alpha. I am just me, I said. Landon shook his head. You were always so damn sensitive, he said. Well, one of us came out just fine when we were born. I was the one who had almost been killed in the womb. Landon smiled a little. Werewolf pregnancies are dangerous for both the mother and child, he said. I just shook my head, not wanting to play this little mind game with him, but I could sort of understand now what had triggered Landon to act. I truly had no idea our parents would do this, but I could understand why. At least now I could. If we had still been kids, I was not sure I would have allowed them to send Landon away. Where did they want to send you? I asked. South, he said. What's in the South? I asked. I glanced at Landon and saw him smile, almost like he was holding back a secret. 
How much do you know of Andrew's father? He asked me. And nothing. Nothing, really, even though you were fucking his very close friend? He asked. Why did you say it like that? I asked. What? Like that. Very close. What does that mean? I asked. Landon just acted a little ignorant. Oh, they just seem very close. He teased. Rick is in love with Andrew, but I am pretty sure Andrew doesn't feel the same way. I said and looked at my brother, who gave nothing away. Does he? Landon just let the question hang in the air, and then started to laugh a little, so I knew he was just playing with me. No, he does not, Landon said. But did it annoy you there for a moment? Are you not content with your mate? I sighed and shook my head a little. I am actually. I just want Rick to be happy too. Really? He asked me. I nodded. What? Do you think I am wrong for wanting him to? Or is it the fact I like males too? I asked him. Oh, trust me, brother, I could not care. Male, female, you have fun with whoever you want, he said. I mean if you want to stop by and... I glared at my brother, and he quickly shut up, but still smiled. Oh, right, one person now for the rest of your life, he said. Is that not going to get boring for you? I mean considering all the people you used to sleep with. I shook my head. No, I love my mate, and she is more than enough for me. I told him honestly. Landon just nodded a little. The power of the mate bond, he said lowly. But hey, if she makes you happy, then I am happy. I never understood that carnal need everyone has anyway. Really? I asked. He nodded. Waste of time, he said. I mean what do you really get out of it? I guessed him not much, if all you really enjoyed was playing with people. But still, it surprised me a little to hear my brother saying he had no interest in sleeping with anyone. So, you never. Once, I got bored halfway through it. He told me. I just stared at my brother shocked, before slowly turning to the road again. Okay. I know, despite being twins, you and I are certainly very different. But hey, I did try to see if I found people of the same sex interesting too, but I really don't. It is just not very fun. But revealing the cheaters is very fun and seeing the way their partner freaks out. He told me. And we were back to old Landon. I just sighed and shook my head a little. Of course. I mumbled. You wouldn't want to just want to be with someone else. Just a tiny bit. Landon asked, and I knew he did it to test me. No. I told you. I love my mate. I said. Wow what is it like? He asked. What? The bond. What does it feel like? He asked me. I looked at my brother a bit shocked. You want to know what the bond feels like? He nodded. It's. I looked at the road. It's powerful. Like it has its own life in some way. You can't really think or sleep without having your mate close by, but you also realize the moment you look at them that they are the piece you have been missing. That empty hole we all got. It just gets filled when you meet your mate. The bond can't really be explained, because we all experience it differently. I feel it almost like a second heartbeat that beats strongly when my mate is content and happy, and slower if she is sad or she is pulling away a little. It's just powerful, and it can both make you ten times stronger or crush you into nothing, but I am sure you know the last part or you wouldn't have forced us to mark each other. I looked at my brother in an accusing way, and he just smiled at me. So I looked at the road again, as the silence filled the car. I did it for you. I glanced at my brother. What? I asked. I made you mark each other because I knew that was what you craved deep down. You wanted her, but her past was holding her back. She needed a little push. You both did, and see where it got you, he said. You mean another person you can use against me? I did not need to make you mark each other to use her against you, he said, and I saw he had a point. Just because I marked Cecilia did not make her any less my mate than before. I did it because I knew you craved it and needed it, and it was driving you crazy that she would not allow you closer. You are happy now, brother. I see it, and I want you to be. You want me to be happy? He nodded. Landon you took my life from me. I gave you one. Lucian. It was hard to understand my brother's words. How could he say he gave me a life when I was so happy with my family? I loved my parents. I loved my home. 
I loved the life I had before. So, no, he did not give me a life, or he gave me a rotten one. He had no idea of the things I had been forced to do just to survive, so no, he did not give me a life. I knew my brother could feel the change in my mood, but he just smiled at me, and I shook my head. The last thing you gave me was a life. I said. The things I was forced to do to survive I mean how can you ask me to be your family again when you never came to get me? Did you want me to? I glanced at my brother, who was almost studying me, probably looking for the truth in me. Did I? Had I over the years thought it was better to be with my brother than with my aunt and uncle? Maybe I did, but when I had thought about being with my brother, I had thought of the brother I knew before he killed our parents. The one who protected me. No! I said coldly. Probably the best thing you did was to stay away, I wish it would have stayed that way. I glanced at my brother to see his reaction, but he just smiled, as he looked out of the window for a little while, before he broke the silence. I thought about it many, many times, to come get you but I believed after what I did you needed a few years to cool off. Cool of? I know how that sounds. No, you fucking don't. I said. You talk about family. You talk about us, but you have no idea what it even means. I have a family now. One I care deeply about, and one who has never tortured me or killed my parents. I never tortured you. Landon said. You picked on me too. To make you stronger. You always got me into trouble. I said. And were those moments, before the trouble came, not some of the best fucking moments in your life? He asked me. I didn't really answer that, because we both already knew what the answer was. I wouldn't have been so excited about getting in this car if those moments before trouble came weren't some of the most amazing ones. As kids, you just experienced the world differently and those happy moments become core values in you. They became part of you in ways that you couldn't explain. So, Landon already knew the answer. You killed our parents. I finally said. Our parents you mean your parents. He said. You almost killed me. I never wanted you dead. He said. Really? I asked and looked at him, not believing that. I remembered the flames and the heat. I remembered the feeling of getting my skin burned. So, no. I did not believe for a moment that he did not want me dead. It's true, he said. I almost died. I didn't ask you to go try to save our parents. I was coming for you, he said. For me? He nodded. You woke up before I could get to you though, he said. And then you tried to save them, even though there was no way you could have. I looked at my brother, suddenly seeing everything in a new light of what happened that night over ten years ago, and it was almost more terrifying now. I wake up, as I smell the smoke. It invades my nostrils, and I quickly sit up, to see the ceiling of my room covered in smoke already. I try to find an escape. I run to the windows, opening them and letting it out, before I run to the door, only to see the fire has caught onto the other side of the house. I hear violent screams coming from the other end, and I know who is screaming. Mom! Dad! I yell, and storm down the hallway trying not to focus on how my lungs get filled with smoke and it feels so hard to breathe. I must get to them. It is all I can focus on, but before I reach their end, someone stops me, tackling me to the side, so we go crashing into the wall beside us. I look over my shoulder and see my brother, not understanding why he is stopping me. I try to get free of his grip, but he holds onto me too tightly. He is still so much stronger than me. Don't, Luke, he said. You can't. Let me go. Why are you stopping me? I push back and finally, he loosens his hold on me. But when I take a step back and look at him, I see his favorite lighter in his hand, and I see the way he is already covered in dirt and soot. I can see the answer on his face before I even ask the question. I whisper. Luke, no. The screams are getting louder now, and I turn to look over my shoulder. Mom. I know she is the one screaming, and I quickly turn on my heel, ready to save her. But when I try to, I get tackled again, and Landon and I roll over the ground until I land underneath him. What have you done? I shouted as I hear the screams slowly stopping. They are our parents. You don't know anything, Luke. I am doing this for us, he said. 
I shook my head, done listening, as I fight back, so fueled by anger now, my blood pumps stronger now, filling me with an ancient strength inside of me. I growl so loudly that the whole house shakes, and then I finally push him of me. I attack Landon, getting on top of him, and punch him over and over, until blood spills from his nose and mouth, but he doesn't allow me the upper hand for long. He grabs my wrists, and holds on so tightly I can't move. I am your family, he shouts. I don't listen to a word he says. I am too angry, but then I see his eyes growing big. He is not watching me though, but something above us. I look up to see the ceiling coming down, and I push away, just as burning wood comes towards us. I try to get away, but one of the burning beams comes towards me and lands on my stomach. I scream in pain before my body once again gets filled with strength, and I am able to push it of me. I look down and see the flesh on my stomach red and already filled with blisters. I try to touch it, but it just shoots a violent pain through me. Really a bad night to only wear pants. I turn to where my brother is, and see him lying on the ground not moving. Landon? I ask, scared. He doesn't respond. Landon? I run over to him and see him lying under a beam as well, and it lies high on his chest, going over the side of his face. Landon? I whisper and shake him. Landon? His eyes snap open, and he looks at me, before he throws himself towards me, pushing me back, but he doesn't attack me. He just stands up and looks down at me, while he hisses in pain. We look at each other, almost like strangers would, and I can't believe what it is I am seeing, as I look at him. I see the monster that everyone else sees too. He is evil Landon doesn't say anything, as he turns on his heel and runs out of there. I try to follow him, but he is already far gone by the time I get out of the house. This is not over. I whisper. You will pay for this, brother. My brother and I just looked at each other, as the old memory ran like a fucking bad movie inside of my head. I slowly turned back to the road again, shaking my head a little. I never asked you to do it. I said. I loved our parents. They would have torn us from each other. Maybe it was for the best. I whispered, and felt the atmosphere turn dark and angry. I glanced at my brother with a cold look, showing him that I did not feel any gratitude for what he did that night. Maybe it was best they sent you south. Do you know what is in the south? He asked. I'm guessing Andrew's father since you brought him up. I said. Landon nodded. And do you know what he does? Landon asked. What? I asked, bored, pretty much done with this road trip. My brother smiled, but there was something different about this smile. He looked like someone who was smiling through his own fears. He breaks out. Cecilia, I didn't like waking up without Lucian. Now that we were mated and connected fully, I just couldn't really sleep without him, and his side of the bed felt so cold when I woke up. I just didn't like it. Goddess have I become needy? I whispered to myself as I ate some breakfast and smiled. It's not so bad, is it? I see you have come around. I chuckled. My wolf didn't answer me, but just shrugged almost and lay down, looking so content and happy. She might have been scared in the beginning. Maybe even more than me, but she had clearly changed her mind because she felt so relaxed now and happy. She had given in to Lucian's wolf, and I had given in to Lucian. It seemed to be the best decision we had ever made. I really hoped things would run smoothly from here, not that I didn't know every relationship was put to the test, but I hoped we could overcome it all together. I had hope, actually. I believed we were strong enough, but there was something I needed to figure out, and that was if I could still have kids. Would Lucian still want to be with me if I couldn't? He is different. Of course, he will. I almost wanted to laugh. My wolf had clearly changed sides completely because now she was defending Lucian and saying he would never leave us. It made me smile and made my heart beat faster. Yeah, he is different. I whispered before I cleaned up and got ready to go for my run. Lucian had made me forget my runs lately because he had put my energy to different use, but now I needed just a moment to myself. I loved my runs. It was where I felt free. I walked to the front door after I had cleaned up, 
but when I opened the door, I was met with a surprise. Nolan? I whispered. Cecilia. He said and smiled. What are you doing here? I asked, confused. I. Nolan looked nervous, and that was very strange. I had never seen him being nervous before. He had always seemed so confident, and now he was there, looking like he was not sure what to do with himself. I thought we could talk. He said. Talk. He had to have been eating something very strange this morning to come up with this insane idea, or maybe Lucian really did do some brain damage. Nolan looked better now though. His eye had healed and so had most of his face, but Lucian had definitely proven he was strong if he could do so much damage that Nolan, who was an alpha too, found it hard to heal from. Yeah. I don't have anything to say to you. I said and walked out, closing the door behind me and showing him that I was not going to wait for him or anything, as I walked away. He followed me anyway, and it annoyed me so much. I put in my earphones and acted like I was just going to ignore him, but then he grabbed my arm and yanked out my earphones. Hey! I said and turned to him. Just give me a minute. He said. You don't even deserve a second. I told him. Please, cease. Don't call me that. You know I hated that, I said. Let's just talk. I told you. I don't have anything to talk to you about, I said, and pulled my arm back before I tried walking away, but he continued to follow me. I had no idea, he said. I don't know what you are talking about. Cecilia. He ran over to me and grabbed my arm a little gentler this time and turned me to him. We were getting quite far from the house and I was not sure I should go any further when it was clear he did not want to leave me alone. I could fight but he was still a male and an alpha. Just wait. He said. For what? I waited for you for years. I said. Why should I wait now? I had no idea you were pregnant. You don't say I saw the look on your face when you read my file. I said. I know you didn't know. If I had. Then what? I asked angrily. What would you have done? You still fucked someone else behind my back, and you made sure I would see it. I know I betrayed our bond. He said. Oh, do you know? What self-insight you have? I said, full of sarcasm. But if I had known you were pregnant, I would never have done what I did. He said. Why didn't you tell me? I tried. I yelled. I tried telling you, but you were busy fucking your mistress and rejecting me. And you know what? I am happy you did it because now I am actually happy. I would have been stuck with you, miserable and pregnant, because if you and your family knew I was pregnant you would never have let me go, and I would have thought it was fine. As long as my mate continued to be bound to me, then everything was fine. That is how much you and your family, besides Isaac, broke me. You made me think, because of how low my status was, that I did not deserve more than to just stand by your side and look pretty. It didn't matter if you had a hundred different mistresses. I would just have to be fine with it, but I am not I am happy now because Lucian actually wants me. He wants a future with me, and he could not care at all about status. Is that what you think? He asked. I know it, and don't try to act like you know Lucian better than me. You might have known when he was just another social alpha, but he is more now. He is part of the king's pack, and with his new family, he has become what he was always meant to be. A true alpha. A true alpha? Nolan laughed. What the fuck is that even? Someone who doesn't need to flaunt their wealth and power to prove they are strong. I said. Lucian knows he is and he doesn't need to shout that he is an alpha or drive expensive cars or wear certain designer clothes. He walks into a room and you already know he is someone to fear and respect. That is a true alpha. And yet he will never lead. Nolan said. No, because he doesn't need to and neither does a true alpha. There used to be a lot more of you, and there used to be a lot more packs to lead as well, but in reality, an alpha is a protector and it doesn't matter if someone is from your pack or not. You still protect. 
Lucian does that. He fought a war to protect us. All of the king's men and the king have fought several wars just to protect everyone. They know what it means to be true alphas, and not even all of them are alphas. I mean, why do you think James is strong enough to be with Lara? It comes from inside you, and it is something I have had to learn as well, but I have learned it. Titles are nothing, it is who you are and what you do with the power you are born with that defines how strong you will become. All that status crap is just something we as people have invented to push others down and give powerful people more power. I said. And I am not saying that, of course, a lone wolf isn't as strong as an alpha. An alpha will always be stronger, but that inner power, the one that demands submission, is not just something that is given. Weak alphas only get it because of the pain and the manipulation they inflict. True alphas walk into a room and people give it up right away. You have met the king, and you know what he can do. That is a true alpha. An alpha of all alphas pretty much. Nolan just stared at me as I continued to ramble on and on, but it felt good to finally get all of this out. It felt good not to be scared to talk back or tell him what I thought of him. He always commented on me. Telling me how boring I was or plain I was, telling me he didn't want to have sex with me because I never made it interesting when, in reality, he just never put an effort into it anyway, and I couldn't keep making it interesting. Especially not when he kept criticizing me. So, it just felt so damn good to finally speak my mind and show Nolan that I would never again bow to him. So, yeah, Lucian might never lead, but he does not have to. You know his power once you meet him, and I am sure you know his fists as well. They have become quite close with your face. I taunted. Nolan narrowed his eyes a little, but I had expected more. Maybe like anger or an insult, but nothing came, as we looked at each other, and I felt like I had one. I smiled, as I took a step back, ready to turn away. He can't give you what you truly need, he said. And what is that? A true bond, Nolan said. Lucian is my true mate, of course, he can, I said. Nolan shook his head. I am your first mate, and it is not like I died, he said. Your bond will never be like ours. Do you remember the first time we saw each other? How powerful it was. We marked each other right away, unable to help ourselves. I did remember that. We had randomly run into each other on a night out at a club, and the moment we looked at each other, it took us about ten minutes to find a bathroom that was not occupied, and then we marked each other and I had my first time in that bathroom. I had only just turned 18 the night before now that I thought back on it, despite remembering those powerful feelings, I also felt ashamed. What had I been thinking? But I hadn't I had been young and so happy I had found my mate. Now I felt stupid. It doesn't change anything. It changes everything. Nolan said and stepped closer. We belong to each other. What? I know you want me back. He said. What the fuck? Lucian. He breaks alphas I just looked at my brother, not sure what the hell that meant, and it made me unfocused, so I almost ran into a truck on the other side of the road. It honked and I quickly turned the wheel, trying to save us from certain death. Fuck! I shouted, and quickly got the car under control again. In the meantime, my brother was laughing like crazy, and I looked over at him angrily. That's not funny. Oh. But it is, brother, he said, and continued to laugh. It is. I didn't know what it was, but suddenly I was laughing too. Maybe I was just happy I had not just collided with that truck, but I couldn't stop myself, and laughed softly, shaking my head again. What was going on? I asked myself. Why did it almost feel easy to be around my brother? I knew what he did, but something in me changed when I was around him. I remembered when we were kids, I felt closer to him than anyone. Sometimes it felt like we could read each other's thoughts or that we shared a connection with each other that none of the other wolves did. I had heard twins shared a mind link to, but I had never really had it confirmed. Landon and I never really tested it or asked anyone if they knew what we were up to. Father almost always knew when we were up to something, 
so I guessed I'd just drop the idea. Maybe our cold connection was again growing back it couldn't though. You feel it, don't you? He asked me. Don't know what you mean, I said. Don't know what you mean, I said. Fine, you are not ready to admit it, but don't lie to me. You know how I feel about lies, he said. I sighed and shook my head. Seriously, Landon, why bring me out here? This cannot just be some brotherly bonding road trip, I said. And what if it is? He asked me, as I glanced at him and saw him smile calmly. Then you have lost your mind if you think I will let this erase everything else. We will see, he said. Landon. Weren't you asking me about Andrew's father? He asked me back quickly. I sighed and knew when Landon was playing with me, but even though I did not want to get distracted, I also wanted to know more about Andrew's father. Breaks Alphas, what the hell did that mean, and why had I never heard of him? More importantly, when Landon brought him up at the party, Andrew seemed to pale like crazy, and I did sense some worry from Rick. Did Rick know his father too? Why had Rick never mentioned him? I can see your mind working, Landon said. Just continue. I told him. I mean how can you even be sure he is Andrew's father? Because they look like copies, he said. You have met him? I asked. Only seen him. So, that threat at the party. Was just a trap, Landon said. It was a way to play with Andrew's mind. There is only one thing that that wolf fears, and that is his father. Rick too. Wait, Rick fears his father too? Andrew's, yes, he said. How do you think those two alphas met? Wait, what? Alphas. Honestly, brother, have you done no background check on these people you cal? Family he asked and looked at me like I was the weird one. No. I trust them. I said. Well, that's stupid. He said. No. That is family. You trust each other. So, Andrew and Rick are not even lone wolves, but Alphas and Andrew's father is someone who breaks Alphas I am not sure I understand. I said. Andrew's father, Easton, has an Alpha camp. Landon said. I felt my blood turn cold and I quickly looked at my brother, completely shocked as I heard this, but Landon just smiled calmly as he saw the shocked look on my face. That's fucking illegal. I said. I'm aware. He said. I turned to the road, leaning an arm on the door as I thought over what my brother had just told me. An alpha camp those things were brutal. Long ago they were used to shaping alphas into the most brutal and violent ones. They would reach their maximum potential and become some of the strongest wolves alive. I most likely descended from some of them, because they definitely made sure to continue the line and send their sons to those camps too, but they were evil. The alphas there were put through some horrific things in order for them to reach their full potential. It was made illegal a long time ago because, even though it made some of the strongest wolves, it also cost many of their lives, and some of those alphas turned into beasts, who were almost unstoppable. The risks were just not worth it in the end. Therefore, I was so surprised Landon said this Easton had made this camp and had kept it running. Did Valerio not know? No, the king does not know, Landon said. I turned to my brother and saw him smile. I said that out loud. He shook his head. No, but it was not hard to figure out what you were thinking, he said. Oh how? I mean our father knew, so how could Valerio not? Well, it is a little secret among the upper class, and they have made sure Valerio wouldn't know. You mean they kept it a secret, so they could send their sons there? I said. Landon nodded. No. Yes. No, father would never want to put you through something like that. He might have been tough sometimes, but he was not cruel. I yelled. Our father had treated us well. He never raised a hand, he might have raised his voice when we deserved a proper scolding but he was never evil, and I saw the way he was with the pack and with our mother too. Always kind, always fair, and always showed his pack that he cared. Maybe you didn't know him that well, Landon said. No, stop that. I know what you were doing, but I knew our parents, and I am sure mother would never have allowed it. I said. You have too much faith in people, he said. Landon. They were running out of options, brother. 
They saw what I was or they thought they did you were really the only one who truly saw me. The last part he whispered, but I heard him anyway and I glanced over at him and saw him looking out of the window with a strange look in his eyes. Was that sadness? No, Landon could not feel that, could he? So, you might think I am the monster, he said. But all I wanted was to be with my family. Dad would have pulled me from you, and who knows, I might have died in that camp. If anyone was going to survive it, it is you. I said. Landon looked at me and we smiled at each other. I wouldn't have let him. I said, and looked at the road. We were kids, how are you going to stop him? He asked me. I sighed and knew he was right. I just couldn't believe that was really our parents' last option. That they even considered it an option. I need to tell the king about it. I said. About the camp. Good luck. Easton moves the camp all the time. You won't be able to find him. Landon said. You did. Well, I am special, he said. I glanced at him with a look that said really? And it made him laugh. Ask your friends about him. I think it is time they fix their me's, don't you? What do you mean? I asked him. Andrew and Rick are both supposed to be in that camp, but they're not, he said. Why? Yes, why is that? He asked me. I shrugged a little. I don't know they didn't want to be, I said. No, they did not, but such a camp you are not supposed to escape from, he said. But they did? I asked. Why don't you ask them? He asked me. Are you saying I can't trust them? Can you? Landon. He chuckled a little. Secrets, brother secrets, he said. Good thing your mate doesn't have more, right? I sighed, but did not comment on that. I would only fall into one of his traps, but I trusted Cecilia and knew she was safe back at the house. Cecilia. I just stared at Nolan. Could I do anything else? I mean the nerve the male had. How dare he come here and talk like that. Acting like I wanted him back. Acting like the bond one had with Lucian was nothing compared to what I once had with him, but I knew my bond with Lucian was much stronger. No, it did not make me lose my mind like it did with Nolan, but that was only good. My bond with Lucian was good and pure, and healthy. It pulsed like a steady heartbeat between us, constantly reassuring one another that we loved each other. I had never felt the same with Nolan. No, I only felt sick. Not at the beginning, of course, but shortly after, everything turned sour and I turned weaker because of it. Maybe it wasn't so weird I couldn't carry my daughter to term. I had not been shown the care I needed. While I wouldn't blame it all on Nolan, I certainly thought he had played a role, and I would never forgive him for it. How can you say that? I asked him as I walked closer. He did not seem shaken by my anger but just smiled. You know I am right. No, you are wrong. You are so fucking wrong. I told him angrily. I understand that the bond we had was powerful but you betrayed it, and now you can lie in the bed as you made it. I love Lucian. I love him and I will not change my mind. Nolan seemed angry about my words, but I would not take them back, because they were true. They were truer than any words I had ever spoken, and maybe that was an exaggeration, but I did not care. Cecilia. Go home, Nolan. We are over, I said and tried walking away. He grabbed my arm again and forcefully pulled me back. We are not over. We have a child for goddess's sake. A dead child. I shouted and pushed him back. You want another? Go fuck you mistress oh I mean you're Luna. You can't so easily just give up on us. He shouted. Me? You were the one who gave up, Nolan. You. I shouted back. This will not hold. This thing between you and Lucian. It is not good. He said. What the hell do you know? I know his brother wants him back. He said. He wants him home. You think there will be room for you when those two become brothers again? How do you know this? I asked him. It's not hard to figure out. Why else would he be at that trial? He said. Perhaps sociopaths just know each other well. I said. Seriously Cecilia. He said. I will do better this time. 
Have you lost your mind? I asked him. You are mated to someone else. I am aware. He said. You can't have the whole fucking cake. I will just take you back with me, and then we will figure it all out. You are crazy. I laughed like I couldn't believe he was suggesting this. Cecilia. He tried coming closer, but I took a few steps back. Don't, or I will scream. I told him. Scream. I am not alone anymore. I said. I know that if I shout loud enough someone will come running. I was not a damsel in distress, but I also knew when my opponent could take me on easily, and despite being a social alpha, Nolan could take me. He was just born stronger. I might be able to hold him of, but I could not actually fight him of. Do you think I am dangerous? He asked me with a little smile. I think you have lost your mind. Our daughter is dead, Nolan. I said and saw the shocked look on his face, as I told him we had lost a daughter. She isn't coming back, and she was the last tie between us. Now go home. We can start over. He said. No, we can't. Cecilia, I made a mistake. You made too many to count. I shouted. The death of our bond was not when our daughter died, it was when you fucked someone else. No, it was before that. It was when you turned away from me. When you would barely even look at me. When you kept saying how you could always do better. You killed it, and now you have to live with it. We can do better this time. There is no second chance between us. I said. I found mine, and I want to spend my life with him. And are you sure he wants to spend his life with you? He asked me. Nolan, stop I doubted Lucian, to begin with because of you, but I realized I was wrong. I realized Lucian is nothing like you, and thank the goddess he is not, because then I don't have to fear him leaving me. And where is he right now? Nolan asked. Excuse me? I asked where Lucian is right now. I looked at Nolan for a long time, seeing a smug smile on his lips, and I took a step closer. Did you know Lucian was not going to be home today? I asked him. What? He asked, acting stupid. Nolan, did you know? I asked angrily. Did Landon send you here? Nolan seemed to think about it for a long time but then smiled and nodded. Yeah, he did. So, you're just a distraction? He shook his head, but I was worried now. Why was Nolan here? Was Landon going to do something horrible to Lucian and wanted to keep me distracted so I wouldn't feel it through the bond before it was too late? No, I wanted to come here. Landon just informed me when Lucian wouldn't stand in the way. Nolan explained. You expect me to believe that? I want us to start over. We can't. I said. Now I need to go find Lucian. Cecilia. He called as I walked away and pulled out my phone so I could call Lucian but just as I had it in my hand, it was snatched away. Hey! I shouted and turned to Nolan. Give that back to me. Not until we are done talking. We are done. We have been done for a long time. I said. And I am not going to let Landon manipulate Lucian anymore. He never wanted us to be together. He just wanted to show Lucian what true betrayal is like. Am I not right? He hoped I would leave Lucian after he marked me. He wanted Lucian to come crawling back to him after I betrayed him, but when that didn't work, you were sent here, and now Landon hopes my pathetic old love for you will somehow come back. Well, it won't, and I am no longer the weak little lone wolf I was. I am not just going to come running back to you, because you suddenly want me. I do want you, Cecilia. No, you just don't want others to have me. Nolan knew I was right, but he would never admit it. Phone. I said and held out my hand. No. Nolan. I stepped closer, but then I felt a strange feeling going through me. At first, I was not sure what it was, but then suddenly I felt a pain in my lower stomach, like someone was squeezing my insides with their hand. Oh no. I remembered this. It was the beginning of my heat. I could even feel my body starting to warm up. No, 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 no. 
Cecilia. I looked at Nolan to see his eyes shine a faint yellow. He must already be a little affected, even if he hadn't realized why yet. I, I have to go. Not yet. Nolan said and grabbed my arm as I tried running for the house. Shit his touch oh goddess just him touching my arm no. That's not my mate. I thought, but still, my body was not really listening to my head. What the hell did I do? Lucian, you were always terrible at pool, I said as I watched my brother push away from the table, shaking his head in disappointment. Well, I was always the clever one, he said. Not the best at games. You like playing games, I said as I leaned over the table. After driving for a little while, we ended up stopping at this old bar. It was rather a crappy bar only filled with those local drunks, and yet, for some reason, we stayed and played a round of pool or maybe three rounds, and got some beers. I knew it was wrong of me to do this. I shouldn't be hanging out with him again, but I told myself I had promised him a day after all, so I was just keeping my end of the deal sadly, I seemed to be enjoying this more than I should. Well, not these kinds of games, he said, as he watched me gracefully send a colored ball into one of the holes in the corner. No, you just like to play with people. I said as I stood up and looked at him. He shrugged a little. Maybe that is because they make it so easy, he said. All you have to do is stop and listen, and they will telephone you their darkest secrets without even realizing it. He picked up his beer and took a sip. Alcohol helps too. Yes, I know you love that stuff as much as you love gasoline. I said. Landon shrugged again, not even trying to deny it or cow me out on my attitude. He just smiled as I walked around the table, leaning over it again. I would never kill you, he said, just as I sent another ball on its way and it fell into a hole. Is that a promise? I asked and looked at him. Landon met my eyes and nodded. That's a promise. And what does your word mean to me? I asked him. Everything. I looked at him for a while and then shook my head. But you will not promise the same thing for my family. I said. That's because they're not my family, he said. They could have been had you made better choices. Landon shook his head. I only need you, brother. I made another excellent shot and then sighed. I can't make you the same promise I just can't. I whispered, feeling my heart being ripped to pieces as I said the words. I stood up and looked at my brother, but I could not read him. He just closed of, and I feared this would make him take his words back and come for me after the day was over. I know, he said. I looked at him shocked. You know? Brother, your conscience would never allow you to let it go, he said. It's more than that. Now you have a mate to protect, he said. I nodded. Well, she is my family now too. I won't touch her, he said. Unless you come for me, of course. Of course, I said. I promise you will not harm a hair on her head, as long as you don't kill me, he said. Or make someone else do it. I could hear the unsaid words when he said the last part. He knew who we had among us. He knew Phoenix was now the leader of the Dark Soldiers, who were all trained killers and damn good at sneaking up on someone and slitting their throat. Landon made sure I knew he knew who we had among us, and if I tried to send someone else, he would hurt Cecilia. Why he wanted me to mark her? Is this to keep her dangling over my head? I asked. I could have dangled our cousin over your head or Rick or the Queen or anyone else. You are good, brother, and will not let others die for you, he said. But since you brought up your mate, I am just saying I will gladly leave her alone if you just do the same with me. I thought you wanted us to spend time together. Sure, but I also want to know I won't find a knife in my back when I turn away from you, he said. I don't really do backstabbing, I said, and we smiled at each other as a silence suddenly stretched out between us for a few seconds. It could have been different. It couldn't. If you had not taken the pack. Could you really look beyond our parents' death? He asked me. I nodded. Come on, Luke. He said. We both know you can't. You still hate me for it. Then what did you think would change by coming back here? I asked. By forcing me on this trip. Because if your hatred is all I can have, then so be it. He said before nodding to the table. It's still your turn. I leaned over the table, 
but was too distracted this time and missed the shot, letting the turn go to Landon, who suddenly, after losing two games, fired one ball after the other into the hole and won in seconds. He stood up and smiled, as I watched him. You let me win? I asked him. He just drank the rest of his beer. Brother, I am just showing you I have many tricks up my sleeve, he said, but I understood it was a warning, that if I tried anything he would show sights to himself that I had not seen yet. Don't ever underestimate me. I shook my head a little, as I watched him go get us more alcohol. I sighed as I placed my hands on the table, thinking it all over a little. This trip Landon wanting us to be brothers again his hidden threats it all just seemed so damn weird. I couldn't quite place my finger on what was wrong, but I knew Landon was not using this day just for some brotherly bonding. I refused to believe it. I turned my head again and saw him talking to the female bartender, making her actually laugh, and not laugh in a half funny way, but in that way when someone was being flirted with or felt flattered. What the hell? Landon said he had no interest in anyone really. He told me he had tried once to be intimate with someone and nothing of it was interesting to him. Now he was flirting with the bartender and actually winning her over. It was clear my brother was showing me many new sights to him. Yes, he might have a huge scar on the side of his face, but the tattooed human female with all the piercings certainly didn't seem to care. If you had charm and confidence, you didn't really need much else. I knew that, but still, he surprised me. Soon though, he came over with two beers and two glasses of scotch. I watched as he placed them on the edge of the table and I grabbed one, before taking a sip. I already knew he hadn't poisoned them because I had had three by now, but a smile was on his lips as he watched me drink my drink with ease. So, now you're flirting with bartenders. I said, and looked at my brother. It gave us free drinks. She gave you these. I asked, impressed. I had charmed myself to some free drinks, of course, but I was surprised my brother could do it. Yeah, he said and took a sip himself. I thought you had no interest in females, or is it just wolves you don't like? My brother chuckled a little. Did I fuck her? He asked. I shook my head. Flirting is just another game between people, he said. I can say all sorts of crap and make it seem like I truly mean them. I thought you didn't lie. I teased him. For free drinks, I will. He joked. We both laughed, as we started the game again. No letting me win this time. I said and pointed at him. He held up his hands. Your funeral, he said, and we smiled at each other. What the hell was I doing? Cecilia. His touch oh shit. I needed him to touch me all over no. No, that was not Lucian but the pain, the heat, his touch. Oh, it felt so good. I remembered now the times he had touched me, and those times he had been there for me in my heat. Nolan was reliable, and I needed him now. I needed him to take good care of me because I could barely think straight. All I knew was I was in pain, my pussy was drooling and my core was clenching. I needed it to be filled. I craved it. Someone needed to help me, and Nolan was right there. I knew he could take good care of me. I tried not to let the pain get to me, as I moved closer to Nolan, seeing his own eyes shine a faint yellow. I could see the smug look on his lips and I liked how good he looked. I wanted him naked. I needed him to rip our clothes apart and take me right there on the damn sidewalk. I can see it was good I came, he said darkly. Nolan. I got out. It was unbelievable I could even speak, but I had not lost myself completely. His name sounded more like a purr though, and when I spoke his name, he wrapped his arms around me and brought me close to his hard body. Oh yes, more more. Nolan reached up, squeezing my breast through my sports bra, and the touch made me let out a little pleasurable scream. It was not enough though. Why was he taking his time? I needed more. Take me. His eyes shone completely yellow now, and then he pushed me to the ground. We did not care if there were other people awake at this time in the day or if they could see us from their windows. I just needed someone to fuck me now. I did not care where. Nolan felt so good on top of me, as he settled between my legs, 
but just as I closed my eyes ready to receive the wonderful feeling of his hands on me and his cock inside of me, I felt his weight being lifted of me. I opened my eyes, seeing no one there. I pushed up and saw James had practically taken Nolan by the back of his neck and was holding him up like you would a kitten. I would have laughed if I wasn't so far gone in my heat because it was so funny to see an alpha like Nolan being treated like that. James let out a powerful growl that literally made a car parked nearby send of its alarm, and then he threw Nolan away like he was trash. Nolan rolled a few times over the ground but was quickly up on his feet again. This was what a female's heat could do. It would make males go crazy. Unmated or mated, and their only focus was getting the right to mate with the female in heat. I felt wetter as I saw the two alphas fight over me, because my heat was already controlling me, but watching James kick Nolan's as also seemed to snap me out of my trance a little. I shook my head once, seeing James's hands wrapped around Nolan's neck. I shook my head again and saw him literally being thrown into his car, and I shook my head for a third time seeing James turn his attention to me, but he was shaking his head like me. Like he was trying to get out of the trance my heat was clearly putting him in. I could see his entire body shaking as he fought the cow from my body that demanded, despite being mated to Lara, that he took care of me. As a wave of pain went through me, my body responded by sending out hormones, and that did it. It pushed James over the edge, and then he was coming for me, but he had only taken a few steps before Lara came running out of the gate and stopped right in front of him. Wow, wow, easy, now. Lara said, sounding calm and collected because she knew it was not his fault. He did not mean to react to me. She isn't the one you want. Now that Lara was in front of him, James's instincts only roared more to life, and the claimed part of him, the part that belonged to Lara, stepped forward with full force, and he grabbed her roughly, ready to almost take her out there. Lara let him take her with him because he would need to fuck this out after being so affected by me. Helena will take you to my cabin. Lara shouted. And I have texted Lucian. I could barely understand a word she was saying, as I was lying there on the ground, an arm over my stomach and leaning on the other. James took her away, ready to focus all his attention on her like Lara was the one in heat. Luckily, Helena came running now that it was safe, and quickly went to me, taking my arm gently. Come, let me help you. Lucian. Lucian is coming. Just let me help you, Helena said. She slowly helped me stand and took me back to the house where all the cars were parked. She got me inside before we drove to Lara's cabin. Helena took me inside, but I couldn't walk anymore, so as soon as we went inside, I dropped to the floor and started tearing my clothes apart. I believed I heard a door close, but I could not care. The floor was so cool so cool. Lucian. Come now, brother, you have to choose, Landon said. It's an impossible choice. I said and shook my head. Another day with me in exchange for dad's car. Landon bargained. I am already regretting my choice of being here. I said and continued to shake my head. Landon chuckled. Come now, isn't dad's car worth it? Just another 24 hours. With you? I said. Exactly. Sounds like hell. I choked. Landon chuckled. We were now sitting at a table, just enjoying our last drink, while playing a game of quarters. I was able to get the coin into the glass between us, which forced Landon to drink. You survived a day with me, he said. Why not spend another? Because no matter how much time we spend together, it won't change what you did, I said. Landon and I looked at each other for a long time, until Landon got his coin into the glass between us. Drink, brother. I did. Why waste your time? I asked. We can't erase the past. I don't want to erase it, he said. You want to be a murderer? I asked. I wanted my freedom. I wanted our freedom. Our parents weren't bad people. Maybe not to you, he said. Landon, you tortured animals. I said. I killed them and hid their bodies. I didn't torture them, he said. A lot. I rolled my eyes. And the animals weren't the only ones you were after. I never hurt another wolf. You just made their lives miserable. I said. Secrets, brother, he said again. 
Secrets. Yes, I am aware you just used against them what would probably have ended up hurting them in the end. But seriously, we were kids and you found it funny when someone started to cry. I said. Because they looked so pathetic. I never laughed when you cried. I defended you. He said. I nodded. Yes, I know that too. Is that why it is so hard for you to kill me? He asked. Do you still remember a hero for a brother? I remember the good in you, yes. I said. I see and what do you see now? He asked me. Maybe I was kidding myself, but he almost seemed hopeful. Like I would actually see something more than a killer. Maybe I still did maybe today made me see more, but I also knew it couldn't blind me. Well, I. I sighed and wanted to tell him I saw nothing but an evil monster, but when I continued to look at him and into those familiar green eyes, I didn't see it or didn't only see that. I saw my brother. My brother. How did we end up being so different though? How did we end up acting so differently? Feeling different things. Well, he asked. I see you, Landon. I said. He smiled. Not really an answer. Or maybe it is. I said. You did say I was the only one who truly got you. That made my brother smile and not one of those evil smiles of his or smug smiles. No, this was a real smile. And it changed him completely. Maybe a day isn't. Suddenly, my phone vibrated on the table and I took it. But just as I reached for it, Landon's hand landed on top of mine. The day isn't quite over, he said. It is almost over, I said, and saw how much darker it had gotten outside. I pulled my hand from his and took my phone, and then I saw the thousand messages I had gotten and calls. I had promised my brother a day and he had gotten it, but now reality came crashing back as I read three words that stopped my world, Cecilia, in heat I turned to my brother, but he had closed it again. Did you get what you wanted, brother? I asked darkly. He did not answer me. I can't believe you. What? He asked. So, I sent her ex-mate back to her, so what? I was only trying to make you see the only one you can trust is me. She is in fucking heat, you asshole. I growled and stood up. I'm fucking out of here. Wait, Lucian. My brother didn't get to stop me. I stormed out of the door so damn fast and got in the car, driving away, leaving my brother behind. I had been gone for hours which meant Cecilia must have been hurting for so long now. I could barely focus as I drove far above the speed limit, only thinking about my little mate, who needed me. I'm coming, Wildcat. Cecilia. I touched myself until I was screaming in both pain and pleasure. I had touched myself over and over, trying to relieve the powerful heat in my body, but my body was hungry for something I couldn't give to it. So, it was almost painful now to touch myself. I just cried and cried, as I continued to come and my body spasmed, and my pussy drooled slick which covered my pussy lips, thighs, and asshole. I was dripping down on the floor and my hand was covered in it, but I could not stop. The orgasm gave me a break for a second and that second was precious. I sighed a little contently, but then the pain began again. The pain came in waves and went through me, moving towards my core and making it clench in hunger. I groaned and started to touch myself again, even though it was starting to get painful, I simply couldn't stop. I needed more. I needed more. I heard myself moan louder and louder, but then another sound joined in, something closing that was what I heard I believed. I was not sure. I was just lying on the ground, a sweaty and sticky MES, and I could not focus on anything else. It's okay, Wildcat. I will be right there. A voice? It felt good though. The voice felt like a cares over my skin, and I was able to turn myself a little, so I was lying on my side, and then I pushed up a little, resting on my arm. My eyes couldn't quite focus at first, but then I saw this unbelievably handsome male in front of me, who was undressing fast, and I grew hungrier than ever. His dark scent hit me so hard, that I moaned and pushed up on all fours, crawling towards him. I was too confused and lost in my heat to realize it was Lucian who had arrived. All I knew was I needed someone to fuck me until I couldn't move. Shit. The way he looked at me, only halfway undressed, it felt so damn good. 
It was like I was the sexiest little thing he had ever laid his eyes on, and it made him freeze with one of his shoes in his hands. I smiled smugly and got on my knees in front of him before I began to tug on his pants. I couldn't open them myself. I couldn't coordinate my own hands that well, but I knew he understood what I wanted. He quickly dropped his shoe, making a thudding sound echo in the little cabin, and then he opened his pants. He barely got to pull them off, before I was on him, taking his hard cock into my mouth, and started to suck him off. Shit, just the taste of him made me feel ten times better, and I continued to please him with my mouth, teasing the head of his cock with my tongue and scratching his thighs lightly with my nails. I heard a loud bang and noticed I had made my alpha tip backwards, so he was leaning against the door just so he could stay standing. Cecilia. His voice made my pussy clench and drip from him, but I simply couldn't stop sucking him off. I loved the taste of him. It made me feel so good, and I wanted to please him too. I knew he would not leave me, and I would show him just why he shouldn't. Okay. Enough. I could taste the salty taste of his pre-cum, but I was not done. I wanted him to come down my throat and fill me up in any way he could, but then he got a grip on my hair and gently pulled me off. My own saliva dripped down my chin and he reached out, wiping my lips with his thumb before he barked a command to me. Turn around. I couldn't really understand him. No words had meaning to me in this state, but he made a circular motion with his finger, and that, I understood. I quickly backed away and turned around, before I leaned forward, so Maya's was higher in the air. I heard a powerful and deep growl go through the cabin and it shook the damn ground. Only moments after, he was there behind me, grabbing my hips tightly, and then he slid inside of me in one go. It made us both moan with pleasure, and he did not wait for long before he started to move his hips, fast and hard, both of us going crazy right away. I scratched my nails over the floor as I felt the wonderful feeling of having him inside of me, fucking me hard with his big cock and giving me exactly what I needed. The grip he had on me was fucking brutal because I drove him that insane, but I loved his touch in whatever way I could get it, and the faster he fucked me the louder I got until I was screaming and sounding more like a wounded animal, but I was definitely not in pain. No, I was dancing on that sweet feeling of coming. And when I finally did, my whole body tensed so much it almost hurt, while I shook and cried for more. My alpha continued to fuck me harder, faster, pumping in and out of me, making such wicked sounds mixed together with our moaning and groaning. Fuck, it was so good. He was exactly what I needed. Why did he only find me now? Fuck! Suddenly Lucian let out a beast-like growl and then he was pumping his cum inside of me finally quenching the fire in me, and giving me a moment of peace, even though he was filling me up so much it was dripping out of me and mixing with my own arousal. We both sighed when we got that first break, and a little bit of the tense energy shimmered down, as we both recovered. Lucian pulled me back towards him, so I had my back against his front. He turned my head and kissed me, slowly moving his lips over mine, like he was adoring them. Sorry for being late. Again. I couldn't understand him, but there was something about the soft undertones of his voice that made me believe he was sad or regretful. Why was he sad? There was nothing to be sad about. I was feeling so much better now, and it was all thanks to him. I started to shake my head and kissed him harder to let him know everything he was doing to me was perfect. I only wanted him. Lucian pulled out of me and turned me around, as he started to kiss his way down my body, the painful waves started again. I whimpered, but just then his mouth found my pussy and he started to give it the attention it needed. He barely did anything to me, but suck on my clit, and then I was coming. I looked down to see his eyes almost glowing yellow, and it only turned me on more, but one orgasm wasn't enough. No, he licked me clean, before he started to fuck me with his tongue and play with my clit, until I was screaming and writhing and coming so hard it hurt but he only started it all over. He was practically drinking from me, wanting to taste me over and over. No. No. The waves were painful and I needed him to come inside of me. I growled annoyed and pushed up, but it was like he had just waited for me to try to claim him, because he pushed up, 
placing a hand on my shoulder and pushing me down again before he placed himself between my legs. He didn't give me any warning but just sank deep into me, making us both moan, as he wrapped a hand around my throat. Just gently grabbing it while he started to fuck me. Yes. 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 Oh, goddess. I could see my alpha was fighting not to come to fast, but I wanted his come. I wanted him to come fast and hard. I wanted him to lose himself to me, so I pushed up while pulling him closer to me, and then I sank my teeth into his shoulder, making him gasp before he pumped his cock hard into me and came over and over. I enjoyed the taste of his powerful blood, it made me feel stronger and more connected to him, but it was the last thought I had before I lost consciousness. When I woke up again, I was no longer on the floor. No, I was in a bed with this iron headboard, and it was creaking loudly, as Lucian moved on top of me. He was holding onto the iron, as he drove into me hard so I could feel his cock practically hitting the end of my channel. Are you awake again, wildcat? I didn't believe I had been sleeping, but it was not strange to lose touch with reality. Sometimes the instincts in us just took over and we lost control for a moment as we were ruled by our baser needs oh wait I understood him. Yeah, the words leaving Lucian's mouth I understood. Or at least I believed I did. Wait, what was he saying again? Do you need more of me? He asked darkly as he continued to move his hips at a slower pace. This time I understood nothing, but just nodded anyway and sank my nails into his tight as that was clenching every time he thrust into me. Shit. He started to move faster, the bed making more sounds and banging against the wall. I started to come and I leaned my head back and moaned loudly, making all sorts of sounds I didn't know I could make, and Lucian was not far behind me before he howled and came hard with me. You're driving me insane. I didn't get what he was saying. I just kissed him and bit his lower lip, taking my time to play with him and enjoy the feeling of him while we rested. It's going to be over soon. I promise. I didn't care about words. I just wanted him, and I hoped he felt how much I appreciated he was there, because I knew no one could take as good care of me as he did. Lucian. It had been one hell of a surprise when I had finally arrived at the cabin and found Cecilia on the ground, touching herself like she couldn't stop. Like she had gone mad or something. She was facing away from me, so her dripping pussy was completely on display for me. I could not take my eyes of her. I knew she needed me, so I had to concentrate, but as I spoke, it finally made her focus on me and she came crawling to me on all fours. She was like the darkest and filthiest fantasy coming to life, as she looked up at me with glowing yellow eyes. She was so far into her heat when I arrived, there was nothing but an animal in front of me, and she was desperate for cock. For my cock. She had wanted to play a little first, using her dirty mouth on me, and shit it had made me almost forget why I was there. I could barely even stand. I had to get her to stop and commanded her to turn around, so I could focus on fucking her, and when I slid inside of her burning core fuck, I was done for. I had not stopped fucking her since. I simply couldn't. Her pussy was wrapped around me so tightly, there was no way I would not give her every drop of cum in me. She practically milked it from me and gave me some of the most powerful orgasms I had ever had. After fucking a few times on the ground, I moved us to one of the bedrooms. I did not want my mate to lie on the ground, so I made it to a small bedroom close by, lying her down on the soft mattress before I continued to fuck her and fuck her. We were just animals, yet I sensed when Cecilia was more present and when she was not. Sometimes there were only her instincts, and sometimes it was like she moved to the surface to have her way with me as well. I had arrived rather late though, so I had lost a few hours with her, and her heat would last about 24 hours, and so I knew it would not be long before my mate came back to me, but I would enjoy every second I was awake of this. Though I lost myself to my instincts a few times too. One moment I was moving my hips between her legs, and the next I was on my back. My mate riding me so hard I was seeing stars, and the way her sweet breasts moved with every little move, just drove me crazy. I grabbed her hips hard and started to come. Fuck Wildcat. It was done for. I had no power when she was riding me, but it was like she wanted that. She wanted me to lose myself, 
so she could get from me what she wanted, which was my cum deep inside her womb and quenching the fire in her. When she finally got to rest a little, she moved closer to me and kissed me, her hair falling over us like a curtain and I loved the sight of it. I brushed it back and loved the feeling of her lips moving over mine slowly like she was thanking me just for being there, but there was nowhere else I wanted to be. I could feel and smell it when her pain started again. Her pussy would squeeze me tighter and she would start shaking and sweating, while the room was filled with the sweetest scent of her arousal, getting me so turned on, that my cock could not go down even if I wanted it to. I knew I would be drained after this, but I did not mind. I loved every second of this and when she began to move again, I just leaned back and enjoyed the feeling of her pussy sliding up and down my shafts. You're so beautiful. I whispered, but I knew she understood nothing. She just moaned loudly and leaned back, taking from me what she needed. It made her push her breasts out and I quickly moved up from the bed to suck on one of them. I had not given them the attention they deserved. Cecilia moaned louder and started to move faster and I helped her move her hips at a maddening tempo that made us both dizzy until we were coming together. I only closed my eyes for a second, but when I opened them again, Cecilia had her back to me and was now riding me reverse cowgirl style, and it gave me a chance to see that perfect little as of hers while watching her take my cock inside of her over and over. Goddess, she really was perfect. I could not get enough of her. Cecilia looked over her shoulder and her yellow eyes met mine and she smiled so sweetly before she bit her lip hard and came all over me. It was enough to make me lose my mind, and I was not far behind her, but she got of me just before I could come inside her. I growled darkly, hating she was cutting me of like that, but then she turned around and wrapped her lips around me. It only took a second and then I was coming, but she moved back, so my cum covered her chin and chest, and she moved a hand through it, covering herself with my scent. Shit that pleased something deeply basic inside of me. Something dark and possessive, and I pounced on her, so we rolled over the bed, but the bed was smaller than I was used to, and we ended up rolling over the edge. I luckily landed on my back, taking the fall, while Cecilia landed on me. We could not care much about the whole fall thing, because we were reaching for the other, touching and kissing the other, before I rolled on top of her and spread her legs wide, and then I was spearing inside of her making us both moan loudly from pleasure. Don't make me go crazy like that. I barely even heard myself speaking as I fucked her faster, faster, faster I needed more and more. I can barely keep myself in control. That was true. Cecilia was stripping me of all self-control, not that she seemed to mind. She only grew louder and her nipples harder, and I leaned down and ran my tongue over the hard nubs, making her whimper. They were so sensitive I could pretty much make her come just by teasing them like this. I will never be able to get enough. Also very true. I simply couldn't get enough of Cecilia. She was perfect and she had me under her spell or something, because what we did tonight and today would simply be engraved into my mind forever, at least the parts one remembered. Cecilia started to moan louder and then she was coming, squeezing my cock so tightly it was almost hard to move inside of her but I was not done enjoying the feeling of the way her walls rippled around me, and how perfectly she fit inside of me. She drenched us both in her cum though, and it made me pull out of her and I started to lick her clean until she was coming again and was screaming and scratching her nails over the floor. Only when she was just dancing on a third orgasm, did I slide inside of her again and fuck her until my whole body tensed, and I emptied all my cum inside of her. I was out of damn breath this time. It had been so fucking intense, but then Cecilia kissed me over and over, thanking me once again for being there with her, and it made me breathe a little easier. I loved her so much, I thought, before I lost consciousness too. It was dark when I woke up, and I noticed I was lying on the soft mattress again. I turned my head and saw Cecilia sleeping beside me, but with the blanket half pushed of her. I pulled it higher because the cabin was rather cold. We had not noticed because we had been so deep into her heat, but now it was clear that no one had been there for a long time, and the coldness was just a way for the house to tell us it needed to be taken better care of. I smiled as I stroked my mate's cheek, feeling her skin was a little cooler now, and knew she just needed rest after the intense experience of her heat. I pushed the blanket of me and got out of bed, but had to reach out and stabilize myself with the wall. 
Shit, I even felt weak and my legs were not up for the trip to the bathroom, but I managed anyway before I came back and laid down beside Cecilia again. The moonlight shining through the only window there was, gave me plenty of light to look at her, and I felt my heart beating faster and faster. She is perfect. My wolf was right. She was, and I was just lying there and admiring her until I drifted back to sleep as well. Cecilia. I woke up to the smell of breakfast and slowly opened my eyes and looked around. I stared up into an unfamiliar ceiling and quickly sat up, noticing I was not back at home in my bedroom. I was confused at first, but then memories slowly came back, and I realized what had happened. Oh, shit I had gone into heat while Nolan was there. James must have heard our fighting or seen us from the house. He had come to help me, but only ended up getting affected by my heat as well. Good thing Lara had been there too, ready to offer him the distraction while I had been taken to the cabin and... Ah! Uh. I tried moving but my whole body ached when I tried to, and while I was feeling more sated than ever, I knew my body had been well used. Used weight slowly new memories appeared again, and I realized Lucian had been there. I felt my body heat as I remembered the things we had done, and I lifted the sheets to my nose and smelled the wonderful scent of him. I smiled and felt so happy to know he had been here to help me, and he certainly had been very attentive, because I could not remember ever feeling like this after a heat. I could barely move without my body complaining and every muscle felt well used and my pussy so well satisfied, but I also really wanted a shower, because I noticed I was covered in dry cum and my hair was a sweaty mes. I tried moving from the bed, but I had to do it slowly because I simply couldn't move fast or it would be too painful. I looked around for some clothes, but I had left all of mine in the living room that you came right into when you walked into the cabin. I just wrapped the blanket around me instead and placed a hand on the wall, trying to take it all step by step, because I could not walk faster than that. Need help? I turned to the door and saw Lucian standing there, only wearing his pants and biting of a piece of the bacon in his hand. Goddess, he looked good, and even though I was into much pain to do much right now, I couldn't help but react to the sight of him. Lucian sniffed the air and shook his head a little like an animal would. I fuck you for almost 24 hours straight and you were still hungry for more of my cock, wildcat? He asked me. I felt my cheeks heat, but Lucian just smiled pleased as he ate the last of the bacon and then came over to me. I thought for a moment about stopping him and telling him I was too sore, which I was, but the words wouldn't come out when he was so close to me. He did not try to fuck me though but lifted me into his arms and carried me into the bathroom where he got the warm water running in this old tub. There we go, he said. I. My voice broke when I tried speaking the first time and I had to clear it. You can barely walk, you think I would take you now? He asked. I smiled at him and shook my head. Clearly, he wouldn't, even though he had definitely reacted to the scent of my arousal because I could see the outline of his hard cock through his pants. Come, let me help you get in. And he did. Lucian was so damn attentive to me, he even helped me wash my hair and everything, and I loved the feeling of getting pampered by him. I leaned my head back and moaned when his fingers ran through my hair, and he leaned closer and kissed me. I'm sorry I was late. He said. You were late? You didn't notice? I can't remember much. I told him. Lucian sighed and placed himself on his knees beside me. I looked at him concerned and took his hand that was resting on the side of the tub. Something wrong? I asked. It was all a distraction. What? The road trip. The road trip? I asked, confused. Lucian smiled a little. I have a lot to tell you, he said. Then go on. Not now. You need to eat too, he said. Lucian, something is clearly on your mind, I said. And we can talk about it after you get something to eat. I shook my head a little and grabbed his hand harder. You are not okay, I said. I'm fine. You know I can feel what you feel. I said and ran a hand through his short hair, so it got all messy but in a cute way. I can feel you're sated but worried. Very sated. He said with a smug smile. 
I shook my head a little and smiled. Let's not focus on that. Let's. He said. I knew Wildcat was the perfect name for you. Lucian. I felt my cheeks heat but he just kissed my hand. What? He asked. Stop avoiding my question. What question? I know something is wrong. I said. That's not a question. I rolled my eyes. Talk. After. Lucian. I said. Just relax a little and I will get the last of the food ready. He said. You cook? I can make something edible. He said. I chuckled a little and he kissed me. I'm okay. He said. I just smiled a little. Are you? He brushed my cheek and I felt his worry change a little because now it was directed at me. I'm good. I told her. Are you sure? I did not hurt you. Hurt me. He nodded and looked almost scared. No. You gave me exactly what I needed. I told him. Lucian smiled so happily, and I could feel it was just the right thing to say. Good. I will be back in a moment. He said. Don't hurry. I said and leaned back and relaxed in the warm water. I was glad he hurried though, because only moments after he had left my stomach growled loudly, and my hunger came back at full force, now that I was not in so much pain. I waited patiently for Lucian to come back though, and he had my clothes with him. So, after helping me dry of, I got dressed and we went to the kitchen. Cecilia. Good thing Lara always keeps this place stocked with food. I said. Lucian smiled and nodded as he enjoyed a cup of coffee. He had already eaten. He could not wait for me to wake up, and I did not blame him. We had both used a lot of energy to get through my heat, and I was just happy he did not forget to take care of himself. I was not the only one who deserved to be pampered. I ate only half of the food in front of me though, and then turned to my mate. Now talk. About? Lucian. I sighed. I would much rather have you eat everything on your plate first. He said. I will eat while we talk. I said. Lucian sighed. Come on, I can sense some disappointment in you. Was my heat not what you expected? I asked. What? Yeah, I mean I'm guessing you haven't served a female before through her heat and... Cecilia, I loved every moment of it, and I was glad I could service you through it. He said, and it made my heart warmer. Is it because Nolan was there? What? Yeah, he had come to the house, and while my heat began while he was Lucian, I promise nothing happened, but I did lose my mind a little. I said and looked down. I already got an update from Lara and James, who has told me pretty much everything that happened. Lucian said, but I could see him clench and unclench the hand that was resting on his thigh like he was imagining his own hand around Nolan's throat. James already took good care of him. I remembered a little of their fight. I was pretty sure James sent Nolan flying into his own car or something. Is he dead? I asked. Nolan? I nodded. Would that trouble you? I don't want people to die because of me. I told him honestly. Lucian sighed and looked away for a moment, but then turned to me again. No, he is still alive but I don't think he will ever try to come find you again. I heard James did a lot of damage to, and we both know I will kill Nolan if I see him again. Don't get punished because of me. Nolan lost his mind too. I said. Are you defending him? No, I am just saying I was about to get rid of him before my heat. I told him. I can't believe though, he thought I would get back together with him. He is delusional and he was played by Landon just like me. Lucian sighed. Lucian, what's going on? I asked and reached out, taking his hand. I thought he wanted to be family. I actually believed him and that he wanted me to be happy, but Landon doesn't share. He said. Not ever. What do you mean? We both know why Nolan was there. To win you over and send me right back to my brother. He said. I nodded a little. Yeah, 
I had understood that part after Nolan told me why he was there. I just thought I thought perhaps. Lucian. I wanted my brother back. He said. I wanted us to be those kids again, but Landon can only accept I am his, and no one else's. He has this idea of how things should be, and he does not like some things that do not play into that idea. But he does want to be your family, does he not? Lucian nodded. He does, but we can't be family like that. I sighed. Maybe if you talk to him again. Cecilia, I almost did not get here in time because of him. Landon had no idea I was going into heat. I said. Are you now defending him too? No. I am not defending anyone, but I see you still care for Landon. If you did not, you would gladly send some of the dark soldiers after him or challenge him. I don't want others to die for me. He said. I understand that, but do you think a small part of you also can't stand the idea of your brother actually dying? I asked him. Lucian looked down but then nodded. I don't like it. I understand. I said. But he needs to go away. He said. Do you think you can convince him to leave? I asked. I am not sure. He said. You should try. Maybe you won't have to kill him then. I suggested. Lucian nodded a little and then turned to my food, pointing at it. Eat. I smiled and did as he said, but I was not done with this conversation. How was your day with him? I asked. Did he hurt you? Lucian shook his head. No, it felt like we were actually bonding. Really? Lucian nodded. Yeah, and I wanted it to be true. He said. I wanted us to be brothers. He clearly does to then, right? Yeah, I believe he does, but as I said, he has this idea of what that is going to be like, and I cannot live in that world he has made for us. I'm sorry, Lucian. I know you want your family back. But they are not coming back. I shook my head a little. No. I said. I have a family though. He said and smiled. One I care very much about. I smiled back. And they care about you. I do hope. That made us both laugh a little. Otherwise, it is good we are building our own. He said and looked at me with a hungry look. We don't know if I will get pregnant this time. Good thing we can try again. He said, and he did not sound at all disappointed if I did not get pregnant, because he would gladly go through all of my heats together with me. I shook my head a little but felt so happy, and I quickly ate all my food before I went to straddle Lucian, who let his mug stay on the table, while his hands came to rest on my hips. I love you. I told him. I love you too. He said and then kissed me. Lucian. Even though we were both still hungry for each other, since Cecilia's hormones were still racing after her heat, and because we were just crazy for each other, we did not do anything about it. She was tired. I was tired. And she was also very sore. So, we just spent the day lying around and talking. I did not want her to go back to the house with her hormones still going crazy. She would undoubtedly attract other males in the house and I would have to kill them because they thought they could have something that did not belong to them. Sadly, the next day though, we had to go back. Ready? I asked as I held the door open for her. Kind of wish we didn't have to go back. I like it here. She said. I am sure Laura will lend us her cabin again if we ask really nicely. I told her. Cecilia chuckled and went outside, and I followed her. We walked out to my car, and I could see Cecilia looking at it confused. This is not your car. She said. How do you know that? Lucian, where did this one come from? I smiled and just got inside the car, telling her to follow. She did and got in the passenger seat, looking around a little confused. It's nice. She said. It was my dad's. What? I smiled and she smiled back. Wow, have you always had it? She asked. I shook my head. I took it from Landon when I abandoned him on our road trip. So, where is he now? She asked me. 
somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I told her and she chuckled. I'm sorry, but I don't feel bad. She said. I don't either. I turned on the car and we drove out of there and back to the house. As soon as we got inside, Lara came running, looking very concerned and when she reached us, she quickly looked us over. How are you two? She asked. Good. I said and smiled before I turned to Cecilia, who turned red very fast. Oh thank the goddess you got my message. Lara said and smiled, now more relaxed since she knew we were okay. Good, you're back. James joined us soon, and I could see, while Cecilia and I looked tired. So did those two. I had been told what happened, so I knew James had been affected too, which had forced Lara and him to fuck it all out, so he wouldn't go after Cecilia. Hey, how are you feeling? Cecilia asked. I'm good now. He said and smiled at Lara. Lara just shook her head and it made me laugh, which made her punch me playfully. Hey! I said. Not nice. You're the one not picking up your fucking phone. I was busy. Too busy for your mate in heat? That's unfair. I said, but I did not sound very mad, because how could I? I had gotten to Cecilia in time and we had spent hours in fucking bliss, so Lara and I just ended up smiling at each other. How did it go with Landon? James asked. Let's just say it did not end very well. Should we be worried? Lara asked. Most likely. My brother is very unpredictable. You can't really know what he will do before he does it. I told them. Wonderful. James mumbled. Well, right now let's not focus on that. Laura said. Let's focus on getting you two something to eat, and then you can rest. Wow, Laura had really grown into her lunar role. I remembered when she had been busy always proving herself and how tough she acted, so no alpha could doubt her leadership. But now she had become very caring too, and I could imagine James played a role. He centered her just like she gave him a reason to continue after losing both mate and child. Great, I am starving, I said. We just ate, Cecilia said, confused. Yeah, but if I have to keep up with you, then I need the fuel. Lucian. Cecilia playfully shoved me, not that I moved an inch, but I just chuckled and wrapped my arm around her shoulders as we went to the kitchen and got something to eat. We continued to chat with Lara and James for a while, and they suggested we all went to see the others soon, so we could figure out what to do with Landon. I agreed. I had let it go on for too long. I could not continue to give my brother a free paw. It was time we settled this. What are you thinking? Cecilia asked, as we walked into our room and I sat down on the bed, sighing deeply. She walked over to me and straddled me, and I placed my arms around her, just enjoying holding her close. I don't want to keep losing people. I told her. Have you lost anyone at the moment? I shook my head. But I will I can't let him live. Landon. I nodded, even though it was not a question. Despite it all, I had fun with him. It was like having my brother again. I said. I am just tired of losing people first my parents, then my uncle and aunt, not that I am sad about that, then Kate the list just keeps growing. Soon I will add my brother's name to it. Cecilia ran her hand through my hair and I leaned my forehead against her chest, just enjoying her touch and feeling how the power of being mates calmed me. She just had to touch me in a certain way and I would be completely relaxed again, even though I was still worried. It's going to be okay. She whispered. I know you don't want to, but he is too unstable. We don't know what he can do, and we need to feel safe again. I nodded. Especially now that we are going to have a little pup joining us soon. I said and looked up with a huge smile on my lips. Cecilia chuckled. It's only been two days, you don't know if I am pregnant yet. She said. I know. I just said. No, you're hoping. Not even your alpha senses are that sharp. How do you know? I teased. Because I used to be bound to another alpha. A bad alpha. A loser. I can only agree, but still. I said. We will just have to wait and see. 
I groaned because I really hoped it would be true that Cecilia was pregnant, but I knew she was right. I just had to be patient. I was happy to just have spent her heat with her. That was fucking amazing. You felt drained, but also so well used. I was still feeling very sated, even though we had not fucked since her heat. I guess we will just have to do some more practicing then. I said and turned us. Lucian. We should rest. Right, rest. I said and just kissed her. Cecilia. A quiet week passed by, and Lucian was getting more and more attentive to me. He was so excited to know if I was pregnant and constantly stayed closed in case I was. It drove me a little insane because sometimes he would literally carry me down the stairs, afraid I might trip. I did tell him no, most of the time, because sometimes it was rather sweet and funny, so I humored him, but at other times it was annoying. He was like a puppy just following me around and guarding me. I had noticed he had become more protective, and he did not like it when other males got too close to me. At first, I just thought he was being cautious because he wanted to make sure I had the best chance of conceiving, but sometimes his behavior seemed unprovoked, and it made me wonder if something was triggering his instincts no, he couldn't tell that early, could he? But then I started to think, maybe he didn't know he was reacting the way he was. Maybe he was being affected by me already, but if he was did that mean I was pregnant? Hey! I went into Lara's office. I had started to work with her again, and she smiled when she saw me coming inside. Hey. She said. You're a bit late. Unusual. Yeah. I had a lot on my mind yesterday and did not get much sleep. Oh, you okay? She asked. I nodded. Actually do you think I could get the day of? I asked. Is something the matter? I looked behind me and then closed the door before I almost tiptoed over to Lara. She looked at me confused, and I could see she was really trying to figure out why I was behaving so weirdly. Are you okay? She asked. I, I think I might be pregnant. I whispered. Pregnant. Shh. I shushed Lara, and she just looked more confused. What? I don't want to get Lucian's hopes up. He is very excited, but he has been behaving really strangely lately. I said. Yeah, I have noticed. Lara said. He seems very tense all the time. I think he might be reacting to me. I said. Hmm, have you taken a test? I shook my head. I wanted to go out and buy one real quick, and if it is positive, I probably need a little time to just wrap my head around it. But you do want it, right? She asked. I mean, I can help if you don't. I wouldn't say. Wow, wow, slow down. I said. While I appreciate you helping me do all of that, I want this. Okay, good. I don't think Lucian would like me very much if I had helped you get rid of it, but it is always a choice for the one who carries. I smiled and nodded. I could only agree. A child should always be wanted, but this one, if I was pregnant, was definitely wanted. Yeah, but I want this. If I am really pregnant, I want this. I told her. I am happy for you. She said. Thank you. So, you don't mind? No, go. She said. I will take care of everything today. I thanked her again and then left the house. I hoped Lucian would be too distracted today to really notice I was gone. He had said he would spend the day with the others from the castle going over a plan about how to take Landon down. I felt both a little sad and a little happy. I wanted a safe place for our possible child and everyone else, and the world just did not feel safe with Landon lurking out there. Therefore, I really quickly sped down to a convenience store, got a test, and sped back home. I just did not feel safe outside the territory anymore, and if I really was pregnant, I would not risk leaving it again without anyone with me. Landon was just cunning, and the way he tried to make me betray Lucian, so he could get his brother back, was just sick. I would never betray him. I loved him, and hopefully, Landon now saw that nothing but death could tear us apart, which was exactly why I did not want to leave the territory. Okay, let's do this. 
I said as I stood in my bathroom and unpacked the test. Maybe it is too early. Maybe, but then I will just have to take another. I said as I pulled down my pants when I stood by the toilet. Maybe, but then I will just have to take another. I said as I pulled down my pants when I stood by the toilet. Maybe Lucian is just being overly protective lately because he shared our heat with us. Nolan never acted like that. I said. Nolan was a dick. I chuckled before I finally peed on the stick. Do you not want this? I asked my wolf, as I cleaned myself up and placed the little pregnancy test on the sink before I set a timer. I do. You sure? You weren't very happy with Lucian in the beginning. Neither were you. It was harder on you losing our daughter like that. I whispered. My wolf sighed and looked so sad, but then she shook it of and seemed more determined. Lucian would never cause us such pain. I know that now. You're right. I said and smiled. He would be a great father. I could only agree and nodded. Maybe, or hey, maybe it is too early to even tell if I am pregnant or not. I said, because I didn't want to get my own hopes up either. Maybe it was torture to wait though, and when the timer finally dinged and told me it was time for me to look at the test, I was still not ready. I looked at the test I had turned away from me, so I couldn't see the results, and just stared at it. What are you waiting for? Should we maybe not just wait? For? I mean soon Lucian will be able to tell. His senses are very sensitive and he is very tuned into me. I said. Do you really want to wait? I am just scared. Scared we're pregnant or scared we are not? Both. Me too. I want a family with him, but at the same time, I just fear all of that pain again. We can't know what will happen in the future. We tried saving ourselves from all of that pain, but we have now accepted Lucian and we have to accept that pain comes too. I know. So? You're right. I said and grabbed the test, taking a deep breath before I turned it. For a moment I just stared at it, not sure I was seeing this right. Positive. It's positive. Eh, maybe I should take another just to be certain. I said. Yes, do it. I took another, but when the timer dinged again, I saw the same thing. I was so thrilled, as I looked at the two tests lying side by side, showing that big plus sign. I couldn't stop myself. I grabbed my phone and texted Lucian, saying I had something I needed to talk to him about and asking him when he would be home. He did not give me the best news though, because he said he would be home late, probably when I was sleeping, since they were working so hard. I did not want to interrupt their important work and just told him we could talk tomorrow before I hid the tests and continued with the day as if I was not carrying the best surprise ever. Cecilia. It was in the middle of the night when I heard the door close to our bedroom. I woke up and heard someone trying to be quiet, as they snuck around in the room and then came closer to the bed. I smiled as I felt the bed dip a little, as more weight was put on it, and then Lucian laid down beside me. I could smell him so clearly now when he got closer, and my smile just grew, as he put his arm around me, pulling me closer to him. I turned in his arms and buried my face in his chest. He ran his hand down my hair and back, and I slowly turned my head, looking up at him, and seeing him resting his head in his hand, and looking down at me. When you said late, I didn't know it would be this late. I said and pulled him closer to me, so I could kiss him. When you said late, I didn't know it would be this late. I said and pulled him closer to me, so I could kiss him. His lips met mine, but the moment they did, I noticed something was wrong. It did not feel right the way he kissed me, and his whole body was stiff like he had not expected me to do it. Then suddenly I felt the bumping feeling of scars, as my left hand landed on his cheek, and I pulled back fast while pushing him away. What the hell? I reached for the lamp on my nightstand and turned it on, only to come face to face with Landon in bed with me. He was wearing Lucian's clothes, so he smelled like him. He must have been able to trick the border control or something since it was dark and he looked almost just like Lucian, except for the scar on his face. 
Hello, Cecilia. He said. Landon, what are you doing here? I pulled the sheets closer to me because I was only wearing some short sleeping shorts and a tight top without a bra underneath. I thought we could talk. He said. Talk. I looked around, hoping to find something I could use against him or alert the others in the house that we had an intruder. I knew we had a gun in the nightstand, but I didn't want to seem too obvious when I reached for it, so I slowly scooted back. Oh, I already removed the gun. He said and pulled it from his pants, placing it between us. Shit. Yeah, don't try to scream, it won't help you. What do you want? Answers. He said. Answers? And my brother, of course. He said. I, I can't just give you Lucian. I said. Yes, you can. He will follow you. Follow me? I asked. Landon smiled and then he grabbed my arm, yanking me to him, and before I knew it, he had sent a needle into my neck and emptied whatever was inside. I believed it was a sedative because soon the world turned blurry and then dark. Lucian, I was so tired when I finally returned home, but I believed we had a plan now. The pack would be willing to fight back if I showed them that they would not be standing on their own after Landon died. I would act as temporary alpha before I handed over the pack to Maddie and Evan again. They would take good care of them all. I knew that. Despite my father clearly believing I should be alpha, I didn't want to. I never wanted to. I just wanted to live my life with Cecilia and be happy. I didn't want the responsibility, but first I had to remove my brother. I would challenge him and demand we fight right away. Hopefully, he would not see it coming, and if he tried coming for me or sending someone after me or Cecilia, then I knew we would be protected. Once I had challenged him, none of us were allowed to be alone. We had to stand together and protect one another. I knew there was a good chance some of us might get hurt. Landon would not go down so easily, but we had to try. We couldn't wait for the pack to turn against him anymore. It was just not safe. I walked into Cecilia's and my bedroom, taking of my jacket and trying to be as quiet as I could. The room was dark and I knew my little mate was sleeping. So, I laid my jacket on a chair and then went to the bathroom to brush my teeth and get ready. When I finally left the bathroom and looked over at where the bed was, I sensed something was wrong. Cecilia? The bed looked weird from this angle, and I walked closer, turning on the lamp beside the bed, but I could still not see my mate. Her side was all bumpy and strange and she had pulled up the blanket so far, I believed she had covered her head with it. Cecilia? I grabbed the blanket and pulled it off, only to find pillows underneath and a small note. What the hell? I grabbed the note and it read, Come find us before I burn your mate alive. I knew right away who had written the note. Only one person would have such a love for fire that they had specifically chosen that way for my mate to be killed. Landon. I growled and crumbled up the piece of paper. I let out a horrific growl that spoke of my anger and it shook the whole house. Then I went to arm myself. I already had my guns on me, but I took another and a few knives before I left the room. Laura came running, looking like she had jumped right out of bed and was only wearing her mate's shirt but with a gun in her hand. What's happening? She asked. Landon. I growled as I stormed through the house and she followed me. What? He took her. Took her? Cecilia. He got inside and he took her. I growled. How? I don't know. Lucian, wait. Laura grabbed my arm but I roughly pulled it back. I could not think straight right now. All I could think about was my mate out there with my brother, and I could just imagine all the horrible things he was already doing to her. Lucian. Laura grabbed my arm again and this time I was able to listen to her. You can't just go on your own. She said. But I can, and I will. It is me who he wants. Cecilia's life is in his hands and possibly your child's. What? Laura sighed. You have been behaving strangely lately, have you not noticed? She asked. I have. Cecilia thought you might be reacting to her, and so she took a test earlier today. She said. And. And and she just told me that she would tell you the results and no one else. She said. So, my mate might be pregnant? I asked. 
Lara nodded. Yeah, she certainly didn't look sad, but I'm not sure if it was positive or not. Fuck! I yelled. It is too dangerous for you to go on your own. If I don't, I know he will hurt her. I said. Lucian, we are family. Yes, and I need to protect you and my pregnant mate. I said. Just wait. I will get dressed. I don't have time. I said and pulled away. Lucian. I did not listen as I stormed out of the door and drove back to the house where so many horrible things had happened. Evan and Maddie had changed the house but I knew tonight more horrible things would happen in it. Cecilia. I hoped Lucian knew where to look. Landon had not made it hard for him, which meant he truly wanted Lucian to find us. We were back at his house. I had woken up, tied to a chair, with Landon standing a little further away from me, looking out of a window in the living room. A gun in one hand and a drink in his other. He heard me when I tried pulling on my restraints. He had not used wolfsbane or anything to keep me weakened, because he had his gun, and when he turned and looked at me, I froze. Careful, he said. Wouldn't want to hurt the child. I stared at him shocked. Yeah, I sensed it, he said. It kind of fucks with my head. He pressed the end of the gun to his temple before lowering it again shortly after. I guess it's true all males become rather protective around a pregnant female. Even me. And yet you kidnapped me. But did I hurt you? He asked me. I did not want to discuss in what way he had hurt me or to what degree. No, I had no cuts or bruises on me, but that did not mean he had not hurt me. What do you want? I asked. I told you, answers. Answers? I want you to telephone me, what is it about you that makes my brother go all crazy? He said. What? You heard me. He said and walked closer, bending a little forward, so his face was closer to mine. What is it about you? We're mates. Landon shook his head and moved back, and I noticed something strange about him. He just seemed sad. I was not sure if I was reading him wrong or anything like that, but he truly looked sad. I was not about to feel bad for him or anything. He held a gun in his hand, and I knew he was not afraid to use it. No, we're brothers. He said. I should come first. Like he always comes first with me. You can't explain the mate bond. I said. He abandoned me for you. You tricked him. I only told Nolan when Lucian would not be there. I did not set you two up in bed and forced someone to take photos. I just wanted him to see that the only one who would truly be there would be me. But I failed your test. I said and smiled. More like past it. He said. What? I want my brother to be happy. He said. You do? I found that hard to believe. I know I am a monster. He said. I don't deny it. I have known it since I was a kid. Everyone was always afraid of me, and I never knew how to play right, but my brother did not care. I could make him cry and he would still come back to me. He said we would always be family. You killed your parents. They were going to tear us apart. He yelled. I only had Lucian. Oh, Goddess Landon was screwed up, no doubt about that, but in that cold, cold heart, he actually did care about Lucian, and his biggest fear was to lose him. He would kill for his brother, just to keep him. And will you kill me? I asked him, swallowing hard. I have not decided, he said. I am not sure I can now that I know you're pregnant. My head is going all crazy, my wolf is confused I can't really seem to. He didn't finish that sentence but I understood that the scent of my pregnancy was fucking with his head. It might just save my life though. Actually, I think I will just let it be up to Lucian. He said. What? Landon suddenly downed his drink and placed it down on a small coffee table, before he placed down his gun too, and I looked at him confused. He smiled at me as he pulled out a lighter from his pocket. What are you doing with that? I asked. You or me? He said. He has to make a choice. Landon? Landon walked over to this small bar further away and started smashing the bottles, pouring the liquid everywhere and on all the walls and everything. He even left the room shortly after and I heard him smashing more bottles and pouring alcohol everywhere. Then suddenly everything grew quiet. Landon? I whispered. 
Just then, the fire alarms in the house started to go crazy, and I knew he had set the house on fire. Landon appeared again, looking like the maniac he was before he went to pick up his gun again, and I started to fight against my restraints. Landon. Don't worry, don't worry, he said. I'm freeing you, my brother is here already. Lucian is here? I would not have set the house on fire otherwise, he said as he came over to me and started to untie me. Landon started to free me from my restraints, but as soon as I was free, he grabbed hard onto me and pulled me to my feet. He turned us around, so we were facing the doors leading out into the hallway, which I could see was now being lit up by flames further inside the house. Landon had his arm around my middle, as he placed the gun at my temple. Just stop. I said. You can still stop this. There is no going back. He said. There is. You can stop. Don't you understand it yet? He asked me. He moved his head so we could look at each other a little better. I don't want the crown. I don't even want the fucking pack. I want my brother. Then why take the pack? Because Lucian would never forgive me. He would never spend one moment on me if I did not take something he would want back. I then realized all of this was just a desperate attempt to get back what Landon had lost when he killed their parents. He wanted his brother. He always wanted his brother, but now I had come into Lucian's life, and I was fucking up everything. Landon, he will never forgive you if you kill me. That's why I will make him choose. How? Either you burn or I do. What? I shouted. You heard me. You can't be serious. But I am. Landon, it is not too late. Just let me go. I said. I can't know, this is it. Landon. Quiet. Suddenly, a figure appeared, covered in soot and sweating like crazy. Lucian coughed a little, but he did not let the feeling of smoke in his lungs stop him from pointing his gun at his brother and the way he looked at Landon shit, I had never seen such a hateful look in Lucian's eyes. He was not an angry or hateful person. Lucian was good, but a darkness had taken over, and he was not going to show Landon mercy. Hello brother, Landon said. Lucian. By the time I had arrived at the house, the flames had already caught onto the house. I was certain I would find my mate already dead and consumed by flames, but it did not stop me from running into the house anyway, and almost getting myself killed by the flames. It had caught onto my jacket, and I threw it away before I continued further into the house, trying to figure out where my mate was. I looked into every room until I reached the next floor and finally found her. In the big living room where I remembered Chris and Maddie had met for the first time, Cecilia now stood with a gun pressed to her temple and Landon behind her with his arm around her waist and holding her close. Hello brother, he said. Landon. We looked at each other, just studying the other, and I tightened my hand into a tight fist while I slowly lowered my gun. We continued to drag out the silence between us, only the crackling of the flames around us filled the silence. Let her go. I said darkly. No, Landon. You have always been my family, Lucian. Only you. I will always choose you, but who will you choose? What? You heard me, he said. Who will you choose? Lucian. Cecilia begged quietly. You can't be serious. Don't act like you haven't been planning my death, he said. Don't act like you didn't run to her side when you promised me a day. Telephone me, brother, now that one of us will have to die. Who will you choose? Are you fucking insane? I yelled. Choose. Landon, just let her go. I said. I couldn't think with a gun pointed to my mate's head. If I chose Cecilia, he would most likely just kill her, and if I chose my brother, he would kill her too. I just needed her away from the gun, and back in my arms, and then I might be able to think straight. Not until you choose, he said. Landon, the fucking house is on fire. Can we do this later? I asked angrily, and saw Cecilia shaking more and more. This was a fucking insane situation we were in, but I would never let anything hurt her. I would always protect her, and I tried to tell her that, by giving her a look with my eyes that told her to stay calm. Right now, we were to worked up to communicate through the bond, so I had to do it in a different way. No, we're doing it now, Landon said. Now, Landon, I can't think with a gun to my mate's head. Just let her go. 
I said. No, choose. Landon. I shouted and looked at my brother almost a little pleadingly. She is my mate, and she might be pregnant. Please, just let her go. I held out my free hand, pleading with my brother to let her go because I simply could not think right now. All I saw was that gun to her head, and my brother looking like he was losing his mind or something. I had never seen him act so desperately, and it only scared me even more, because desperate people were just not people you could count on. They made stupid choices. Why her? He suddenly asked me, sounding almost broken. Why not me? What? I already know your choice, he said. I know it because I know you. Then why bring me here? Because I didn't want it to be true, he said. But when you left me to go to her, I already knew it would be her. Please, Landon. I said and looked at Cecilia shortly before I looked at my brother. I love her. I can't stop it, and I will never want to stop it. If you are truly being honest about you wanting us to be family, and that you care about me, you will not break me. You will not take the one thing from me that will bring me to my knees. Please, brother, if I was right when we were kids, that you were not a monster, then you give her to me. What can she give you that I can't? He asked. I am your family. Landon, I love her. I said. I can't explain it to you, but I would take a bullet for her, so if you have to kill someone, then kill me. Lucian, no. Cecilia cried. Landon looked at me shocked, but I just looked him right in the eyes, still with my hand extended towards Cecilia. Choose to kill me, I said. But let her go. Lucian. Landon looked at me for a long time, and I just stared back. Please, brother. Not her, I said. Landon looked down at Cecilia, who was now crying, and for a moment I saw something I never thought I would see in my brother. Almost like he felt some sort of tenderness towards Cecilia. I could see it in the painful look on his face, as he buried it a little in her hair, almost like he was seeking comfort, and it surprised me so much. I always knew my brother preferred to be alone, but maybe that was not true. Maybe no one had just offered him their warmth. Landon. Landon turned to me and he looked so fucking broken, it hurt me, but I was still scared he was going to kill my mate. I feared this was a way to pay me back for not choosing him. I feared he would not let me be happy, but then slowly, he lowered the gun, and his grip on Cecilia loosened. Landon looked at her and ran a hand down her hair slowly. Go, he said. Before I change my mind. I stared at Landon shocked, still with my hand outstretched, and Cecilia looked just as shocked, but she did not turn around to look at him, as she took a careful step forward, and then another, and then she ran to me when she realized Landon would not stop her. She grabbed my hand and I pulled her close, protecting her with my own body. She continued to shake in my arms, and I shushed her. It's okay. I whispered to her before I looked at Landon again. He stood there looking at us, and I simply could not read him. He still had the gun in his hand, but kept it lowered. Go, he said. Yeah, let's get out of here. I said and started to lead Cecilia away, but when I looked over my shoulder, I saw my brother was not coming with us. Landon? I stopped and saw my brother was just picking up a bottle that was not broken and found a glass that hadn't been broken either. He put the gun down on a small table and started to pour himself a glass. Landon? Come on! I shouted. Landon just looked over his shoulder, but then shook his head. You should go, he said. While you can still get out of here. Lucian. Cecilia begged and tugged on my arm, but I did not move. Landon, what the hell are you doing? The house is fucking on fire. Let's go, I said. He shook his head again. No, I'm staying. Landon. Lucian. Cecilia begged again. The flames were all around us now, and it was getting damn hot, but I could not just allow my brother to stay in the house and get burned alive. Landon, no. I said and walked closer before I grabbed his arm and turned him towards me. You can't fucking be serious. I was meant to die in those flames, he said. Now I will. That's fucking bullshit, brother. Don't say that. I said. Let's just get out of here and figure out the rest. He shook his head. There is no redemption for me, 
brother, he said. I was always broken, I can't be fixed. That's not fucking true. It's not too late. Go, Lucian, before you can't get out of here. I stared at my brother, not willing to accept this. I had lost to many people, and what Landon did tonight, showed me there was more to my brother than I thought. Maybe there was even hope. I was not sure, but I was not going to let him go up in flames. I forgive you, I said. Lucian. It was a desperate attempt to get my brother to go with me. So, I came up with the first thing I thought might make my brother go with us. Landon just looked at me for a long time, and then smiled a little. No, you don't, he said. You could never forgive me, I know that. He was right. I could never forgive him for killing our parents and stripping me of the happy life I could have had, but I had also gotten a new family. One I loved very much. Maybe I could not forgive him, but maybe I could move forward. Landon, I am not letting you get burned alive in this damn house. I told him. I won't allow it. Landon just placed his hand on my neck and nodded in an almost approving way. It's not your choice, he said before he suddenly shoved me backwards. Landon. He pushed me so hard back that I stumbled out of the living room, and then he closed the doors and locked them from the inside and even barricaded them, so I couldn't get in. I kept banging my shoulder against them, but I couldn't open them. Landon. I hammered my hands against the doors, but they wouldn't open. Lucian, please. Cecilia begged and grabbed onto my arm again. No. Lucian. She placed her hands on my cheeks and turned my face towards her. I know you want to save him, but you can't. He made his choice, and we need to get out of here. Please, Lucian, focus on me. We need to get out. It was like being splashed with cold water, and I suddenly realized where the hell we were, surrounded by flames and pieces of the house falling down around us. Shit! I grabbed Cecilia's hand, holding onto it tightly, as I led us through the house. It was very hot in here now, and everywhere seemed to be blocked by huge flames that were eating the house quickly. Where the hell do we go? She shouted. I looked around and then saw a window further away, where the flames weren't covering it. We ran over there, and I quickly opened it, and helped Cecilia outside, before I climbed out myself. We ran a good way from the house, making sure we were at a safe distance, before I turned to it again, just in time to see the roof collapse, and as it did, I fell down on my knees. I knew I had to stop my brother. I had decided it was time, but this was not at all what I had thought would happen and I did not feel happy about it. Lucian. Cecilia fell down beside me, wrapping her arms around me, and I wrapped one of mine around her. I'm so sorry. She whispered. I didn't know what to think or feel. I just felt numb as we watched the house burn, taking my brother away from me. Why did he do it? I whispered. Because he cared he did. She said lowly. The others found us in front of the burning house. Lara had contacted the rest, and we were quickly taken to the castle, where Ryder and Lily looked us both over. I was more worried about Cecilia, of course, but despite inhaling a little smoke, she was fine, and our child seemed to be just fine as well. She was not feeling any pain or bleeding. She had finally confessed to me that she was pregnant, and it made me so happy but it was also a bittersweet moment because, even though I gained a family, I also lost one. Hey, I heard what happened. After getting looked over, Cecilia and I had gone to sleep a little. We stayed at the castle like the rest, just recovering, but I could not sleep, so I left the hospital room we had been placed in. It was best we stayed in the hospital wing, just for observation. I had let Cecilia sleep as I had climbed out of bed, and was now just sitting in the hallway when Angela found me. She had not been there to see the burning house. She was still taking care of her mother. Hey! I just said. Angela sat down beside me, looking at me worried. How are you? Awful. Lucian. I had plans to challenge him. I said. Next time I saw him. I was even ready to kill him tonight, but when he gave Cecilia back and chose to stay behind, I couldn't allow him to die. I guess there was a little good in him. Maybe. I am so sorry, Lucian. I shook my head a little, but
but then buried it in my hands for a few seconds before I looked at Angela again. I just can't believe he is truly gone now. It's never easy to say goodbye. I might hate my father, but he was still my father. They are both better of dead though. Are you sure? I hope you're not talking about your father. I said and smiled a little. Angela chuckled a little. I am talking about both of them, she said. My mother wouldn't be in pain if my father was still alive. You wouldn't be in so much pain if Landon was. But they did nothing good for us, I said. We are just trying to save ourselves from more pain, she nodded. I am not saying I wish they were here, she said. But you wish there was less pain, she nodded. It would be good to know we don't have to get hurt anymore. Yeah. But something good happened too. I heard Cecilia is pregnant. I smiled. She is. Congratulations. We smiled at each other, and I could see how happy Angela was for me. Thank you. Are they both okay? She asked. I nodded. They will be fine. I said. Nothing to worry about or the worrying probably starts now. Angela chuckled. Oh definitely, she said. My mates were awfully overprotective when I was pregnant. I won't be that bad. I lied. Right. We both laughed, and I was just happy to have Angela as my friend here. She had once been a light in my dark life, but now I realize she was just someone who made me feel better like a true friend did. She was not the one I wanted to spend my life with though. That was Cecilia. She made me so happy. I could barely even contain all those feelings I had for her, and I was just relieved we both came out all right tonight. I'm glad you're here, I said. Not what is happening to your mother, but you have been missed. Thank you, she said. I missed all of you too. No way to convince your mates to move here, she chuckled. That would be impossible. Hunter loves his little empire, Elijah loves Hunter, and I love both of them, she said. We are happy right where we are. I nodded and then took her hand, squeezing it a little, and she smiled back at me. I'm glad you're happy, I said. And now you are too, she said. Lucian. A few days after the fire, Cecilia and I were back home again. I was already becoming very clingy to my little mate and overprotective, but Cecilia didn't seem to mind that much. No, she actually seemed to love being showered with attention especially after almost being burned alive. I had to leave her soon though, because there was someone I needed to have an important conversation with. Hey, I said, as the door opened to Rick's and Andrew's apartment. Rick looked confused that I was there. I had not given him any heads up. Lucin, what are you doing here? He asked. We need to talk, I said and gestured for him to come outside. I was not sure if Andrew was there but I would rather talk to Rick. He went out into the quiet hallway, closing the door behind him, and then crossing his arms over his chest. What? He asked. My brother told me something before he died. I said. Rick just had that neutral look on his face, as if he did not really care that my brother had said anything, but I knew he was intrigued. He told me about Andrew's father. I said. I see. He said. Is it true? Does his father have an alpha camp? Rick nodded. He does. And you never thought to tell us. I growled lowly, trying not to shout so I would shock everyone who lived in the building with my powers. We didn't want to involve anyone, he said. It is fucking illegal. We know. Oh, do you? Listen, Lucian, we didn't say anything. Because if we did, the king would have to act. And if the king acted, then Andrew's father would know where to find us. He said. We couldn't risk that. You were not going to be sent back. I said. The king would not allow that. That camp has been in Andrew's family for generations. It is the only one who has survived for this long. Why do you think that is? He asked. I shrugged. Because he knows how to keep it protected and safe, and hide what truly happens there. When the upper class people send their sons there, they don't even know what they are truly sending them to. He said. They think their son will be taught discipline and how to be strong, but they don't know we will truly be tortured and put through some of the most horrific things that you can't even imagine. 
Enru's father knows how to make it look like we are just being taught what it means to be alphas in humane ways, but that is not what happens there. What exactly happens there? I asked. Sorry, but I can't talk about it. He said, and looked away for a moment like the memories of that place were running through his mind, and he needed a moment to get a grip. When he finally did, he turned to me again. Enru and I are the only ones in history who have ever gotten out of that place. You think his father will forgive us for betraying him? The king. The king can't protect us. That is why we want to be lone wolves. We want to mask what we truly are and live our lives peacefully. He said. I sighed and scratched my neck. We need to tell him. You can't. He said. Rick. Easton will come for us. He said. He will know right away. As soon as the king starts looking for him, he will come for us, and we will end up right where we started. Shit. I growled. You could have warned me. Rick shook his head. Andrew has got a messed up family, he said. I could have gone home and been protected there, but I didn't. I chose to stay with him. Your family would have protected you? Aren't they the ones who sent you there? I asked. He nodded. And I can't say my family is not bad too, but I could make it look like I was done with my education. Or tell them the truth, I suggested. No, my father would only have enjoyed hearing I had gotten tortured, he said. What kind of fathers do you two have? I said. Awful ones, the kind that believes Alphys should be put through a lot of shit to reach their maximum potential. That's fucking sick. I can only agree, he said. You need to be honest though. I told him. Lucian, you have to. Last time some crazy alpha came for us, we were not prepared properly. We need to be better. We need to be more honest. My brother was not wrong when he said people ruin their lives on their own and that secrets tear people apart. We need to do better. I said. Rick sighed and looked over his shoulder, almost like he could see his friend through the door. I don't know if I can convince him, he said and looked at me again. You don't know what it was like. I was sent there when I was a young teen, but Enru grew up in that shit. He was going to be the next one to run the place. I understand if you two aren't ready to talk about it yet, but you need to find a way to deal with it, I said. Why? Because we need to be more honest, I said. It is just better that way. Rick looked at the ground for a moment but then took a deep breath and looked at me again. I will talk to him. I won't tell the king then, I said. I will let you two do it. Easton isn't some simple alpha, he said. And he will not just give up on his son. He wants Andrew back and me too. I was exactly the kind of alpha he loved to mold into something psychotic. Well, you are strong, I said and smiled. Rick just smiled a little. I don't want to go back. You won't, I said. You can't know that. I won't allow it and neither will the rest. We are all family, despite you two choosing to be lone wolves, I said. Rick looked a little relieved, but I could still see how worried he was. He seemed to want to say something, but then the door behind him opened, and Andrew looked between us confused and maybe a little annoyed. What's going on here? He asked. Just visiting, I said. Don't you have a pregnant maid at home? He asked. I do. But you're he. He said. Do I need a lecture or something? I asked him. Can I visit a friend? A friend? Is that what you two are now? Friends? He asked. Why not? Andrew just shook his head and then walked past us. Where are you going? Rick asked. Who knows? Rick continued to shake his head and I turned to him, looking confused. Don't ask, he told me. I just nodded and then told him goodbye, before I left the building and went home to my sweet little mate, who I was going to spend a wonderful life with. Cecilia. Celine had gone all out. It was the only thing I could say. The ceremony was perfect really. We had the ceremony at the castle. They had the most space, and we held it out in the garden, which had been filled with white roses, matching everyone's clothes, except my own. I wore the red dress, standing out from everyone, and it was an amazing feeling I felt as I walked between all of the many wolves who had come to witness our union. I walked over to where Lucian was standing, under this beautiful flower arch. 
He looked so good in all white, and when our hands met, as we stood in front of each other, it was like the rest of the world just disappeared. I barely heard the king speak, or that we agreed to always honor the other and vowed to be there when times got tough. I just looked at my mate feeling so happy. I knew he had gone through a lot of hard things. It had only been a little over a month since he had lost his brother, and I knew he was still hurting, but it never stopped him from being there for me. I tried my best to be there for him too, but sometimes people just needed to process their pain on their own. When Lucian kissed me in front of everyone it just felt magical. Something seemed to shift between us, as we stood there in front of everyone and claimed each other, even though we had already marked each other, this was just different. This way, we showed everyone we had found the one we wanted to be with, and when the hunt began the whole atmosphere felt electric. I wasn't the only one running in the woods. Every mated female was to try to shield me from Lucian and force him to work hard to find me. He could easily find me though. The bond led him to me, but he had waited until we were far from the castle and everyone else to finally attack. He came out of nowhere and grabbed me, lifting me from the ground. I squealed but was quickly put on my feet again and turned towards him. Now I get to have you as I want, he said as he smiled smugly. I bit my lip and took a step back before I loosened the simple tie that was around my waist. It made the dress open in the middle and his eyes shone yellow for a short moment as he saw me half naked, and then they shone a bright yellow when I let the dress fall to the ground. Fuck, how did I get so lucky? He asked as he pulled the white shirt over his head and then came for me, lying me down on the ground and kissing me hard. I love you so much. He whispered. I love you too. We quickly fumbled to get his pants of, and then he was inside of me, moving fast and making us both so desperate to come. I did not care if anyone heard my screams, I could only focus on us at that moment and the wonderful future we were going to build together. He and I. Lucian. Everything was peaceful and great. While I still mourned my brother a little, I had moved on, and I was living my life, constantly keeping a close eye on my pregnant mate though. She was only two and a half months along, but things were going great so far, and we were both excited about meeting the little pup once they arrived. The house was being rebuilt. The one Maddie and Evan were going to move back into, but for now, they had to live here with the rest, at the castle. They didn't seem to mind that much. I believe they enjoyed it actually, but I knew they were anxious to go home too. So was the pack, who had had to move into the castle as well at least those who had lived in the house with their Alpha and Luna. Here. Suddenly, Lara appeared beside me and handed me a big yellow envelope. What is that? We were all gathered at the castle to eat dinner, but Lara and James had only just arrived now. We were still in the living room just enjoying a few drinks and snacks before we had to eat. It came for you. She said. I didn't look at it. I just looked at her confused as I took it from her and she and James went to sit down. I started to open it, while the talk continued around me. I slowly pulled out what was inside and when I looked at it, my heart froze in my chest. It was a small stack of papers, clipped together at the left corner, but I didn't even read them. I couldn't because the only important thing about them was what was written at the bottom. What is it, Lucian? Evan asked. I began to smile and then looked at everyone around me. It's a signature. I said. What? Maddie asked. I handed them the papers, and they quickly looked at them. It says here every right to the Crescent Moon Pack is given to you. Evan said and looked at me. I know. Wait does that mean? Maddie's voice died towards the end. He is alive. Landon is alive. I said. I turned to Cecilia, who looked at me shocked. I could not tell if she was happy or scared. I couldn't even tell what I was feeling either, but then she looked at the envelope. Is there more? She asked me. I reached into the envelope and found a letter with my brother's handwriting on the little white envelope. To the only one who believed in me I swallowed hard and smiled a small smile at my mate, who understood I needed a moment. And so I stood up and walked out of the room before I finally opened the letter and took out the small folded piece of paper. I unfolded it before I took a deep breath and then began to read it. 
Lucian when you read this, I will be far gone. I don't know if we will ever see each other again, but as you have noticed, I have left everything to you. I know you're happy being who you are and will hand over the pack to our cousin and her mate. I will not try to stop you this time. The choice is up to you, but I wanted to give it to you a choice. You know who will be the right leaders for the pack. Goddess, no I was never the right one. I knew it myself, but I wanted to try to be a leader anyway, because I knew it was the only way I could win you back. I can't say I regret my choice regarding killing our parents. I was scared, brother, scared of being all alone. Losing the one person who always believed in me. I know you will never be able to forgive me and I won't ask you to. I am what I am, and I can't change. This world does not have room for me, but I thought it would be enough if my brother had a place in his heart for me. I wanted to die in that fire though, because I thought you didn't have a place for me. I thought you had made your choice and there was no longer room for me, but you didn't want me to die, and so how could I let the one person who has always believed in me down? The answer I couldn't, I am not sure what I will do with my life now. I am not sure where I will go, but as long as I know my brother is happy, then I am too. I know I am twisted. I know I didn't get your kindness, but maybe there is hope. I cannot say, just know I will no longer interfere with your world. I will not try to force you to be my brother again. I will let you live your life like I will try to live mine. I do hope you are happy, and that I didn't ruin too many things. You deserve it all, brother. Everything you have ever wanted should be yours, and I hope it is. Take good care of your mate and my little niece or nephew. I have left them a small fortune that I hope will do them good in the future. Good luck, brother. Maybe I will be so lucky to one day see you again. Landon. I stood there for a long time just reading the letter over and over before I finally unfolded the little check I had pulled out of the envelope and saw my brother really had left a small fortune. I smiled as I folded it all together and placed it back in the envelope and then into my pocket in my jacket. I walked back to the others and sat down beside my mate. Are you okay? She asked. I'm okay. Should we be worried? Octavia asked. I shook my head. No need to be worried. The pack got their Luna and Alpha back. This time, legally, I can hand over the pack to you too. I said and looked at Evan and Maddie, who were both smiling. You're not going to keep it. Maddie asked. It is yours after all. I shook my head. No, I know who it belongs to, and it belongs to the two of you. Everyone began to chat happily again and look at the papers that Landon had signed. The king told me he would get right to work and make sure the pack was soon in Maddie's and Evan's hands. I couldn't have been happier about my choice, but I also couldn't help but wonder, would I ever see my brother again? Lauren. I am just tying my black boots as someone decides to honk loudly just outside my house. I quickly run to the window, seeing the two black jeeps parked outside and a bike. It is clear none of the vehicles belong to anyone in this neighborhood. Only expensive cars and such are welcome here. I quickly grab my jacket and run out of my room, trying to be as quiet as I can so I don't wake up my parents. I run down the stairs and outside, where I quietly close the door and lock it, hoping no one has seen me, not even the servants. I know what my parents will do if they find out I am still hanging out with these people, but I don't care. These people are my friends, and I don't care what status they carry. Are you crazy? I whisper yell as I open the gate and sneak out, closing it behind me. You're going to wake my parents. It just makes all the lone wolves chuckle, as they see me get all worked up. Come now, little Luna, don't you love the danger of almost getting caught? I hear a dark voice ask behind me. I feel my heart go crazy and I slowly turn and look up at the most handsome wolf I have ever laid my eyes on. Piercing blue eyes and dark slick back hair. He wears a leather jacket and almost all back, only his pants are a little lighter shade. He smiles at me and I move closer to him and wrap my arms around his neck. Maybe. I purr. Are we going or what? Grace asked, getting very impatient. I chuckle and nod. Let's go. Everyone gets in the cars, but I only pull back a little and Tobias hands me a helmet. Ready, little Luna? He asks. Always. I pull on the helmet and we get on his bike. He fires it up and I quickly put my arms around him, before we speed out of there. We drive to the woods where we have this little secret place of ours. 
A fire has been started and we all lie around, drinking and eating snacks. I lie with my back against Tobias, as he holds me close. A beer is being handed to me, but Tobias takes it before I can and just shakes his head. Only seventeen, he says. And? I have had a beer before. I tell him as I look up at him. He just drinks it and shakes his head. I am the youngest here, but no one makes me feel like an outsider, not even because of my status and where I live. No, everyone here has welcomed me as one of their own. Maybe it is because Tobias has laid claim to me, or maybe it is because I truly belong here. I am much closer to them than anyone from my own world. Tobias and I met a year ago when I walked into this restaurant that also had a bar and he was working behind it. He had only just turned 18, and I had been mesmerized the moment I had laid my eyes on him. We can't tell for sure we are mates yet because I am still only 17, but I am sure of it, and so is he, or he wouldn't have gifted me a necklace on my birthday he had made himself. It is a simple necklace with a thin metal chain and a small round pendant at the end where one side has the word mine on it and the other side has the word yes on it, but he helped me write the yes. When he gave it to me, it only had mine on it. We carved the yes together. Tobias can't help but always play with the necklace. Even now, his fingers twist and turn it a little, and I know he is anxious for me to turn 18, so we can figure out if we are mates. I want to know too, but I know it will not stop me from loving him. Mine. He whispers as his lips over over mine. Yes. I answer and then he kisses me, his warm lips moving over mine. I know he won't touch me until I am 18, but his kisses make it hard for both of us to stay in control. I just want him with everything inside of me. He is the peace I have been missing my whole life. I felt myself almost floating around before it was like something grabbed me, and I was pulled back into my body. I opened my eyes, waking up to a strange sound of purring. It took me a moment to be able to focus, but when I was finally able to, I was staring into a pair of yellow eyes. Was that a cat? The creature was lying on my chest purring loudly and looking at me with slightly narrowed eyes. It almost looked like and I knew it was my imagination but it almost looked like she was smiling. What? I got out with a hoarse voice. Was that really my voice? The cat suddenly moved and stood up, before jumping down on the ground. She looked back at me and meowed, and I slowly tried to sit up. It took a few tries because, despite not having moved for so long, my body felt spent and weak. I was able to get up after a few tries though and threw my legs over the side before I looked around for some clothes. I supported myself on the bed as I walked around it and into a bathroom where I found a big fluffy white robe. I put it on and walked out of there again before I found the cat sitting on her big butt, her tail swinging back and forth behind her, and she looked at me like she was waiting for me. It was all very strange, but I was able to walk over to her and open the door. She quickly ran outside and disappeared around a corner. Strange cat. I whispered before I walked out into the white hallway and looked both ways. Everything seemed quiet though. Angela? I called. I was not exactly sure where I was. My memory was a little foggy and I was very confused at the moment. I felt so tired, but I knew I had to find my daughter. Lauren? I turned my head and looked right at one of the most handsome males I had ever laid my eyes on. I knew who he was, but I couldn't focus on that, because when our eyes met, my wolf yelled out one word that took my breath away. Mate. Oh, fuck. He was practically drooling, and I found it funny, but then again, it had been a long time since we were affected by the bond like this. You mean when it wasn't required someone complimented me? She asked. I nodded. I mean a serious and real compliment. I can't remember. She told me. That long? She nodded and looked a bit embarrassed, and I moved closer to her, seeing a small smile spread on her lips. You look incredible. I told her. The energy between us changed, as we stood so close to each other. You could just feel how electrifying it was, and I saw her eyes swift to my lips for a short moment, but then quickly looked me in the eyes again before looking away. 
I bet she had been taught not to look too much or stare into her mate's eyes like she could actually match his energy. Thank you. She whispered. You look very good too. I appreciate it. I told her and then turned and pulled her with me. So, where are we going? She asked. That is a surprise. I pulled her over to where my bike was parked, and she looked shocked as I handed her a helmet. A motorcycle? She asked. I nodded. My daughter isn't the only one who can drive one, I said. Lauren smiled excitedly before she took the helmet, and I put one on too. I got on the bike and then helped her, and she quickly put her arms around me, like it was the easiest thing to do. She didn't even seem to hesitate, and it made my heart beat faster. We quickly drove out of there and into the city, where I parked in front of a bar. We got of the bike and took of our helmets, and I just let Lauren take in the place. A bar? She asked and smiled at me. I nodded. I thought you might prefer some greasy food, beers, and a game of pool, but if I was wrong, I already told you, you weren't. This is perfect. She said excitedly. To hear a lunacal this perfect was quite surprising to me, even though I was the one who had suggested this. I didn't remember Victoria being much into these things, but Lauren was just different in so many ways. I thought I had her figured out, but I was completely wrong. Shall we?